McAfee show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello, beautiful people. It is Thursday, February 10th, 2022. We are just days away from Super Bowl 56, and we are live in Los Angeles at Radio Row here at the beautiful convention center on the FanDuel stage, talking that good talk, experiencing that good life. And although the weather is fantastic out here, the energy is getting palpable because we are just days away from crowning a new king of the NFL. Ooh. Has anything changed in the conversation of these two teams from yesterday? Absolutely not. Will we rehash the same conversations about these two teams numerous times today like we had yesterday? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. We'll be saying a lot of the same things that there is a little bit of a shift in the spread. It went from four and a half to four. Now that it's going down to three and a half in some different places, it's bouncing around. What do they know that we don't know? We'll have to break down into individual pieces as we continue to say dumb things into microphones live in front of a lot of very professional people here in Los Angeles. The bullpen has filled in quite nicely yeah. since mm-hmm. Tuesday. Oh, yeah. And although it was empty and we thought we were the only people's coming to Los Angeles, that has changed drastically. All the people are in this beautiful place. And we should have a fantastic show today. It is loaded. Hey, when oh, I say the show is yeah. loaded, oh, yeah. I mean the show's Austin yeah. Eckler's coming through. Whoa. What? Yeah, it's in like 12 minutes. Maybe we'll see how traffic goes. Good point. Adrian Peterson's here. What? what? LeGarrette Blunt's here. What? LeGarrette Blunt is actually here, I think, talking about weed. Really? Right. Awesome. Promoting dope. I believe I believe LeGarrette Blunt is promoting his dope today. And oh, I'm very excited yeah. for that. Uh-huh. We'll have to smoke a blunt. A Why does he come blunt. on this show? Huh? Why does he come on this show? Well, that's what I'm saying. We're going to have Why to not? keep it very professional, obviously. All these other folks out here uh, promoting LeGarrette Blunt's weed and stuff like that. Not on this program. No, we will no. talk about his vitamins, I guess, is what we'll have to do. Bruce Buffer will be here. Wow. Hey! Time! He's the UFC buffer. Yeah, that's right. Not He was the buffer that was muted in uh, Las Vegas at uh-huh. the beginning of the Pro Bowl where they had an entire sky cam shot, zoom in from him from 120 yards away, <laughs> woo, all the way up to his face, and he was given an impassioned speech to start that oh, entire yeah. thing. Couldn't hear a word he was saying in the stadium or on TV, <laughs> but the son of a bitch was electric, and he always is. Can't wait to chat with him. Darius Leonard, a man who's not up for defensive player of the year, huh. had 12 turnovers all by himself. Damn. Huh. Not wow. only the amount of tackles and the captains, but they didn't make the playoffs, so fucking maybe that's what. Uh, and Justin Jefferson will join us. He did 7,000 interviews for Old Spice just two days ago. Yes, he Today, did. he will walk into the Thunderdome. That is the fan duel stage. Remember this afternoon, 4 p.m. local, 7 p.m. Eastern. We will be live in front of an audience for a special big surprise giveaway show this afternoon. I cannot wait to come back here. I believe fans are going to be allowed to be here. Here we go. So we've been told. So we've been told. Now, I don't know how it's going to go. Brandon Lang walking by. I got a couple prop bets from that guy that he loves. We got to put together a risk free same game parlay for Sunday. Yep. We got Saturday night's party with FanDuel, the $200,000 Superstar Showdown. That'll be streaming live on this YouTube at 9 p.m. And then we'll be streaming live during the Super Bowl. So we got a lot to do, a lot to accomplish, a lot of fun to be had. And I'll tell you what, I, would, I wouldn't want to have fun with any other group of men then. Hell yeah. Hey, you guys. Hell yeah. Huh? Artificial AJ Hawk is here walking, or rocking his brown leather Air Force. Or his Jordans. I mean, you look amazing, AJ. It's great to have you around, pal. Oh, it's good to be here. It's good to, to see the bullpen filling in, as you say. But are we sure there's going to be fans for, for this performance? Just sure. Just so we can be clear. Why are you going to do that? We thought there was going to be fans all week. We uh-huh. thought this place was potentially be packed out. I want the atmosphere to be great for what the we performer. Have. That's what uh-huh. I want. I want him to feel comfortable. For Whoa. What? What are you talking what are you about? Talking hey, about? Do you know something we don't know? Oh, honestly, I wasn't sure if it's public or not. If you know, if we know what's happening. I almost said, I almost gave a lot of Listen, information out. Maybe a but I didn't pay attention if we talked about it. A performer could be a dancer. Yeah. A performer could be yeah. a stripper. What do you mean? Juggler. A performer could be a juggler. Uh-huh. Coach Jane. Panda. Panda might be. There it is. I mean, there's a lot of performers that could be. Yeah. By the way, thanks for giving it away, AJ. We'll definitely keep you around and let you in. <laughs> what do you mean, Jake? Coach JB is a performer. He comes on. Chuck Pagano is a performer. He was on yesterday. Anyways, big surprises coming this afternoon. We're very pumped for it. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to do 
do it in front of some fans. We thought we were going to be able to have fans all week. Mm -hmm. Turns out after 3 o'clock to 10 p.m. on Thursday, Friday only. Fun news about that. We're on 9 to 1 here, so that doesn't miss us. So we're having a special live after hours at 4 p.m. local, 7 p.m. Eastern, live on YouTube. You're going to want to see it. I think we'll probably end up giving away like fifty to $75,000. Oh, Hell yeah. yeah. What? Yeah, I think so. I mean, might as well. Why yeah. might as well have a good California. time? California. We're... You know, we're getting a chance to experience a lot of incredible things. Yeah, we are. I mean, the house is amazing. Yeah. Right. We walked down, what, Melrose last Melrose. night? Yeah. Melrose. Nice. Shoe stores. There's a couple bums that we had to kind of jump over. And I feel like no, I still had it, by the way. Oh, yeah. I did a one-legged jump up over a kickflip over a homeless man who had <laughs> sprawled out on the side. Uh -huh. I thought pretty, dropped him in 20, said, hey, go ahead and get you some food. That's He's right. not going to use that money for food. I have a, a, a yeah. funny suspicion. Yeah, no doubt. But it was nice to kind of experience LA a little bit. All the meetings, all the bullshit. 4 o'clock local, 7 p.m. Eastern YouTube, we should be live at Tone Diggs. Great new pair of shoes right there, cuz that had a shoe palace. You. Where'd you get that at? These were actually a Foot Locker buy. Oh, Ooh. those other places were a little pricey for me, they were very expensive. L LA has a great shoe collection. They do. Oh, yeah. We walked through like seven different stores. There were shoes everywhere. And I couldn't buy them all because I don't have enough room in my suitcase. That is some amateur move for me. When you go to a place and you're going to buy stuff, Smart. you need to leave some room in the yep. suitcase. Mm -hmm. My thing's packed to the gills. not going to be able to make it home. But I did get a pair of shoes as well. We can right? FedEx it out if you want. That a baby's eat. Or you could bring an another bag. Bring an empty bag. Yeah, like a Easy. trash bag. See, that's what... That's what you rich folks do right there. See that? That's that next level. You've been rich longer or than just me. Plan, right? or, or you plan ahead, yeah. Well, I don't do any of that. At no. Ty Schmidt, <laughs> at Boston Connor, you boys look fantastic. Connor, is that a new uh, jacket? Uh, what, yeah, I mean, you mentioned, you know, a couple of those stores we went through. I saw this one in the uh, <laughs> little display case, and I said, need that. Need that immediately. There are, are a few other blazers that I'll probably stop by. Some flames, some bejeweled ones, bedazzled almost. Is Guy Fieri? What? Fieri. Fieri. Are you going to steal his stuff? Fieri. It, is is he performing? Is he cooking? Pop-up You show? tell us. They oh, do the one yeah. everything you, away. You know everything, huh? I mean, it is perform it's performance art when he cooks. So when maybe if it is, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> well, anyways, what are we wearing for Saturday's FanDuel $200,000 Superstar Showdown? Where the likes of Ludacris. What? Joe Montana. What? Ed Reed. What? T.O. What? An entire list. Joe Montana? It. Of superstars. Yeah, they'll be competing in random games and events where people will be able to play alongside on a free-to-play at FanDuelShowdown.com. Okay. okay. And then there's like $200,000 in prizes. I would like to let everybody know there is like $50,000 in cash prizes then like $150,000 in wow. either FanDuel site credit, Amazon cards, I think, wow. Apple mm, cards. There's okay. like a bunch as you play alongside. These ridiculous games that are going to be played by people that are very notable. And I will say there is a chance... And myself, Darius Butler, Ty Schmidt, and A.J. Hawk will be on cloud 7,000 commentating the entire Ooh. thing. Boston Connor and Gumpy will be backstage interviewing the perform the competitors right. yes. after okay. and before. Okay. Tone Diggs will be giving us an up. Well, it will be a performance because it will be on a show. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Con. It will be amazing. I know. So don't be coming to me for that. Well, you're going to well, give it away. Well, was a surprise guest earlier yeah. or later. Yeah. You try to give it away. Anyways, and Tone Diggs will be Golden. updating us on how people are betting in the entire thing. That is a FanDuel production. That yep. is not our show. No, no. We are merely hosting it. Hired guys. Right. We are merely hosting the show, and it is on our YouTube, but that should be a blast on Saturday night with $200,000 up for lines. We'll probably give away like $50,000 tonight at 4 o'clock, and then the YouTube stream on Sunday for the Super Bowl. I'm going to be betting $100,000. Hell Here yeah. $40,000 on tails, $10,000 on the same game parlay that we're putting together that will be risk-free for the beautiful people as we try to rake all the dollars we can from FanDuel one last time yeah. in this glorious NFL season, and then I'll be $50,000 live betting alongside because the live bets and the live parlays on FanDuel something we need to take advantage of Bingo. and get a little bit of a dabble in before next season as we try to actually bankrupt yeah. these beautiful people that gave us the greatest stage in this entire fucking radio room. Yeah, yeah. this it's, stage honestly has it, it, I thought it might get old a little bit after a couple days. This thing being able to spread out <laughs> on this and looking down here and seeing what we used to have to deal with, yeah. it's unbelievable. Yeah, and a lot of people I guess in the comment section OG fans of ours were a little bit upset that this is maybe what the, the new set will look like at the Igloo because it's too professional we agree this is too professional. Mm -hmm. So that means it's not going to be what ours looks like. <laughs> no way. <laughs> that is. That is. This is very nice. They No stone left unturned by the TVG folks that put this together. Bandle folks, we appreciate it. We're lucky to be here. Let's dive into some news stories. AJ Hawk, what the fuck do you know? 
Huh? I don't know. What, about who? You about know. You, oh, you know. Oh, you yes, know. Waste management. Aaron Rodgers rocking the beautiful flow. Uh -huh. A tailor-made cap. I think he had a carbon wood driver I didn't get to see, <laughs> but on 16 where the crowd is loud and they are electrifying, he was introduced as a three-time MVP winner, and he said, excuse me. <laughs> Four-time MVP, that shit's coming tonight Bingo. at the NFL honors. So they do that. They do that entire thing. And then there was interactions with fans about where he's going, what he's not doing. There's some people spreading the narrative that tonight he's actually going to announce on the NFL honors he's going back to the Packers. He can't wait. That's oh, what the internet is. Yeah. But also, yesterday, at Waste Management in Phoenix, Arizona, where everybody is hammered drunk watching golf, yep. allegedly some people scream, hey, how about the Broncos? And he said, We'll see. What do you know, AJ Hawk? What does we'll see mean? And what did he tell you at your house? If he's telling some drunk white at a golf tournament, <laughs> yeah. we'll see for the Broncos, what was he telling some drunk white at a house in Ohio when he was there well, visiting I, alongside a random woman? I have a feeling if if the person said anything, hey, what about are you coming to the Jaguars? He probably said, we'll see. No, no, no. no, no. no. He actually said, what Not he a said. chance. He yeah. said that's Trevor Lawrence's squad. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Then name another team. I, I feel like Colts allegedly. He said nah. Jets yeah. allegedly. All right, he so said, maybe nah. maybe tonight he tells the world and he tells the Packers at NFL Honors, hey, I just won my fourth MVP. I want to be traded to the Denver Broncos. Well, Is mean, that what's going to happen? I mean, he'd be lying to us directly Correct. to our face. Yeah. But I mean, sure, I won't hold that against him. <laughs> but no, I wouldn't. Actually. AJ, you already I, know, dude. Just tell us why are you? I doing don't think this? he knows. No, I like, don't think he knows what he's doing. That's what I've been saying all along. You, you know, think that. he was all boozed up while he's going. Well, I, no, I there. think he saw people yelling at him. Well, we'll see. You know, like when people yell at you when you're walking by. Okay, buddy. All right. Just thumbs up. Like, what do you do? <laughs> what does that mean? What, what are you supposed to what do? What are you saying? I interact with every human. No, I know. But I'm saying it's something that there's no real answer for him. Uh, no, you know what? Actually, I'm taking my time to think about it, sir. I don't know. Denver's a great option, but I like Green Bay. Like, Are they going to give him 35 seconds tonight for the MVP speech? Has you, have you been told about that? Is he getting that much time? Well, 25, maybe. Yeah. He got a selfie video last year when he won the MVP. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was 35 seconds, and he actually cut him off at the end of that thing. And then Russell Wilson had an entire performance in the stadium yeah, all right. by himself. Exactly. But that's because the Walt's Payton Man of the Year is the big one. You're right. You're well. right. How come they don't ever judge that when the Hall of Fame conversation, though? This guy won Walt's Payton Man of the Year. You know, the NFL puts over the Walt's Payton Man of the Year every single year, which I respect. I was a Walt's Payton Man of the Year winner uh, for the Indianapolis Colts. I was not a finalist, obviously, because I do believe it is a big name type thing. But uh, they put over the Walt's Payton Man of the Year as if it's the biggest conversation piece. How come that's never in the Hall of Fame talk, then? How come it's always MVPs? What are we even doing out here? That's get, weird. Because they'll, they'll bring up the bad stuff, but they won't bring up the good stuff that you've done. Yeah. Are you talking about me? No, anybody. That's a, that's a good point, Phil Rivers. They bury him. And I'm sure he's got a Walter Payton Man of the Year. Why is an ego? Well, right? his entire community he's saving is in his house and in the city he plays in. Bingo. You know what I mean? He's got an entire school, a village in the house he's taking care of every single day. I mean, that guy saves more people on a daily basis than any of us could ever fathom. <laughs> he had the entire bullpen on Tuesday as children, Philip Rivers. I don't yeah. know how much you know community <laughs> goodwill he has to do to win that thing. I'd assume he won that. Never gets talked about. Always the MVP, though, gets talked uh -huh. about. But the NFL markets the Walter Payton Man of the Year is the big one. That's interesting to me. I think it's yeah. because there's a lot of good people in the NFL. I respect that. I appreciate that but i mean back-to-back -back mvps is something that everybody's just gonna have to swallow has he been told he won already is that why he told them four i don't know he's got to feel pretty good about it to actually do that right because he doesn't he, he doesn't, doesn't seem win? like a guy that doesn't the one that does that and then doesn't win right you tell me you yeah, yeah. what the hell you were just with him I, don't, I was surprised to see him do that but he must feel pretty good about it right me too but also that guy was doing a very long intro yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. gave him one of these which i respect pretty good and he i feel it was pretty good in intro Pretty good. The guy, good energy on the microphone. That was a good intro. <laughs> but that guy, uh, and by the way, anytime you get corrected, like, and you're on a microphone to a group of people, you don't need to reassert how smart you are. You know, you mm, don't have to be like, fair. oh, I, I should have, that's all my research. Like, nobody cares. All right, right. it's a show for the people. <laughs> we understand that you were right and Aaron was wrong, but it was a moment you were having there. Respect the guy that's given the energy to all of that waste management thing. So mm -hmm. nothing but love there. That thing was on. Aaron wanted to get his fucking shot off. Yeah. Felt like he had a pre-shot routine, and that guy was yeah, almost interrupting that entire thing. You've been on a course with him? He's a player? Yeah, oh, yeah, he can play. I don't think he doesn't usually take a real long time, but he probably didn't want to stand over that ball for an hour on 16 with a million people watching. Well, and, I mean, his accolades are getting a little long. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. All-time leading days. The guy's yeah, got to start true. his accolades when he starts walking up to the tee box, right? Yeah. Wearing... Callaway. <laughs> Is he a, like an? He's a tailor-made golfer. Like oh, he's yeah. like a. He's like a. He's on their payroll. I think. Is that he's because of Adidas guy. or is that because of Taylor Man? Like we know, like um, like Pat Perez. He's a, a Jordan guy, right? He right. gets a bunch of stuff from Jordan. Money. Uh -huh. I heard Aaron is a tailor-made guy. What do you mean you heard? He right? does. 
JB was at the house last night. <laughs> yeah. Coach JB stopped Bruiser. by the house last night, and he is friends with Pat Perez. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. We learned a lot about Pat Perez, who might be one of my new favorite golfers. Mm-hmm. He never gets put on television. I guess that because he uh, that's because he is super competitive. He does drop adult words, I guess, whenever he's playing, so I guess we should like him more. Uh, but do you think he? You think Aaron Rodgers likes that Adidas, uh, mostly because they just tweet out pictures of boobs? Oh, <laughs> oh man. I, I, what, do you, what happens? I did tweet out a big picture of boobs. Boobs, why? Boobs, why? Boobs, why? Boobs, why? Boobs, why? There's probably 35 to 40 boobs, sets yeah. of boobs on Adidas' yeah. Twitter account right now pinned to the top. You know, there was that entire free the nipple campaign that yeah, was happening right. because the ladies were not happy that men could take their shirts off on the internet uh-huh. and not get centered, but what, women would take their shirts off on the internet and it would get taken off the platform. Free the nipple, free the nipple, free the nipple. Oh, yeah. Adidas said, hey, here's... Here's 75 nipples for you right in your face. And, yeah, one of them had three nipples, I saw. It was pretty sweet. Are you serious? It was pretty sweet. Yeah. yeah pretty what, awesome. Wait, what are they trying to sell? All boobs are good for this bra. Yeah. Oh, Sports bra. Okay. I thought it was just like a pick-me-up for people on Twitter. Like, hey, <laughs> from Adidas. having a tough day? Here's 60 pairs of boobs. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Check them out. Enjoy them. Buy some Adidas. Yeah, buy some Adidas, Adidas clothing. <laughs> and to their you. credit, it, it worked. It I mean, work. I, I felt much better after I saw that pin tweet. I was in a uh, – I was in a rather important meeting yesterday. And by the way, meetings are a hilarious thing because I've been in a lot of non-important meetings this week as well. <laughs> but I was in a very important meeting yesterday where it felt like a lot was happening. And I was in the middle of a conversation. You know, it's going, well, oh, CFO Phil sitting right next to me. He brings such a level to those conversations that is awesome. Phil is always like, uh, oh, you're going to respect our fucking... All uh, right, you're going to respect yeah, yeah, yeah. our business. You know, I'm I'm always like, the, hey, we can do this. This would be cool. This would be cool. Phil comes in with, uh, but also, I've been looking around. You know, it's really nice. It's a nice yin-yang thing. And Phil is a hockey goon, obviously. Mm-hmm. He's a CPA and loves numbers. So he kind of radiates that. He's a yinzer. Mm-hmm. And then I'm in there. And we're having this full conversation. Good things are popping. My phone is just vibrating. And I'm realizing it's a lot of likes on one particular t- uh-huh. text in a group text. <laughs> yeah. So I go into the group text, and it's literally just 40 sets of boobs <laughs> and uh, I like what is this going on and then a full conversation in this very intense meeting and in pers- like important meeting goes about Adidas just put 80 boobs on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, what are your thoughts on that? I'm like, okay, here we go. So now your guys' amateur juvenile text messages Whoa. into me penetrated a very important meeting yesterday. I hope you guys are happy. Well, I, I didn't talk about the Free the Nipple campaign from years ago to these people that had no idea what was going on. I had the link copied, and I, I had it there to send in the group chat, and I looked up, and I was like, ah, Pat's on that meeting. I don't know if it's just then. Nah, he's going to want to know about this. So. Well, yeah, I appreciate that. Other things I did find out about, the United States started winning gold medals. Here we go. <laughs> we are back. We are back. Hey, Nathan Chen, just years removed from falling, okay, out of nowhere in the long program, Mm-hmm. where he was on a Wheaties box, and I was being told that this guy's the next big thing, and the United States has got the figure skater. I was locked down. He's wearing all black like Johnny Cash. He was awesome. He was yeah. super cool. He was young. He fell on his face on that ice. Uh, oh, this guy stinks. Tough. Then I completely forgot about him. Mm-hmm. And then the, here we are at the 2022 Olympics, which everybody is super pumped about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everybody's super, oh, yeah. super pumped yeah, about the Beijing. 2022 Olympics. Olympics. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> loving that, China. Yeah, they are. Everybody's <laughs> loving the way it's set up and everything like that. But Nathan Chen's back, and I'm like, holy shit, I forgot about this guy. He went into a cave. Nathan Chen went into a cave yeah. and became an even better skater. He said, all those things that were said about me those years ago that I couldn't perform, I couldn't land my quads, okay? And the Olympics quads were qua- four flips, or four mm-hmm. times, by the way, quads. Uh, he comes out, wins a gold medal. Had a baby Nathan Chen. Had a hey. baby Nathan. Thank you, Nathan. That's a good redemption story. It's a true underdog story. True. Way to get back out there. Chloe Kim wins another one. I predicted oh. after the last one in the Olympics, she'd be worth $100 million. She just won $37,000. Wow. For that gold medal she got. Go, Chloe. Chloe's awesome. Is that dollars or yen? Is it is it American dollars? It's American. It had dollars. the American, American. thing. Okay. Not the, okay. uh, sure but you're right. That is vastly different. Yeah. yeah. Chloe Kim is going to get a lot of American dollars if her family so pleases yeah. by the way. Very good, very young, very dominant, and clutch. Yeah. Her, uh, the the half pipe uh, that she went down and did, she landed one late on the pipe that oh. I think everybody was like, well, that's a guaranteed gold medal run yeah, or whatever. I mean, she went for it, which I appreciate. I respect. Uh, Sean White was able to get past a, a brutal fall to get, qualify. He's probably going to win another one. And Lindsey, Jacob Ellis. Jacob Ellis. Jacob Ellis. Or Jakob Bell. She or won Jacob as well. Hey, America's about to start taking Let's over. Let's go. Here we go, boys. And also, uh, I, I regret to inform everybody oh, no. that we had some misinformation on this particular program. What? It doesn't happen often, but when it does happen, 
We have to address it. I am not somebody who's going to get into this microphone and say things that are wrong and then in future days try to justify my wrong statement. I'm going to make it right when I have to. That's right. For instance, there's a 15-year-old Russian skater that I said, hey, if you're a mom or a dad of any American girl that is on the ice, good on the ice, from the age of zero to 25, Uh get her out of figure skating, get her into women's hockey, Mm -hmm. because there's a 15-year-old from Russia that is the greatest ice skater, figure skater of all time time. Johnny Weir, who is obviously AJ Hawk's uh, favorite commentator. Right. We watched him last night. Yeah. Absolutely electrifying. His outfits, his costume bring so much Great coverage. But the first night he said, this is the best figure skater I've ever seen. Johnny Weir has been covering the Winter Olympics for what, 50 years yeah. at this point? Long yeah. time. 50 years we see this. This is the best I've ever seen. I say, oh bullshit, a 15 year old, get out of here. Can't even drive in America. Russia probably do whatever the hell she wants. But oh, yeah. In America she can't do that. She comes out, she crushes it, she does her whole thing. She buries everybody on track for a gold medal for the next 20, 30 years. Yeah, she was taking steroids. She's fucking cheating. Oh, yeah, 50 year old Hey, get Russia. your kids Russia. back into figure skating because the Russians are cheating. They ain't <laughs> no got nobody. Way. Nope. Yeah, that's just why I was wrong. Russia I'm, doesn't I, cheat. Oh, they do. Well, actually, the Icarus what? movie, the documentary, is all about how Russia would get around the Olympic testing right. where they had a mad scientist either schedule out their body so they'd have shit out of them or they'd actually build false walls on the Olympic uh-huh. dope piss testing area in snag P and put in other P that was actually happening for Russia for a long up to the near like the um, so, was it Sochi yeah what was it uh, uh, Olympic affiliate uh, Russia the OAR say, yeah. are they OAR? OAR? yeah they are now they're back in okay. the ROC but there for a few years they were out because of this Icarus documentary turns out the 15 year old whether they didn't understand her body they didn't know if they could get it out she's taking much steroids incredibly sad doesn't take away that she's very good. And figure skating is better whenever it feels like they got juiced up people out there doing quads on every fucking turn. It's like baseball almost. What up, Josh? Hey, good season, hey. dude. Good season, man. Good season, Josh. Josh. Had a baby, Josh. Had a baby. She was eating tremble on sandwiches? Uh, I don't know what she was on. Uh, she t- tested positive for something, but. When did she start taking it? Like, if she's 15, testing positive at the Olympics, they started when she was 10? Eight years old, probably. Yeah, so what happens to that? That completely stunts your growth, right? Like, that's not uh-huh. something you're supposed to I would imagine. Gumpy did a lot of research on it last night. It was the type of drug that makes your uh, oxygen in your blood. Uh, EPO? She did EPO? Like, fucking recover faster. That's like oh, a she's she's doping. Yeah. The cyclists were all doing yeah. EPO yeah. because Same you can go forever. And by the way, that is what the Icarus doctor. Uh-huh. Yeah, bingo. Anyways, we hope she's okay. We're sorry she was put in this yeah. situation. She knew what was going on, but she was an incredible figure skater. She's only 15. We can't bury her. Let's just bury all of Russia. She was right. through they, the drugs. Keep cheating. But by the way, they were just trying to win, I guess, which is bullshit. They got caught. Get your American young ladies back into figure skating. We have an opportunity. Joining us now, here to talk about the MetaQuest 2. Ooh. Hey, listen, I don't know what's going on in the Metaverse. I know it's a big fucking deal, though. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. Running back for the Chargers, an incredibly fit human being. Ladies and gentlemen, friend of the show, Austin Eckler. Yeah! yeah! Austin! Oh! Here we go. One more time. Ladies and gentlemen, running back for the Chargers, Austin Eckler. Yeah! Yeah. Round two was good. Yeah, hell yeah. Great to meet you, too. Executed well. What's up, man? How you doing, buddy? How you doing, man? How we doing, Austin? Hey, it's great to see you, dude. Hey, I'll tell you what. You are uh, a wide man. I'm a what? Wide man, mm-hmm. a wide man. Yeah, you are like uh, you're, you're kind of like brick shit house. Actually, Boom. it's yeah. like a refrigerator <laughs> walking around. Spark you know plug. I mean? Yeah, Look. a little spark plug Look, out there. You know, when you're five eight, you know you got to be you know super compact, right? Because these guys are huge. You know how it is out there. So. No, I don't actually. That guy does. <laughs> this me right here yeah. is one of those dudes. Yeah, look at these guys. Austin, you look amazing, man. What have you been doing? I appreciate uh, it, man. Chit chatting. What's everybody asking you about? How great you are? What happened to the Chargers? No, what are we doing yeah, next year? Yeah, what happened to the Chargers, man? What happened in the last game? Herbert, you know all that. All the use, you know, I've been diving in a little bit of uh, just my life, my upbringing, you know, my mindset. So let's talk about it. What did yeah. happen? What the fuck? I, I, I <laughs> thought you guys were on a run, Austin. I mean, here we go. Now, granted, now I have to let you know, this is coming from somebody who's the fan of a team that lost in the last week to an organization that was dressed up like clowns because oh. they were trying to fire the general manager because the general manager was a clown. And we got kicked out of the playoffs with seven pro bowlers on the team, okay? So I understand that there is a little bit of upset all around the place. You don't win a Super Bowl, everybody's bummed. But what do you think you guys are going to take from this year into next year and hopefully take that next step? First year head coach, still, I think there was a lot of expectation, but what do you think you take from this year into next year, Austin? Man, 
the, the thing that I learned the most is, especially with the team that we have now, it's gonna be it's gonna be different next year because you know how it goes to turn yeah. over. Um, hey, that's like thirty people by the way, because everybody yeah. knows the big names, but the lower half yeah. of the roster gone. Yeah, people don't realize that. Like we have a whole new team. I'll have a whole new faces all over the place next year because um, they just see us as the Chargers. Um, but the biggest thing that I took away from our core players that's going to be there is when our back's against the wall is when we're at our best. And so whatever we got to do to get that mindset, like this is the edge, like we're about, this is do or die, that, that's what we have to go into the game. That's what the play, every play has to feel like. Yeah. Because you saw, if you watched our last game against the Raiders, you, you see us go for fourth downs all the time. Why do you think we do that? Because Coach sees that in us. Right? And that's Herbert's what, best on fourth down is what everybody says. Oh, my God. He's, in, he's incredible. And it's like, why is that? Right, because he has that. He feels like, okay, this is it. Like, I got to make this happen. Well, it's like, all right, I want that to be our mindset every single play. So that's going to be my message going into it next year. Yeah. So how you do it? What do you yeah. think your message is going to be? Like, hey, listen, we're ground fourth downs. We got to do the first three like that. Like, I, I, that's a tough message, you know. Because shaping a mindset is a very fascinating thing. That's what Staley and you guys are going to have to do, though. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what builds chemistry. That's what builds a culture, right? That's how you can build a community is having some message the same mindset going forward and it's all about the messaging it's all about how people are believing in it right people got to believe it believe it and buy in and there's no reason we can't because we've seen what we can do when we're backs against the wall i can't believe you guys didn't go on a run i can't believe the colts didn't go on a run this oh season was God. bananas is it it's been the wildest season i've been a part of you can believe the colts didn't go on a run chargers can't believe it all right shut up <laughs> <laughs> one don't thing. worry about him over there. one and the other yeah i understand what you're talking about but right. this season being the, as long as it was what, did you feel that? Did you yes. like the ups and downs, the sporadic? Do you think that's going to have to be something you guys adjust to? This season was bananas, Austin. It was it was outrageous, man. It was outrageous. Um, but yeah, it, it, this is the up, most up and down I've been a part of as far as like I've been a team. It's not or, just you guys, by the way. It was oh, everybody. Every single team had that this year. I know. And do you think it's COVID? What do you think it is? <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea what it is. Really? Just I, sometimes. I literally have no idea. And every yeah. week in the NFL, you can get got. I mean, that's something everybody gets. Everybody's exactly. on scholarship in the NFL. I, I understand that, but I'm excited to see what you guys go. That young core, you included in there, new coach, new mindset, analytics, and stats. Did anybody ever say like, "Hey, coach, you know, six points is more than three points. Three points, so listen to this, coach. This is gonna blow your fucking mind. More than zero points. Mm, Did yeah. you guys ever have that conversation well, in there? No, we had the conversation. Uh, you don't drop the ball, you score six points. Oh. <laughs> So it's execution. It's we, we got they don't drop the ball. We dropped three against the Chiefs. We dropped three touchdowns. You know, like people are like, why are you going for it? Well, it, we had it. We can't drop the ball. We got to execute, man. Like, I love that. We're there. So you guys all understand that, though, right? It's been yeah. very common from the beginning. Brandon yeah. Saylor's like, hey, this is how we're going to operate. We're going to be an aggressive team. No bullet left behind. Everything in the chambers. From the left. gates. From really? the gates. You know, and so you know, some people don't like it. Some people do. Yeah. Obviously, if we make it, everyone thinks he's a hero. But the flip side, which we had a few of those, then you know, starts to bring out how people feel about it. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's everything. Hindsight wins. I was part of yeah. a fake punt that if it worked. <laughs> exactly. Genius, right? you know. Yeah. <laughs> since it's not, it's on the internet forever. My name's the only thing attached to it. Go ahead, AJ. So, so I know you're here uh, trying to educate people on the metaverse in different situations. Can you explain this to these guys? I, I seem to have a pretty good grasp on all yeah. that is coming in the future. So can you explain to you, Pat and the boys? Do either of you have a, have a quest? Oh, have yeah. A quest? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, these guys, you don't. You've never experienced it. Please, child, please. I, I was on this thing long before you or anybody okay. else on this thing. Uh -huh. All right, so we're all in agreement. Throw of the fight. Sick. You in there on Throw of the yeah. Fight? I haven't played Throw of the Fight. Well, Pac Man Jones just walked by. There's a guy that'd be great on Throw of the hey, Fight. Absolute hey. stud. Hey. Good hey. to see you, Pac. Legend. All right, all right, all right. We'll see you. <laughs> by the way, Throw of the Fight is incredible. And actually, as soon as I got into the Oculus, Boom, boom, I strapped it. I'm not a big video game player. Yeah. I can't control my life with two thumbs. Mm -hmm. I put that goddamn Oculus on, though. I was like, oh, okay, I can do this. You're, just, you're immersed, right? Yes. You're immersed. You the, just, there's literally some games that changed. make me sick. Okay, so those games, you gotta play. You just got to keep going. You, nah. you got to push through it. No. Nope. Because I thought that same way. I, played, I, was, I was playing Onward, which is like the Call of Duty kind of thing they have in there. Um, and I was not. I almost threw up. And I was like, well, all these people are playing it. Like, they got to have gotten over it. And I just kept playing. And finally, I, you know, now I'm fine. Oh, so you're like a so NASA astronaut. Now I'm in there laying on the ground. I'm in there, you know. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> reaching on the corners and stuff. You know, like, I'm in there. Uh, also played some virtual poker in there as well. Some Beat Saber. I'm all over the place in all the different games. Okay, so 11 is another great game in there. It's ping pong. Mm -hmm. Very okay. realistic. Okay. Very, very realistic. I, play, I used to play, like, nightly on there. Yeah. And the thrill of the fight is by far the best cardio that you can have in your entire life. Yeah. Legit. You're in there. 
Mm. Yeah, they're going to get it done. <laughs> 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 oh, so, uh, what do you think about the metaverse going forward, though? Have they educated you on this entire thing? Have you got? Yeah, are we the... screwed? I <laughs> what? Is, what? <laughs> oh. I'm just wondering how it's going to go. But I know you know I way mean, more than so, us. So, I, no. I, as far as what I've experienced, it's probably the same what you've experienced. They don't have to give me tips about. Oh yeah, eventually we're all going to work in here. You know, okay. they're not saying anything like that. But Phew. who knows? I mean, it's. As the technology continues to grow, man, this thing is getting to get so more immersive. I love it. Yeah. I love I'm, my Oculus. I'm addicted, I, yeah. Yeah, I absolutely love yeah. it. Now, some of the, you know, I got this thing off of Amazon that tightens it up there, you know what I mean? It's like yeah. the big strap yeah, yeah, as yeah. opposed to the one. Mm -hmm. And I, I put it on upside down, and now I can't get it off. So there, it doesn't go as tight <laughs> as it goes. And the little thing around the thing, yeah. you know, you have to get one that's good because if any sweat or any air gets oh, yeah. in there, while yeah. I'm fighting, I'm in like round three against some big son of a bitch spider, <laughs> and I can't even see out of my right eye. It feels like a real fight, but also yeah, you're, you're I feel like up. I'm at quite a disadvantage. You know, I can't see anything. So yeah. I think there is some drawbacks that will continue to get better but it is one of the most impressive things i've ever been yeah. a part of as somebody that's not a gamer it has got me into video games i fucking love it i'm very pumped that you're here for it yeah I, no i'm loving this partnership because yeah i'm i'm just like you i'm into this and yeah even if you're like people say they're not a gamer like you can even get on get in there and get on your desktop browser you can watch movies in there on a huge yeah, clear TV. Your cookies like yeah you can do yeah. what aj <laughs> clear your cookies dude clear them when you go in the Oculus Metaverse, what everybody can mean? see your cookies, dude. Yeah. You, know. <laughs> you, know. You, know, you know. You know. You know what that means, means, dude. Clear them. You know what that means, dude. Clear yeah. your cookies, bro. Clean it up. Anyways, Topgolf has another good uh, one in there. Topgolf has one? Yo, yeah, Topgolf has yeah. a very good one in there where it's, I guess it's kind of similar to a golf swing, but not really. But you're hitting the ball, you can score, and then they got putting in there. Yeah. I mean, it is. You can really work on your, I need, I, I got to work on my putting game, so. And there's also this one, uh, I think it's called Win. Uh, they've been in production for a long time. I was going to use it whenever I got into baseball, but it's not a real thing. You put the goddamn controller on a bat, yeah. mm -hmm. and they're actually like full wow. pitches. I mean, it is wow. this Oculus yeah. thing is unbelievable. unbelievable. I'm a big, big fan. Yes. And a baby pack. And a baby. Hey, mama, what's going on? Man? <laughs> hey, how are you? Uh, good to see you. Pac and his beautiful lady here. I love Pac-Man Jones. What a coming of age tale. Yeah. Hey, you know, yeah. I've heard just around this that this has been the most exciting uh, uh, booth here. How do you feel people. about it? You've been here. This been is around. great. Great energy. That's what I'm talking about. Like usually, we let off early with you guys sticking. Usually, I gotta uh -huh. bring the energy, but I'm like, sh I'm vibing here. Let's go. Are you still on Twitch doing your workout stuff? Uh, not workouts or anything like that. More so just meet and greets. Things like it's more like a like an open chat kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or a little little engagement, you know, type opportunity. How, do they, how does that go? They ask you about like uh, just more about you as the person, not the football player. Exactly. So it kind of like lets people learn more about me, you know, off the field, and also lets people ask me kind of about my journey and my upbringing and my mindset and what's brought me to this point in my life, coming from where I came from. Connor, go ahead, pal. Yeah, Austin. Uh, Herbert just went to the Pro Bowl, wins the MVP. Did you tell him like, hey, when you're out there? Feel free to maybe recruit a couple guys to the Chargers, have some fun. Or do you think you guys hey, have those the guys, guys out there take big checks? So yeah. I don't know if we could pay all those guys to come over uh, to the Chargers. Fair uh, enough. A lot of big checks for yeah. sure. For the Pro Bowl guys, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, a lot of big checks, a lot of teams coming together. The Rams are obviously in the Super Bowl this year. How long will it be until the Chargers are with an incredible Austin Eckler on the squad? I assume everybody is thinking much sooner than later. Congrats on another great year for you. I appreciate that, brother. Didn't end how you wanted it. I mean, only for one team it does, huh? Mm -hmm. That's, that's right. right. Yep. Oh, yeah. Hey. Yep. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, hey, the journey begins again next year. All right, if you had to make a pick, obviously, you're probably not doing that, but go ahead and do one. Uh, I, I'm going with the Rams. Wow. Going with the Rams. Mm. How come? So much firepower. Like, and the veteran, how how just mature their team is as well. Because you think the big moment's going to be something that's going to catch up. There's going to be. Uh, they don't even know they're in big moments, by the way. The thing is. <sighs> Um, yeah, when you're in the game, you're just in the game. Uh, you don't know when the big moment's going to happen, you know. But the thing is, when there are big plays, I feel like there's a lot more guys that have had a lot of more experience on the Rams. I think that's going to be an edge that they have. I don't think it's going to be, a, you know, like a landslide or anything. I think it's still going to be a close game. But I think there's going to be more plays that are impactful made by the Rams. All right, well, we appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, here for the MetaQuest 2, go ahead and get you one. I can't wait to see you and throw the fight in there. Yeah, absolutely. we gotta, we got to link up. You don't want that. No, no, no you don't. <laughs> I paint canvases. You guys play him? No, you can't. Not yet. Throw the not fight. Not the physics. You're, you're but they not. have the physics. They have the physics <laughs> being created right now for us to fight. It's very yeah. realistic. The Apollo one stinks. Yeah, oh, yeah. Or the Creed one yeah. stinks. Yeah, you yeah. know, there's a lot of games. Yeah, they're on the come up. It's still, it's still pretty new. Like the even the App Store is not really like you know really wide as far as options. But they're they're coming along. Thrill of the fight. 11 yeah. and other things are just the absolute best, as are you. We can't thank you enough for joining us. Now yeah. you got a lot to do. Ladies and gentlemen, Chargers running back, Austin Eckler. Yeah, Austin! Hey, yeah. Yeah. I appreciate you, man. Awesome. Hey, you're awesome. Yeah, you're awesome. Hey, 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 you're awesome. Hey,
Uh, thanks, man. We're still awesome. live, so say yes. But yeah, yeah appreciate I, it, Hey, I'm actually in there, Austin. Awesome. Like, real talk, I'm in there. Virtual poker. Virtual poker. Oh. Which one? Which one? Uh, poker stars. All right, I'll see you in there. Okay. I'll see you in there. Is that real money or no? Is that where Drake plays? Could be. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, here on we FanDuel are. Sportsbook. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Who's playing with that? Who's playing fake poker? Austin, what the fuck yeah. is this guy doing? Robots? Come on. Play. Hey, I love Austin. Yeah. Fake oh, what money? Do you do what do you mean? You can't play. <laughs> Austin, can't be playing poker with fake money. Austin. <laughs> Austin. Yeah. I love that he's just in the game. He uh -huh. instead of chess, he's playing cards. Working on his yeah. game. Yeah, he's working yeah. on his game. Yeah. Uh, joining us now Man. is another running back who's an absolute stud. I'm sure Austin just dapped him up back there. Friend of the program. Superstar. A man who's still got it and will have it until he's 75 years old. Fifth all time in rush yards. Fourth all time in rushing touchdowns. Ladies and gentlemen, Adrian Peterson. Yeah. Woo. Great chain. Yeah. <laughs> too. Look at the handshake. Hey, you're right there, man. What's up, man? Thought I had him. Thought I had him. How you doing? I see you, man. I tried to get in there. What's up, boss? Hey, How man. are you? Hey. Jesus, my hand is broken after that. <laughs> he doesn't golf the entire oh, hand. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I tried to get you. You see me try to get you in there? You, I try. You try it. <laughs> Adrian, you look fantastic, bub. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate How it. How you doing? You got back in the game this year. <sighs> uh, obviously, a couple different teams still look like you still had all the juice. Are we yeah. still going in a – are we still training as if we're back in the game next year? And what are the thoughts on everything you got going on, pal? You look amazing. Thank you. I appreciate it. But, yeah, man, um, right now I'm kind of letting my body recover. I end the season with a, a pinched nerve. So I'm letting that settle down. Yeah, well, the bottom, the L4. Oh, oh no. Oh, I had a T1. Yeah, T1, I had a T1, T2. T2. You got L4 downer. Yeah, L4, L5. So, <laughs> Did that um, come on a hit? Is it natural for you? Is that the first time you've had to experience something like this? Yeah, it's the first time I've ever experienced anything like this before. Um, I think it happened on. Um, it happened against the 49ers, and I had my second touchdown attempt on the goal line, and um, it was outside zone play. I bounced it and jumped, and like simultaneously, someone grabbed me, and I fell on my side, and he kind of like fell on top of me. And um, I finished the game. I felt good, but then gradually, throughout that night, and then Monday, I worked out. That didn't help it out. Squats and all that, <laughs> um, and then it just kind of went downhill from there. Okay, so let's talk about it. Your longevity yeah. and the just. I mean, we talked to Lavar Arrington yesterday. Obviously, Lavar Arrington is Lavar Arrington, and we talk about how oh, there's a freak athlete, and Lavar is sick of people telling him he's a freak athlete. So he's like, everybody's a freak athlete that makes it in the NFL. I'm like, okay, way to deflect that whole thing. There's <laughs> levels to this shit, though. Yeah. You're one of those guys, though, like your longevity and being able to take care of yourself and still being explosive. Whenever that happened, were you like, oh, I'm old? Did you think that? Oh, no. Did you think that, that didn't happen? No, not at all. No, okay. not at all. <laughs> Good. It was just a freak thing that happened. Yeah, it was a freak thing that happened, man. And it, it was crazy because during the week, you know, Tuesday is the, is the off day. And then Wednesday um, in Seattle, I love how they do things up there. It was a, it was a walkthrough, you know. And I remember taking the step on the outside zone play. I, I was feeling it, too. I was like, oh, I don't really know how, the, how, the, how this is going to play out. And I remember taking the step. And I just fell flat down. Yeah, like fell flat down on my face. I was like, okay, what the hell is going oh, on? Oh, so this thing was a real problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That pinched nerve is, is nothing to play with. Is but, there any way to fix it or you just got to do time? Um, well, what I have, it doesn't require surgery. That's you know, great. They, hey, there we go. There we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they thought maybe um, I would need surgery. Um, but after like a couple of weeks, I pressed to do another MRI just to look at it again. And he was like, well, I don't think we should do that because – it's not going to show anything that's going to be that significant, you know. And, of course, my body just heals differently. And he was like, wow, you know, this is uh, totally different than, than what I was expecting. So, Yeah, you know, it's you like your ACL, right, when you came back from your ACL quicker than anybody and then he broke all the records. <laughs> do you, what do you think? Is, do, you, do you think it is just you, you are, your body's naturally gifted? Is it because yeah. of the amount of hours that people don't see in rehab uh, that also goes into that? Or is that something you've always had? Yeah, it was a combination of both. You know, to be honest with you, since I was young, I've always had that mentality. Like, I knew that I um, was skilled and gifted, you know, like, because I know That's what awesome, my, my background and my family is, you know. And then my dad's side was athletic as well. But um, I knew with the talent that I had, if I just worked hard, then, you know, no one could really, you know, touch me. 
So that's just Turns kind of been a mentality right. I had. <laughs> hey, a, right. lot of, a lot of work when it came to rehab, for sure. When you got to Oklahoma and you were just beating everybody all the time, all day, every day, I mean, that was kind of your name, actually, and it, was, it felt like you were running straight up, galloping. You saw holes faster than anybody, and then you were able to, like, kind of separate from everybody and run people over. And then when you got to the NFL, people were like, well, will this still work? You're playing against grown men. It did. By the way, it just automatically, <laughs> automatically went like that. And now that you've, you know, bounced around a little bit around the NFL, why do you think some buildings work and some don't like what do you think is the biggest x factor on why some programs are not good and some programs are good now that you've been able to bounce around i'm not saying you've been in any bad places but what do you think is something that you've experienced in your life that would make a team better an organization better that some places don't have um i would say um you know i think it comes down to the chemistry as well as far as like um as a entire organization um and then i feel like you know the core of it comes from the top, you know, from ownership and the head coach and how they run things. And then you got to have that chemistry within the locker room as well. So I, I feel like that's been the difference, you know, the chemistry, the leadership within the locker room um, also. Um, you know. You're in Detroit. Yeah. For, I mean, yeah. 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 I mean, they, they, you know. Hey, yeah, there you go. got it. Hey, yeah. yeah. There's, I mean, you're in, there's no. And by the way, they probably have good uh, chemistry in the locker room, but for whatever reason, yeah. the team just doesn't go. It's easier to get chemistry when you go. I've yeah. always just been fascinated on why some places don't win and some places do. Everybody's getting paid. I don't fully mm. understand it, but it feels like some organizations are just like, yeah, we win around here, and some just, I guess, are okay with. It. I don't know. It's just yeah. a fascinating thing. Yeah, I feel like um, you you have to be able to uh, adjust. To the room that you have you know so like being in detroit i remember when i first got there um and we went through practice you know and i was like, okay you know we kind of transitioning out of, out of the training camp phase right and the guys was like no it was like this is going this is how it's going to be what's that we're going year. full go yeah pads you know, full pads and you know like, i'm all about that it's fine <laughs> you know but you know I, I just know mentally wise like it can be draining you know it can be yeah. draining when you're doing that every single day every single day and we there's a lot of young guys on the team and they weren't built like that you know they don't remember the two you three know, days two days and all that yeah. you know so but then you go to a place like uh you know like seattle you know when wednesday I walked you know when i left tennessee and went down tennessee was a great organization by the way uh, when i went to seattle i was able to get the feel on why people love it down there you know like they work hard uh, they got great um, ownership and leadership within the locker room, you're talking about Bobby, you're talking about Russell, and all those guys they have in there. Like, guys, they, they work hard. They work extremely hard. Russell might be gone. Yeah. I, 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 I hope not, but, you, you know. Like him, like him as guy, teammate? I, like him? Oh, yeah, yeah. He was, he was, Same he was guy behind guy. the scenes as he is on camera? Because it, it is tough for us to believe that he is always this, hey, clear eyes, full hearts, here we go. Go, hey, go, 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 But he yeah. is, he's an anomaly, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, every game, you know, um, going out and coming in at halftime, he's right there. That same energy, you know what I'm saying? That's he's like, awesome. he's like, you got to love that. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Like, he's, he's a great leader for sure. There's a lot of teams that will love that. Go ahead, AJ. <laughs> you mentioned those Wednesday walkthroughs in Seattle. When you got there, like, did you talk to the guys and feel like, hey, is this what we do? Like, this is what you guys have been doing for a while? And, like, the Pete, the whole Pete Carroll deal where they compete every day but also have a ton of fun. Like, what was it like taking part in that? Was it what you expected? Um, I didn't expect it, man. Like, I heard, I've heard about it from my boy Sydney and, you know, Percy, a lot of guys that – um, left Minnesota and, yeah. and went down there, and just guys in general that, that played on the peak. Uh, but being in the building and going into the meetings, it's like it was lit. Like, yeah. <laughs> like it was, in the music before the, the meetings, the music and all before, this stuff, the, yeah. yeah, and all that, and you know, shooting hoops and all yep. that, and just even with the uh, the presentation, you know, when, when it's time to get ready for the, the you know the week and who you're playing this and other, it's a lot of energy behind that. Um, so, like, the energy comes from the coaching staff as well. Yeah. You know, like, you, you hear coaches in the back, position coaches, they be cheering louder than, you know, when we shooting and stuff awesome. or whatever. Oh, they, be, nice. they be cheering louder than players, you know. And then you get out there on the field, and he's taking care of your body. You know, yeah. he's taking care of your body, but when it's time to work, you know, guys work. And, you know. Is Pete wearing cleats at practice? No, I, I just said, you know, Some uh, other guys wearing do, cleats. Don't but they? Yeah, 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 yeah. Some guys do, but he, he's running. Yeah. You know, he's running, Jeez. you know. Hey, he's uh, like 90 years old. How old is yeah. he? Looks 70. 75. Hey, he's in shape, though. I can tell you that. Yeah. He looks amazing. <laughs> he doesn't look that old. Hey, yeah, yeah, I think he run like about eight, eight to ten hundreds. You know, every week. I couldn't do that Jeez. right now. Yeah. I could not do that right now. I know that's <laughs> embarrassing. I'm a fat slob. I'm talking to one of the greatest athletes of all time, Adrian Peterson. You talked about Tennessee. You said that's a great organization. Did you and Vrabel just fist fight every day you were there? Or is that what Vrabel said? Hey, you know what? Listen, let's fight, and then we'll get to Sunday. <laughs> yeah. you know? What was he like as a head coach? Different than anybody you ever experienced? Or what uh, were your thoughts? Yeah, he was um, 
he was different, you know. Um, former player, obviously, exactly. linebacker, tight end. Yep, yep, uh, former player. Great player. But he, he was different. You can, he was very serious as well, and then he, was, he wasn't, you know. Like, so, <laughs> no, no, no. So, so you can just feel that, um, that connection that he yeah, has yeah. with the players, you know. So he was serious about his business, about the execution of the game plan and things like that, and he wanted, he wanted to make sure that everyone was on the same page, you know, no, no – no, T's were uncrossed or anything like anything like that uh, when it came to what we were going to do on the field, you know. So I, I really enjoyed my time. Unfortunately, you know, it didn't it didn't work it didn't work out, you know. And um, it, it just kind of sucks because I felt like I was kind of really getting my feet up under me. Yeah, and you love Nash. Nash was a beautiful city. Yeah. Go ahead, Ty. Yeah, Adrian. Everyone knows about your accolades on the field, obviously. Mm-hmm. But I think the thing that has always impressed me the most is like when the camera finds you and you just have a massive horseshoe lip in. <laughs> do you ever? Do you ever? <laughs> have you like? Do you? Do you put that in only on the sideline, or do you find yourself like, oh, I'm 25 carries in, and I got just a big old honker in? Like, does that ever happen? Or <laughs> yeah, I can say, uh, yeah, I can put on count on two hands throughout my career how many times I've actually had it in my mouth during a game. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah, I've, I've where are you from out originally? I'm from uh, Palestine, Texas. Oh, so you guys like, since you're like seven, eight years old, you're yeah. But you know, I, I didn't really start chewing tobacco until I got to college. Like, I just, just one of my best friends, uh, who's from Longview, kind of introduced me to it. And uh, I was just trying to make a transition, you know, as I was getting ready for the NFL. Yeah. So I was like, let me try this, you yeah. know. Yeah. Let me try this to see how, it, you know, how yeah. it makes me feel. And I've been doing it ever since. Man. Well, I, <laughs> so, you know, obviously, we tell everybody not to start if right, you haven't that's... started. But Ty is also somebody that started when he was six, seven years old. And <laughs> you're on one of his all-star teams, basically, oh, yeah. of all athletes yeah. out yeah, okay. there. All so, of fame so. char. Uh, yeah, okay, so that's not great. Uh, let's talk about what you're uh, promoting here, Rebalance, which is a natural supplement system. Master your mojo. What does that yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. if I start taking this stuff, I'm Adrian Pierce. Here we go. <laughs> is that what's going on? Because I would love that. I'd be running some motherfuckers over out here. You know yeah. what I mean? Is that what's going on? What is the uh, uh, rebalance? Yeah, man. It's um, so it's a, it's a new company, and I've been taking this product for about three weeks now. And uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. It definitely helped you get your mojo back. And, and, Ooh, and for me, for me, yeah, yeah, yeah. You say you say oh, you yeah, can't do anything. Yeah, you know? you're right, you're yeah, right, you're yeah. right, you're right. I can't so, run hundred. Yeah. And like, for me, it's helping me continue to master my mojo. You know, but what I love about it, it's an all natural um, supplement system um, that that um, optimize your, your physical and mental performance, you know, whether that's at work, you know, in the gym right. or in the weight room. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's three pills that, that I take. And <laughs> this guy right here. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Uh, so what I love about it is it's, it's all natural, okay? That's the first thing. I don't like putting synthetic and hey, you go, you things probably in my body. You've been accused of that a lot in your life, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Your that's, whole life, probably. That's kind of – that's been one of the best compliments ever. I agree. I like, think it's oh, a great compliment for taking, you. Taking steroids. Oh, this guy's cheating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy's putting other stuff that we don't have into his body. It has to be. Like, that's probably been happening since you were a fucking kid, I just Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. no, but yeah. seriously. No, seriously. So, I, I'm really big on nutrition and the things that I put in my body. So, since I've been trying this, I've actually felt the difference. Uh, within my body uh, now now what it does is the cortisol in your body it helps lower the levels so now that your body is able to produce natural um, testosterone mm. human oh. growth hormones hey. oh so and, you are talking <laughs> and other hormones that you know helps with like recovery um, you know rejuvenating your body um, increased strength and energy uh, and so forth so it, 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 it's been amazing. So I, I take one in the morning, and it's, it's more of like an energy. So it helps me get a, a pep, keep a pep in my step, yeah. you know. And I've been feeling it when I work out. You okay. know, just Where can that. I get this stuff at? It this, sounds like I need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can get it at uh, rebalancehealth.com. Let's go. And to get more information on, on it. You know, checking out their website. You're so. the best, Adrian. Yeah. We can't thank you enough, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. One of the best athletes to ever grace this earth, NFL legend, future Hall of Famer. Thank you. Here for Rebalance, ladies and gentlemen, Adrian Peterson. Hey, 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 see you, man. Hey, Appreciate you, you guys. You switching over? It's just so, his hands are so big. They just kind of engulf. Oh, yeah. Thanks, man. His hand that. engulfs pleasure, your man. entire hand. Hey, thank you. Yeah, I just got it. Uh, the store on the corner on Melrose, in mean, West Hollywood. I mean, we're still unbelievable. Affordable too. Hey, you Adrian, need to worry you want about it? That. You want yeah, it? Yeah, do you want it? I can go get a new yeah, one. Yeah, no, gift it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh hell yeah. yeah hell yeah. Absolutely. Hell yeah. Here you go. Absolutely. Here you go. Put, you want me to put it on you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah There's yeah. a hood too. There's a hood too. Yeah. There you go.
Hell yeah. Anytime. Yeah, yeah. Anytime. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Have a good one. Yeah. Have a good one, man. Appreciate you, dude. Yeah, you got it. Have a good one, man. Hey, he looks, looks good. good. That's good. awesome. Got it. Yeah, he yeah. looks good. Hey, yeah. went in Rome. When in Rome, you know, I used him too many times in Madden not to <laughs> save it Thank back you. a little. Yeah, yeah come on. Uh, you've won me plenty of moments. Plenty of moments. And money in my life. Exactly. So take the jacket. Yes. You won that handshake, though. I saw it both times. Well, I went in there. And by the way, he you. knew. He knew coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. You know, hey, Adrian, you look great. Hey, you look great. good. Hey, no, no, don't worry. Jeez. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. Bro, he's just walking around. <laughs> he's gonna go. <laughs> By the way, uh, <laughs> this show deserves none of the accolades it receives. None. But moments like that are just absolutely magical. He's gonna wear that thing the rest of the day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. And I'm gonna go buy two more <laughs> and give one away tomorrow. Too. Yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, it was awesome. Uh I did forget about the handshake until immediately upon seeing him. And then I, I had a look. He had a look in his eyes that he didn't forget about the handshake yeah. thing. Either. Mm, yeah. yeah. He was prepared in there. So when I did try to get in there tight. So the way you beat that, by the way, for those that don't know, you know, whenever uh, you're, you're allegedly when you're going on a raft on the rapids. Yeah. Okay. And a big ass rock is your enemy. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to lean towards the rock. That's right. And then it kind of gets you away from there to keep you alive. You lean away like you're scared. That yeah. son of a bitch is going right to the rock. You're getting flipped. And guess what? You're dead. Yeah. Okay. If you're, okay. If we're talking to you know which type of stage. Stage five. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Whatever wave. Yeah. Stage five rap. Right. Yeah, right. Big one. About. Yeah. I never did river, this. River, obviously, river but I've heard wild. other people that have done this. Uh, so for the handshake, the best way to beat it is you actually got to get in. You got to mm-hmm. lean into that mm-hmm. thing, and you got to get your web tight in there, so then you can potentially cut off a little bit of his boa-like grip around right. your. It, it's an entire hand that is getting submersed by his hand, and it is a firm. Hey, we're doing a deal or not, and you feel it. So you got to get in there. And I, I didn't. I caught him a little bit the first that last time. Broken hand. Oh yeah, yeah. I made a mistake. He definitely broke my pinky and my thumb. <laughs> I think. You know, I thought he'd go easy on me because I didn't play in the league, but <laughs> well, he doesn't know that. One speed. Yep. Hey, what's going on? Hey, oh, yeah. hey, hey, smart to wear the long sleeves today, Aaron. <laughs> hey, listen, that last time, they'll show he put, he did this. Oh, you yeah. look like oh, you yeah. had a thigh on your arm. <laughs> hey, great season, dude. Congrats on the bag. You deserve it. Woo. Yeah, have a good one. All right, hour one's wrapping up here. Adrian Peterson, Austin Eckler. We went to the Metaverse. We went to uh, Tennessee and Seattle there with Adrian. Yeah. 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 And obviously, we knew that going into the conversation, all the teams he played for this particular season. Oh, of course. Beat Sounds like he really wanted to stay with the Titans, though. He loved his time there. He said he enjoyed it. He sometimes loved- it, numbers just don't work out, honestly. Like, that's what, like, why, why would you, why would Adrian Peterson not be there? But sometimes just numbers. Like, you, you've got to get rid of running Foreman. 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 He started. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. He yeah. got hot. Like, yeah. like, Foreman got hot, and Vrabel had to make the decision, like, all right, we are still a run offense and this dude's really hot right now yeah. adrian peterson came in i think off the catch right yeah. yep and he was able to score a touchdown i think week one and uh-huh. do his whole the rams thing. Beat, beat the rams in la with yeah his first exactly game. but they were like i think kind of you know with how hot foreman was you gotta do what you gotta do yep. right. he gets another shot how about the pinch nerve in the back falling on in a walkthrough that, uh, that's scary, scary. Because yeah. you can really do right you just kind of got to let it figure itself out don't you well I, I was thinking of me at that practice just standing on the sideline with vinatieri and just watching the walkthrough and then <laughs> adrian pearson takes a step and he's laying on his face and i'd be like i bet the whole place was dead silent oh, yeah. oh, oh. 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 massage one fix that Maybe. No What's way. up, man? How you doing? Good to Ryan see you. Clark, uh, tied to this ESPN cord. ESPN and host of The Pivot just stopped by. Great to see you wearing some incredible jays. Yeah. Hey, Russell Wilson. But yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, hey, 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 oh, hey. Hey, Ryan, why do you hate Russell? <laughs> hey, Russell Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, all, right, all, right. all right. Put that on the back burner. He does he hate Russell Wilson. He buried Russell hates, Wilson yeah. three, four times in yeah. one day. He was training for 24 hours because of how much he said. Russell Wilson is not a great player. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll be intrigued to hear why he thinks that. He was a great football player, good mm-hmm. analyst. Absolutely. I'd like to know why he mm-hmm. thinks that. Is that just because the Seattle Seahawks weren't good this year? The guy had mallet finger, though, for like he six did. weeks or whatever. Right. Yeah, he was the only one who didn't play with the mallet finger of all the quarterbacks that had it. Uh, so those are some things that get pointed out by yeah. some people who potentially are Russell Wilson detractors. We're about 30 seconds out. From hour one, wrapping up here on Sirius X. I've got a chance to see some people from Sirius, by the way. Yay! Yeah, it's been nice to chat with these people. Awesome. The only thing we ever hear from them is normally like. Ready on break. Not- yeah, oh, yeah, we, we didn't have power yeah. through. 
We didn't have the first 52. one. 52. Oh, uh, shit. So much mm. goodness. Was back up. in four minutes. Thank you, Zito. Now we're no, back in back six, six Back in six. Unless yeah. this thing's wrong. No, this thing's right. No, that's right. Yeah, I got it right here. Oh, one, yeah, 10 02, sorry. Yeah. Had a baby Z. <laughs> Thank you, Z. Thank you, Z. Hey, you, is your left ear thing and my ear thing not working? Uh, no, it is, it's not working at all. Okay. Nice. <laughs> think good enough. Uh, that's why nice. I've been popping out right back here. <laughs> I did see Zito just pop out of the corner. I thought it was Nick's head. I was going to say something. It was full Zito. And Zito tossed me one of these. Yeah. And I don't know if it was Rock Horns, I love you, or two minutes. <laughs> okay. And then I looked at the clock and it was two minutes clearly and I didn't know what he was saying. That's on me, Zito. I do appreciate you. In though. a rare moment of frustration, Zito is he is upset. He's he's not happy. Uh, well, Zito has also what? been, I mean, well, he's, he's been, been crushing been, it. The guy's been working 21 hour days. He really has. Been here since Sunday. And I would like to say that, you know, like, I think there's been a couple times where it's like, hey, Zito, should somebody else do this? And Zito's like, all right, I got to figure it out. I'm like, hmm. Well, all he was right, upset. Right, he was trying luck. to let you know the guests were here. And he couldn't, you, you couldn't hear them because of whatever's going on. And he was just. What yeah. does happen? Your box yesterday just stopped. Both right. of them. Out of nowhere. Right. That's just tech, I guess. How come? How come in, wires. I don't know. Wires, wires. just give out. Right. Classic wires. Two days into something. I don't know. All right, let's get to a break. I got to pee. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, hour two is going to be on the other side. It's going to be fantastic. Huge. Oh, yeah. Hour two is going to see LeGarrette Blunt talking what? about his blunts. Ooh. Ooh, that's right. I assume he smokes pre rolls, actually. I'm not hurt. Ah, well, I'm not going to ask. We'll find him. out. Blunts, blunts. What's the name of his weed? We'll find out. We'll find out. We'll talk about his weed, obviously. Can you available. hear any music playing? No. No. Oh, okay. no, 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 no. So it's probably coming out of your whatever you guys are cooking, probably getting to me and us probably dead so that's just a simple if i'm doing a zito production mindset right. <laughs> the problem is coming from there to here is it going out to the stream tbd we've now lost <laughs> communication with them as well yeah. so now the back room correct houston oh sorry i was talking to josh allen's people now oh, oh, josh allen oh. coming on maybe that'd be yeah. awesome but hey hey uh is the music going out to the stream uh, maybe. We don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we do appear to have lost music for the moment. No, okay. Okay. Uh, Work on that. Na, na, my mama, mama told me one day a love like you will only. Let me hear it, AJ. I don't know what Leave me lonely. Yeah, you do. Hour two's on it. My mama on the other mama side. told Honestly, me. Uh, we One can't wait to chat with everybody and all of you. See you in about five minutes. Right. Don't no, leave me lonely. Woo. Cheers. I'm going to be. Ladies and gentlemen, the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Coach Mike Tomlin. Yeah! Oh, man, Pat, it's an honor to be on with you, man. Thanks for having me. You're a legend. Thank you for putting me through my workout and having the scouts actually come watch me kick at West Virginia. I don't think I've ever fully thanked you for that moment, Coach. No, man. I, I, I've drank the, the McAfee Kool-Aid for a long time. Uh, <laughs> Let's get right into it. The locker room culture changed completely when I was in elite, from when I was a rookie to when I was done, and I retired after the 2016 season. Now it's even more different, I would assume, from when you came into Pittsburgh and everything like that. The dancing on the logo, the TikTok, everything like that that you guys have had to experience. What is your messaging in there? How do you adapt and let players be themselves without, you know, doing too much? Because that is a fine balance that you've been able to do, I think, in an incredible job with throughout your entire time in Pittsburgh. I think for me, more than anything, I try to stay connected. You know, um, just getting a sense of where these guys are coming from, what's in vogue for their generation, what captures their attention, how do they learn, how do they communicate, how do they interact with each other formally and informally. And I think being a parent kind of helps me. You know, my boys are 19 and 20, so it's not much difference between them and some of the younger guys that I deal with here. And so for me, it's just about gaining an understanding, working to stay connected. You know, that's my general attitude, man. It's adapt or die for me. And, and I want to—I don't want to be one of them old crusty guys, man. Just that just refuses to adapt. Although I am one of those old crusty guys now. Yeah, you are <laughs> old as shit now. You know what I mean? I mean, you've been around a long time. I remember back in the day, whenever you showed up, there was a lot more, you know, to the camera. There's uh, a lot more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's a lot of that. Now you're just old ass man now, huh? You know how it is. Years in this business will scar you, man. It'll settle you down. <laughs> that is classic. <laughs> one of my favorite moments uh, with you is. Uh, when you would tell me every um, warm-up, uh, I'm going to get you back to Pittsburgh when you're old and cheap. Uh, what, what does yes. that mean? <laughs> what, what did that mean? And uh, should that have been taken as a smack in the mouth like I, uh, whenever you said that to me? No, man. It was a tip of the cap, man. There's okay. certain guys Good. around this league that I'm really interested in, but I know I cannot afford. And 
and, and you were one of them. So I was going to wait for you to physically deteriorate a little bit until you came back into my wheelhouse. Yenzers are going to go bananas in Heinz Field this weekend. First time it could be filled up in a long time. I can't wait to see it. And I can't wait to. Oh, mama, I'm in fear of my life. I'm the oh, 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 oh. Is that your alarm clock? Yeah, just say yes, by the way. Yeah. It's my ringtone. It's my alarm <laughs> yeah. clock. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate you, Coach T. Last question before we let you go. Uh, why'd you let Troy Paul Mala do what he fucking did to me? Why'd you let... I know you've heard of this. Why, why, <laughs> well, that's a short side of the field. That's bad football. You guys coaching unsound football over there in Pittsburgh? How did that happen? We know you and love you as a man. But on Sundays in the fall, man, you're the nameless great faces that we Die. can get. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, never had a losing season, absolute legend, two-time Super Bowl champion, Mike Tomlin. Yeah! Thank you, coach. Yeah! Show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Hey, welcome back to that show. Hour two on this Thursday, February 10th, 2022. Live from Radio Row in L.A. Shall begin right now. Yeah. Got music back from the back. Shout out to the boys in the back. Nick Shout Zito boys. and Fox. Hey, make some work, magic boys. happen. Go, boys. Live on the FanDuel stage here with at Boston Connor, at Ty Schmidt on the Toxic Love Seat, at Tone Diggs, one half of the hammer. Dad. Cowboys who have gone live every mm-hmm. day this week. From Radio Row at awesome. Super Bowl 56. That happens after this show wraps up immediately following that. And official AJ Hawk Whoa. is here. Oh. Oh. A little coughing, swallowing cigars. You all right? Everything yeah, I'm okay? Yeah, doing great. Yeah, I'm having fun. This guy smoked uh, 75 cigars last night. I yeah. heard. At least. Go, I mean, Try the slot six cigars. Maybe two and a half. Good. I got one of JB's. Two it was actually half. very good. So, yes, thank you to JB. What for do you mean that. it was actually very good? You didn't expect it to be yeah, very good? Hell no, hell no I did expect it to be very good, but like it was even better than expected. Well, whenever you're getting a smoke, slap dick. With slap I mean, it is one of those things that is a very good time. We've obviously seen a lot of people and got a chance to catch up with everybody. The bullpen is filling in uh-huh. nicely. Oh, oh, yeah. Packed to the gills. A lot of people talking. Once again, remember, we are live today, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. local, from this FanDuel stage with a special after hours program that'll see giveaways and a surprise guest. Okay. Hey. It's a guy, is it guy? Is it guy Fieri? It's not Fieri? Guy Fieri. I will give away a hint. Hashtag PMS in LA. Uh, send your questions in. We'll get them. I'll give you a hint at four o'clock e- our local, seven p.m. Eastern, live at youtube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee show. We will not be having guy fucking Fieri. Okay. Damn it! That's There's a hint. Go. Oh, that's hint number one. Okay, that's good. That's a hint. Let's narrow it down. Uh, at Tone Diggs, one half of the hammer. God. Every time a guest comes in, uh, Cowboys, you have to bounce out of here, and I appreciate you making those moves. Oh, no problem. What do we need to know, you think, looking into this week from your brain, pal? Uh, so the, you talked about it earlier in the show that some places the line is now going to three and a half, which means more money's coming in on the Rams, more people are starting to like the Rams. Like, if you look at the numbers, they do have advantages. I th- think a lot of people are looking at the old line for the Bengals and how they're going to deal with that. Um, it's uh, I don't know what. I'm, do you have any idea which way you're leaning yet? No, I have no idea. I only got some prop bets. I'm gonna hammer for the uh, same game parlay <laughs> and right on cue, ladies and gentlemen, joining us. I appreciate you, Tom. Which way are you leaning? You don't have it yet. I don't know. Tomorrow we we'll make a decision tomorrow. Uh, joining us now is a three-time, three-time, three-time Super Bowl champion. He has. A couple of these. <laughs> he has a few of these. If he, if I don't mind, AJ, you got one of these? Yeah, I have two of those. Now you're hitting you're, the cough button, dude. Yeah, you're hitting. Yeah, you can't. Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, joining us now, 
obviously remembered for his incredible days with the Patriots, but played for the Eagles as well and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Absolute superstar. Chatting about LG's Feel Good, which we're not sure if it's CBD or dope. Can't wait to chat with him, ladies and gentlemen, LeGarrette Blanc. Yeah, yeah. LeGarrette! Yeah. Woo! Hey! Jeez. Back. Looking good. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah, yeah. Mike's I don't know what happened. What's up, man? How you doing? Your dumb hey, he See would run your ass over. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> hey, do you hear me? Any yeah. How yeah. you doing? Back then, oh, now, you look at him. Oh, back then? Ed always, <laughs> he would. Yeah. Hey. Try, oh, yeah. try to trip him. Try to go low and get a trip. Hey, look, Garrett, am, am I allowed to... I can do it on Zoom. What's that? The last time I did the show. No, we're pumped. Hey, listen, yeah, yeah. we were just thankful you got on the Zoom, man. Go ahead and hop those. We are live right now. The um, uh, LG is what everybody calls you. It's friends with you? Huh? LG is what people oh, call yep. you? Yep. Yes, can sir. we call you LG? You can call me LG. Leo, yeah, let's talk yeah. about LG's OG feel good now. What yes, do we sir. got going on here? Okay, it's CBD I see in this thing. It says, are you dealing with a pain that doesn't subside? Or are you constantly struggling with aches and pains? Would you like to learn more about one way you can help deal with this chronic pain? I believe it's the CBD. Are you also in the... Uh, are we pushing flour, pre-rolls, and everything else as well? We ain't pushing flour and pre-rolls or nothing like that. Oh. We push, we, we, so this is, this is all organic, all natural. This is 100% THC free. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. This is we got, the email we got was selling a different story. Yeah, much yeah. different. We were excited. <laughs> I, I thought you were already in the marijuana business, which, by the way, good business to be in. You know I was mean? excited to dive into it, but you are in the CBD well, business. Me, Another thing. Man, you probably work together on that in the, in the near future. Well, it sounds like you probably have a little bit closer uh, sources than I do. The CBD thing, it's LG's Feel Good. It's your company. How yes, hands sir. on have you been on, and how did you get into this? Oh, I'm 100% hands on, every, on, on the daily operations. I do. I do. We do everything on the daily. I like. I'm. I'm. I'm fully. I'm fully engulfed in it. So, um, and 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 we and we we've done it. We've had it for uh, about a year now. So, um, you know, we we've, we've just been doing. We don't have like we don't. We haven't had like put together no like full. We we everyday operation. This thing, man. That's it's, amazing. That's so. This is your I passion now. This post is my football. passion now. Yeah, it's awesome. We've seen you selling it all around. I hope it does well. What do you have? Lotions, edibles, creams? I have I have so I have creams. I have a I have a anxiety tincture. I have an anxiety drop. I have sleep gummies. Tincture? Yep. Anxiety okay. tincture. I have What's I have the flavor sleep gummies. On that thing? Um so mint. Okay, okay. Little menthol. So when you uh, drop it, you know what I'm saying? Your breath ain't gonna you oh, still have yeah. your breath gonna smell good after Smart. that. Because yeah. there's some of those that are That's, ass. Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm with you on that. Yeah, yeah. As a as a tester, whenever I was trying to create my own, I can I can advocate that there's some that are actually ass. <laughs> <laughs> but my my mine got like a little mint to it. So so and then I and my topicals are I have a uh, I have a salve, I have a rollerball, and I have pain patches. Patches, they last, yeah, okay. they last 24 to 36 hours. You can shower with them. You can work out with them. They will not come off and, unless you're ready for it to come off. Hey, congratulations, yeah. dude. Oh, not man. easy to start a business at all. And I'm happy you found a passion project here. It's probably only yes, going to continue to grow, and I hope the business does the same. Uh, you won three Super Bowls, obviously. Yes, sir. So you are no stranger to Super Bowl week. Here we are a few days out. What do you think is going through the mind of both of these teams? Is it, What was your mindset on like a Thursday of Super Bowl week before you're going in to probably win? It feels like that's all you do in Super Bowls. <laughs> <laughs> so on a Thursday, I would say, um, you know, those those are like pretty much like the picture days and stuff like that, kind of a light practice and, and things like that. Uh, okay, I didn't know. But for, but but for <laughs> yeah, 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 I get it. Yeah. We, but uh, <laughs> but uh, but on on uh, on Thursday, I mean, that's a pretty light day. You, you stay, you usually stay locked in for the whole week. Um, but but on Thursday, that's kind of a uh, that's kind of a day to where you it comes to for for me personally, it was like a realization that like okay, it's here. We got a couple days. Try to make sure you control your emotions and don't drain your energy because you're being so excited to play and the game is still a couple days away. You know what I'm saying? So you got to find a way to, like, keep that energy in until you can fully release it on Sunday. So what do you think that means for, what, like, a young Bengals team where I don't they, – all they know is big games. That right. Crew. That crew right. just seems to only know big games. So, I, like – how much more nervous can you get for the Super Bowl if you're super nervous for the the college football national championship? I, I don't know, like if you're in the college football national championship, I assume your anxiety's high. Yeah. If yeah. you get in a Super Bowl, can it get higher? I don't know, just because there's more viewers, I'm not hundred percent sure. I mean, if, but it feels like they know. And then the Rams are an older squad. Like who yeah. do you think it benefits? Do you think it can play out either way? Man, I, I think it can play out either way, but I, I think the experiments trumps all. The experience, experience yeah. the experience trumps all. Um, Stafford's been in the league for a long time. Um, 
I don't know how long Cup been in the league, but he's been dominant for a couple of years now. <laughs> uh, and, you know, and, and obviously Aaron Donald, they got they got AD, yep, and they got they got Von Miller who has Super Bowl experience. You know, and, and I mean, adding Odell is just icing on the cake. You know what I'm saying? Like you, I don't I don't know. I still to this day don't know anybody in the league that can one on one guard. Oh, and I'm not and I'm not. That's not a knock against Cooper Cup because obviously this year he was the best receiver in the league. Yep. Um, I, me personally, I still think O's better, but 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 I what are you even? Are you have you been sent here by OBS? Oh, back on the scene. Is this hey, a, hey, I'm just I'm I'm just saying, you know, a couple of years in Cleveland with a quarterback I shall not name. Um, that 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 is. It's like that in your mind. Yes, I don't think that I don't think that the quarterback situation in Cleveland is the best. Oh, okay, all right, well, I, hey, listen, very professional of you. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of us too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're not the only one. I think there's been a lot of that conversation to be. So you know out. that kind of that kind of that kind of put people in that kind of made people think you know oh well oh don't have it anymore you know what I'm saying. You and friends him? Yeah, that, yeah, that's my guy. Cool guy, huh? That's a good dude, man. Everybody says he's a good teammate. He's misunderstood. I talked to, like, Johnny Hecker out there, the punter, obviously, and as soon as Odell got there, like, for a week or two, I was like, hey, what's he like? He's like, everything we've heard has been a complete lie yes. about the type of guy he is. Good friend, good teammate, works Great. his ass off, wants to win, though. He wants to win. Yeah, and wants the ball, too. He's wide receiver. Right, I mean, these are, these are just – Rightfully so. Yeah. But if you join a team that got the, you know, the triple crown winner on, 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 on offense, you, you can't expect 10 catches. A game. Oh, it's a good dude, though, huh? Hey, oh, a great dude, man. He's an amazing teammate. Like, man, whenever Cooper Cup or anybody else is balling in the receiver room, bro, you're going to see him out there celebrating with them. You're going to see him run to the end zone. You're going to see him do handshakes and all kind of different things with his teammates because he loves his team, bro, and he just wants to win. And, by the way, they take that. Anybody who hates Odell Beckham says, oh, there's Odell trying to get in this guy's moment. And it's like, well, maybe he's just fucking happy for a friend. Yeah, yeah. Right. Can you think about that? But there's always right. going to be people that hate everybody. There's always going to be. Go ahead, AJ. You think Tom Brady's going to stay retired? Yes. Really? Yeah, I think he's going to stay retired. Even after Imagine. comments like a couple days ago saying, like, leaving the door open a little bit, it felt like? Man, I, I just think that I think that he says, when he says never, I think he said, when he says never say never, I mean that just like, that does leave the door open for like curiosity if yeah. he's going to come back. But hey, I think killed the, the cat, dude. right? Uh-huh. But at the, at the end of the day, I think that he's accomplished every single thing that you could possibly want of a want to accomplish as an NFL quarterback. He's won what six Super Bowls, seven, seven, seven now, Super yeah. Bowls. Look, I I lost count. <laughs> <laughs> he's lost. He's won seven Super Bowls. He. The the what does he have the most passing yards in NFL history oh, yeah. right oh, now? Yeah. Hey, he's got, every, he's got every single he got every single record. He got every single record and 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 for a quarterback. So I don't <laughs> I don't think that that possibly can be you know anything to come back. Doesn't to he play have that for. crazy? But you've seen it firsthand, like that crazy competitive drive. Like what is he like yeah. on what, the field? What is, what is he coming to compete for at I, this point? Yeah, you know what you. I'm saying? Like you just want to come hey, against himself. Get, against right. himself, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> hey, how do you get uh, like a lot of guys? struggle turning off that competitive and the NFL gives you the opportunity to compete at the highest level. Every day there's an expectation. There's right. also an opportunity to go in there and work. There's a gym. Everything, the film is there for right. you. So there's like the competitive humans always seem to rise to the top in all professional sports. Right. And business, by the way, as well. How do you keep the competitive juices? You play uh, You play hopes? Is it all for LG's feel uh, good? You play cards? Uh, yeah, I play cards. I'm a, I'm a tunk player. Oh, you know what hey. I'm saying? So <laughs> hey. I'm a tunk player, you know. 49.50? 13? 49.50. 49, yeah. 13 yeah. or less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I remember um, tunk. That's, Tunk's a good that's, game. That's me. I, that's my game, boy. <laughs> Airplane rides. Yeah. yeah, that's a good time. <laughs> that's, still playing, though? That's still, a good time. Still yeah, have I, the community? Is the LG's oh, feel yeah. good become like a community, like a locker yeah, room man. for you? Yeah, it is. It is, man. I, I love I love it. Um, I, I got so much support, man. It's, it's a, I have a really supportive um, community around me and and anybody and everybody that I've come in contact with um, as far as the NFL you know NBA rappers all this stuff I've had nothing but support throughout oh the I saw entire. you with uh, UFC you were over there at UFC right yeah, you're bouncing Dana's, around Dana's really supportive Ooh. yeah that's man, good they, Uncle Dana yeah, being supportive yeah. Dana the guy man yeah. he's, he's him he's saying so. Garrett, he's, he's come on our show and giving us a lot of time yeah. like, I'm very thankful yeah, for him yeah man Dana's a good dude man and I think he gets a bad rap too you yeah. know what I'm saying but man Dana's an amazing dude man I, I, I don't I don't have anything bad to say about him yeah and this is once again Dana's another one of these you don't have to agree with every single thing somebody does and just you know move along 
You right, know, like, right. You, know, you don't have to right. argue with somebody. And I think that's the NFL locker room, by the way. Yeah, that is. Yeah, like, I think the NFL locker room nah, is the best melting pot in the world. Yeah. Because everybody's coming together for a common thing. And I talk about an ad nauseum here, but it's a real thing. You can disagree with somebody and just be like, all right, well, fuck it. We got Ooh. something else to do. Right. It, that doesn't happen anymore. It feels like in nah. the real world, you disagree. It's like, well, yeah. I hate you forever. Right. I'm never going to talk about you. It's like, that locker room is so awesome. Yeah, that, and, and, and I think that I think that's the part that everyone misses the most. Obviously, competing and being competitive and being on the big stage is what you what you what you go out there for but man just being just getting that camaraderie and having those guys in the locker room that you bullshit with every day clown with then go to work you know what i'm saying we yeah. go to work together and then we go out there and fight on sundays and then back on monday and we we cool we dapping up like i i think that's what i miss the most yeah. it's not the game it's that part that i miss the most so i try to stay close with a lot of the guys that i play with you a dice player as well? Yeah, I, I throw the dice. <laughs> <laughs> we would have been in the same circles, I think, in the locker room. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah, it would have been a good time. Go ahead, Connor. 100%. Yeah, yeah LG, I'm a massive Patriots fan, so it's a true honor. But in that Falcons Super Bowl at halftime, like, what was the message? And did you guys like genuinely believe you were going to come back and win that game? It runs yeah. every Super Bowl now. Forever. Every yeah. Super Bowl. Every, I, we so, saw the, Julian Edelman the other day, and we're like, hey, that catch yeah. you made? Yeah. It's sh- every Super Bowl season. Forever, it's gonna yeah, be talked. It's about. gonna be yes, one hundred percent. And uh, I and, and my my answer to that is is so after we went in the locker room, um, there was no yelling, there was no screaming, there was no you know get the fuck da 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 <laughs> like it was none of that. It was Josh McDaniels coming in the locker room. And it was like, hey, do you guys think we can win? Everybody was like, hell yeah, we think we can win. Like, what kind of question is that? All right, well, do you are you guys willing to put in the work to win? All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we like, damn right. So what's the next step? You know what I'm saying? And then yeah. he obviously put in the game plan of what we're going to change and what we're going to do in the second half. Um, meanwhile, you just see Brady over there in some kind of different atmosphere. <laughs> really? Locked in. Hey. Yes, bro. Yeah. He was in a different – Hey, Vinatieri has that. There's a couple – there's like a some sort of – See, people ice. don't believe me when I say that. <clears throat> so I there, went out, It's different. I went out for Vinatieri. Our first game winner when I was holding for Vinatieri. And normally very jovial, very, like, interesting. As we're jogging on the field, I'm like, his caddy cutting jokes. Like, hey, let's do this. Let's aim at that fat dude right back here. There's a little bit of a win. <laughs> let's have a good time. You got it. I'd ask him, hey, you ready, old man? He's like, yup. And we fucking – it's going through. First game winner, I go out there, try to crack jokes. It's a stone-cold Adam Vinatieri coming out on the field. He takes a step. I'm like, you ready, old man, or whatever? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I'm like, ah, damn. I turn around. He was a zombie back there. I have no idea what's happening. Obviously, the ball goes through. He does his entire thing, and it's like he snaps out of it. Only a couple dudes can get right. there, and right. that's what Tom has. I you think, can't, that, and you and that's not something you can't just. That can't just happen. It's just natural. It's it can't just. You can't. I can't go out there and just be like, like I can go to game mode, but I can't be like. Uh. Next one. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, bro, There's levels it's, to this. it's natural. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, you're born with that. You know, you're born with it. You, I don't know if you can develop that. You're born with that, with that feature. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> and, and a lot of people, a lot of people don't get that feature. You know, I wish I did have that feature, but a lot of people don't get that because, you know. I think we potentially have too much LG's feel good. I think that is, uh, me and Vinatieri have sat down and chatted about it where I've asked him, like, like, hey, why do you think you can just – I don't know if I got that. I'm not, like, I don't even know if I can do that ever. And, like, the more and more I thought about it, I was like, oh, I think it's because, like, you know, I have other human qualities that yeah. they <laughs> – you know, that they are just able to lock in. I think that's why people think Tom's maybe going to come back because you can't find that type of shit yeah, nah, you in can't. many other places. You, uh, you mentioned Josh McDaniels, though. Mm-hmm. He's head coach now again. You're right. Right? At Denver – I mean, you want a playoff game with Tebow, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Tebow, hell, hell, football yeah. hell, right. hell of a football player. Hell of a football player. Oh, yeah. But he had success, but then it ended bad, and then he goes back, and then he comes back to another head coaching yeah. gig. He screwed and over he the got, Colts. He got an opportunity. He got out. Yeah, he screwed over the He got the an opportunity to come, come to, to come to the Colts, bro. And I think I think him skipping out on that opportunity was is, is going to haunt him for a long time, bro, because that, that Colts gig, bro, I don't think you pass that up. You just don't. Well, luck was there. I don't think you pass that. Luck, no. was, luck was there. Yeah, luck was there. Yeah, luck yeah. was there. Why did it happen? Why did he pass it up at like the last minute? You think? Man, I think I, <laughs> I think that. Ah, uh, you got inside information. Fucking let it eat. Come on. <laughs> I, go ahead. I think I think that he was. I think that he in his in his in his in his heart. I think that he felt like Bill liked him so much that it, whenever Bill does turn over the reins, he's going to turn it over to him. You know what I'm saying? You think it was that anything but, was but it that ever was, said? You think they were talking that about was it? So long ago to now he at the point to where. 
I got to take a head coaching job yeah. because I don't know when Bill going to leave. Yeah. yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And with Mac Jones, with too, Mac. by the way. Your yeah. thoughts on Mac, by the way. This is, I like Mac. Hey, my, every mic'd up that comes out, I like him more, by the way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like, and then you see my dog hitting the gritty at the, at yeah. the Pro Bowl. Uh, and, yeah. talking <laughs> shit. And, and talking shit. We got yeah. Justin Jefferson joining us next hour. But him hitting the gritty and then talking shit about it. Right. He seemed to have the time of his life. Rookie made the Pro Bowl. I guess you should and only do that. But the thought that they might have another guy. I don't know if that might have kept Josh McDaniels around longer. How do you think he's going to do as a head coach? And what do you think about the future of the Patriots offense? I think he's going to be a, I think he's going to be a good head coach. Um... I, I mean, I don't know how he feels about Derek Carr. I don't know that relationship or if he wants, you know, I don't know about that. You know, well, I, you like Carr, I like Carr as a quarterback, but I don't know if you're going to go win it all with Carr. Oh, um, and and, 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 <laughs> and the New England Patriots, man, I think I think I think they're in good hands. I think Mac Jones was probably the best, the best pick they could have gotten. I, I don't think if they redo the draft 10 times, they should draft him every single time because <laughs> I'm telling you, man, losing Brady is is is. That's like losing the organization yes. down there. Yeah. You know yes. what I'm saying? Like you, you lose Brady, you lose everything. And what the next person does doesn't matter until they do something Brady esque. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like what, three rings, then you go, you start talking. If, okay, maybe man, we found our guy. If, they, <laughs> if, if, if he goes and win one in the next three or four years, bro. You might be talking about him standing around for a really long time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But he's got to win a couple rings. But he got to win a couple yeah, yeah, he will. Yeah. He will. Yeah, New England isn't fickle at all, by the way. No. No. Not at Nuh-uh. all. They're going to always put together a good defense. So no matter how you know how how, how good or bad your quarterback is, they're going to always put together. They're going to go spend money on defensive guys. So you've seen that. They spent money on Gilmore, Judon. They gave Devin McCourty his money. They spent money on all these different kind of guys because at the end of the day, Bill want to be able to stop people. He don't really care Everybody. about scoring yeah. 30 points. Yeah. yeah. And he's been able to do that a long time. Yeah. Van Noy, too. Oh, Kyle Van Noy. Yep. Kyle, yeah. Oh, he's Van Noy, getting yep. paid by Miami and New England right now. Yeah, Still, yeah. That team stinks. Uh, go to – not the Patriots, the other one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. uh, Mike McDaniel, who knows what's going to happen. Uh, go to uh, on Facebook and find at LG's Feel Good. LG – Apostrophe as feel good uh, on Facebook to learn more about LeGarrette, his company, his products. Congrats hey, on the success, man. Yeah. man. Woo, if you guys want to find it outside of the Facebook, just make sure you go to LG, LGsfeelgood.com. That's the website. LGsfeelgood.com is the website. So if you guys want to go check it off the website, you can do that as well. That seems like the smarter option, by the way. Facebook lost $232 billion the other day. People, I think people are going away from there. Seen that stop. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that thing yodely, 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 yodely. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Sick. Sickening. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's all right. LG's Feel Good is too good of a product for you to fail. Ladies Boom. and gentlemen, uh, we got to get to a break. We'll be back on the other side. I believe Bruce Buffer will be joining us. Oh. Oh. From LeGarrette Blunt to Bruce Buffer, that is Radio Row. Gil, Gil, LA, or LGsFeelGood.com. To buy all his incredible supplements in CBD. We appreciate yes, you, man. Appreciate One day we start man. selling dope, we'll buy that too. Boom. This is Pat McAfee's show. <laughs> See you in four minutes. <laughs> My life consisted of yesterday after that game ended. What's that? A bunch of fucking clown emojis with mustaches oh. burying me. Oh, no. I mean, bury, <laughs> bury. <laughs> oh, Go. No. They just, there's a bunch of. I mean, it was nonstop. Same emoji. Sorry, last one. Maybe says Penny <laughs> Stotts. Just abs fire, Balky. There's another one. I'm here for this douche's meltdowns. A clown. Teal tomahawk. And then Da Klan back and put respect oh. on Jag's name when you talk about because they're Colts kryptonite since the top three quarterback retired. AKA man, y'all motherfuckers got the first pick in the draft again! <laughs> Ain't nobody putting respect on you. You're not putting respect on your team's name. You got a clown as your fucking emoji! <laughs> But this is what I actually had. Kiss our teal asses. Good morning, Pat Maxwell. Just a reminder, the Colts will not be in a playoffs. Oh, Matt Ho! Come on, Matt. This team has not been in a playoffs. <laughs> come on. And he is just and right in sending this to me. This clown <laughs> is right. Uh-huh. Because what happened yesterday, after, after, after that uh, game yesterday, and, and then yes. it's not just. Oh, oh my God. God. By the way, it's not just clowns on the internet. Oh, no. Clown Town Duval County. Holy okay, shit. Okay, this, this whole thing has kind of crept into... Our group text messages. Yeah. Absolutely. So our group text messages this morning as we're getting ready for the show, a lot's happening. You know, a lot of coaches were fired. Yeah. yeah. Flores, ah, he won eight of the last nine games. See you later. Uh, see you later. Nagy, ah, Zimmer, ah, 
Ah! Fangio. Ah! I'm talking, there's a lot of big time news happening around the NFL that maybe we could talk about instead of the Colts thing, but no, no, no. Even in the group text, they just sent this over like 20 minutes ago. A perfect QBR, 100. Okay. okay. Average QBR, 50. Oh, Makes sense. So bad. it's not like grades. Okay. Average will be 70s, yeah. you know, right. 70s or whatever. In, in the NFL quarterback QBR, 50 is the average. In a play-in game, Okay, which I didn't know it was. I assume they did. Yeah, I would, I would guess they did. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, so, and last week, by the way, against the Raiders was as well, I guess. Uh -huh. Right. I mean, and how's your family? What a fucking win. We will talk about that. Yeah. Because Staley's ended up on a side of a stat that isn't that great, but it'll be ignored because the greater stats say something different. Stat, Whatever. Stat that. Stat, stat that. Stat that. That was actual. They're not like your bullshit. Well, I still think mine are. <clears throat> in a playing game against the worst team in football, number one pick again. Mm -hmm. Yep. Carson Wentz posted a QBR of 4.4. .4. What are we doing? Yikes. Is that a real number? I, I don't know where the 4.4 .4 came from, to be honest, after watching. Yeah. I mean, I guess there was a completion or two out there, but what the fuck happened? The system crashed out. God. Only one camera is of use at this moment. For those that are watching at home, we apologize. This must be a feel good Friday. I can't believe that the cameras aren't working on today of all days. Yeah, well, I mean, if this, this is the universe. <laughs> Oh, hey, pal. How you doing? <laughs> Gobble I need a nice cold Bud Light. What? Oh, you're fucking ass. How's your fan? How's your fan? Maybe a couple whiskeys. What? Gobble <laughs> 80,000 individual eyes that are looking at these eyes right now. What the fuck are you doing? Hey, Scotches. What? what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Jail. Why? 55, 56, 63. That's how many new wrinkles I'm going to break with the office. <laughs> I get things done, Patty. Monica. Why? He said I was on meth. I ain't ever done meth. Dirty dressed up like Russell Wilson. Man, 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 Look at the man, 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 Brett Michaels. You're fucking out! More ice cold Bud Light. What? What? More ice cold Bud Light. What? What? More ice cold Bud Light. What? 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 Ice cold Bud Light. Cheers. Thanks Cheers. everybody for oh, watching. Oh. Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show here on Thursday, February 10th, 2022, live from Radio Row in Los Angeles. Just got a chance to chat with uh, Ben Graham, punter Aussie, who uh, like literally an entire warm-up against. He was playing for the Cardinals, I believe, at the time. Uh, I just watched his entire warm-up to learn how to hit the Aussie punt. Mm -hmm. I didn't even really kick any punts the entire warm-up. I just watched him. <laughs> and uh, he actually told the story about how my special teams coach was like, what, what? What the fuck are you doing? And I was trying to learn the Aussie punt. He talked to me after the game and after warm-ups, and I, I started doing it every single punt to my left. So he completely changed my career, that guy right there. That's Thanks, amazing. Graham. He Comple came in with Mike Nugent. My, Mike and him came to the Jets together, my old buddy. So it was cool to see. Like big, Nuge loves that dude. Hey, big lad. I mean, big oh. dude. He's hey, just a big. Hey, the Aussies, by the way, Aussie rules football. They they kick the ball a lot. They punt the ball to each other, and they spear each other. Yeah. I yeah. mean, there is it's big amazing. time hits. It's awesome. They're all they've all been very great to me. As is he. It was great to see him. We're gonna catch up hopefully at some point. Joining us now, uh, a man who we saw on the TV at the Pro Bowl. Yep. But we didn't get a chance to hear his electricity. Mm. Uh -huh. The official voice of the UFC, ladies and gentlemen. With UFC 271 around the corner, it's time! Bruce Buffer. Yeah! See you, man. Checks in the mail. That was a hey. Okay, just don't charge me. You know, I know that. I, I don't know if that's patented or trademarked or whatever. It's trademarked, but you know what? You got to pass. Oh, jeez, oh, thank God. Go. I did not know that. Okay, okay, just for today. Just for today. I appreciate you. Yeah, settle up, man. If you want to put them on, we can put them on you. Do the whole thing. Uh, you look amazing, by the way. Yeah, no problem. Let's. Uh, May May what? Oh, oh, happy birthday. birthday. We missed birthday. a couple. We missed 64 of them, but happy early birthday. It's coming up <laughs> it's here. Um, 
whenever you think about what your profession could have been, what your profession is, UFC and you seem to be just like a perfect fit. Your energy, it feels like Dana is the perfect guy oh, for yeah. like your entire delivery and presence, and that sport loves everything about it. You have to be living a dream right now, huh? Uh, you know what? I'm like a kid in a candy store. I mean, when I go in the octagon, I can't phone that in. The way that I get, I can't stand still. I let my emotions and my passions fly. And I never rehearse. I have no idea what I'm going to do before I do it, other than make sure I got the names right. Because I want to feed off the energy of the crowd. And the and UFC fans are like the most amazing fans of the world. They get they go crazy, you know? Yeah, and, it's gladiator atmosphere in yeah. there. And Dana all loves the way. it. By the Hi way, guys. Dana, how are you? Hey, yeah, hey, how good does Bruce look, by the yeah, way? Yeah, unbelievable. Hey. Oh. <laughs> yeah, pocket square. Woo! Yeah. Uh, Clean suit. Woo! Yeah. All natural. Oh. <laughs> A lot of those conversations around the UFC, obviously. Uh, Bruce, whenever you are, like, it's time. Yeah. And I said it again there. It's okay. But the way I delivered it wasn't the same. I don't know how you have a trademark. It's, it's adding up. I'll, I'll hit you up later. Okay, okay. Uh, dot, 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 dot. When, do you, when you land on that, you have to think to yourself, gold, this is going to be it, right? And yeah. the, there's a story about you and Michael Buffer yeah. not knowing each other for a long time, but having two of the most iconic voices of all time. And then you finally meet and you were related. And whenever he had the, let's get... Can't you say, say you know, know, that whole thing. I'm, a, I'm, his man, I'm the sheriff behind the man behind yeah, the you rubble. Get, you get him really? the money, right? If I tell you it's okay, it's okay. So okay. go ahead, say it. Let's, Let's get, get ready, ready to rumble. rumble. <laughs> Michael Buffer, what an honorarium. Do you like that? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think he's going to be here later today. So yeah, yeah, we were actually asked about that. They're like, would you yeah. like Michael Buffer? And I was like, we have Bruce on. And then the, the time he's not going to be here. You two are related, not related. No, we are. I mean, I met Michael when I was basically around 29 years old. Uh, we had the same father. And uh, I grew up with my mom and my dad the whole time. I never knew that my dad was married during World War II. I, I never knew there was another situation. Before he passed, he and my mom were together for 56 years. So we were watching TV one day, and, and now comes this debonair James Bond, very handsome man, you know, wow. doing the rumble and becoming more famous than the boxers. And when they put his name on the screen, I'm like, who the heck is this? You know? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I own telemarketing companies in my 20s, and, we, and I saw every phone book in the United States. And if you think back before the web, a natural thing for people to do is pick up a phone book and look for their last name. Mm. I never saw it. So I'm like, now I'm like really worried. So I called up Don King's offices, Bob Arum's offices, long story cut short. Um, had my dad call a venue here in California when Michael was doing a small fight, and Michael called him back. They got together for lunch. Turned out to be his son. Wow. My dad, my dad was married briefly during World War II, and when he went over to do his job in the Pacific for nine months, he came back, his son was born. Divorce ensued, and he was raised by foster parents under the name of Huber. Wow. wow. Damn. And when he went in the Army, you know, they saw the birth certificate was buffering. So your dad's pipes are... My dad, according to my brother and I and my other brother Brian, my dad has the best pipes of all of us. I would walk in a room and, hi, dad, he goes, son, project your voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, okay, here I am, yeah. <laughs> so obviously that's an incredible story. Thanks to your dad's service, and I'm pumped that everything kind of came full circle there, and it all ended up being a very happy ending, which is Thank you. glorious and beautiful because I think a lot of the situations maybe don't, but whenever you land on it's time. Yeah. Was that at home, in the bathroom, <laughs> taking a shit, doing your thing, or live in the octagon it comes to you? Like, when did it When did it become uh, the kind thing? Kind of all of the above. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you're trying to wrap that up, right? Like, you, you have to figure it out. Actually, what it was mostly is, like, every day, I used to start off the shows saying, uh, right at the top of the show, like, it's time to begin the ultimate fighting championship. Oh. And when Dana bought it out, he flew me to Vegas and had the sit down, right? I sat down with the Godfather, right? Is this how you dress full suit, yeah? Uh, Oh, Always. yeah, no, when I went there, yeah. I Full went. suit, tie, no, no tie? No, 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 Casual. No, casual. Good casual. shoes? Yeah. Dress shoes? Uh, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. 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 Look the part, always, you know. Get, well, Dana's get always got some fresh J's on or That's something right. like mm -hmm. that, so I didn't know. Dana's always fresh. Yeah, okay. yeah, he's yeah, got, yeah. He's got yeah. a good yeah. As are you, it seems like. Oh, brother. thank you. Yeah, I yeah, no problem. It. I'm a surfer, so it's like, you know, bathing suit, Lululemon by day, and then I wear a suit or a tuxedo at night. Man for all season, man for all reasons, right? Woo! Maybe say that. But when you go meet with Dana, is he the one that's asked you? Like, Well, we sat down and we talked, and he laid out certain things. You know, Dana used to kid me if you let me talk for 10 minutes i talk for 10 minutes for each fight so he said I'd like to tighten it up he gave me an example of, of the um, evan tanner tito ortiz fight we did in Atlantic city he goes there's two of the greatest introductions i ever heard he goes that your brother when he did holyfield and uh and uh god i forget who it was 
Anyway, uh, Riddick Bo. When he told you Riddick Hey, you're going to get sued for yeah, that invoice. Yeah. Hey, that guy. Hey, get, yep. That guy just said it's time. Let's take his money. Uh -huh. That's okay. Just throw a $5 bill right here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Make Five it a bucks. 10, actually. The license fee. It it's a license place. fee. Maybe 20. <laughs> Thanks, dude. So he said those are the two greatest introductions I've seen personally, and I would like you to, to get that same fervor that you had for Tanner and Tito. But I don't want you to say it's time to begin the Ultimate Fighting Championship at the top anymore. Now, I was not phrase driven because my brother, the greatest announcer of all time, the legend that he is, mm -hmm. You know, everybody wanted to have a catchphrase. And it, it all goes back to Michael Buffer, have a catchphrase. I have come from the school of like, it's not what I say, it's how I say it. Oh, yeah. Mm. Right? Yeah. So then, over time, seven, eight years in, I'm figuring, okay, I wake up every morning when I shave, and I literally did this every morning, like, it's time. <laughs> Meaning it's time to have the best day possible. It's time to be the best I can wow. be. It's time to go out and sell and do I what love I love you. to do, right? <laughs> so I figured in the main event, the fans have been in the arena for five hours. I love you. The fight. <laughs> <laughs> he wants you to say it back. Yeah. 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 Say it back. You don't know me well enough. But just listening to the fact that you wake up in the morning and you look in the mirror and you're like, it's time. That's it. Yeah. 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 All time. Like, I love that. That's I try it. to do the same That's thing. It. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. it. Self-motivation, man. Yeah. So um, then I, I realized that the fighters, you know, they train for seven, nine weeks, whatever. And it's time. It's come down to this defining moment. Here we go. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. It's time, right? And oh, then, you're starting to go there. And then, mm. I, I, I'm ready to fly, okay? <laughs> I, 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 I'm, getting, I'm getting ready for Saturday's fight. Hey, spread those wings, man. Be a peacock. Do what oh, you want to do. Man, I love that. Mark Wahlberg, that was great. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I'm a peacock. <laughs> I gotta yeah, fly. Yeah, spread those wings. So were you, you were in telemarketing in your 20s. You met I, your brother when you were yeah. 29. You found out about him. Yeah. Is that whenever you thought like, oh, maybe it is the family profession I can get into this? No, or? you know what it was is that I own a number of different companies. It's all in my book. It's time. I really went into depth because I wanted to appeal to the entrepreneurial spirit out there along with everybody else, everything else in the book. I own, I never worked for anybody except for the people I appear for or work for now, such as Dana. I just had my first company when I was 19 and I just kept going. Right? You're a hustler, huh? I'm a hustler. Yeah. yeah, us too, dude. I'm a mover and a shaker. A lot okay. of respect for that. I can't wait to read the book. Is this your first book? One book? Two uh, books? It's the first book, but it's time again. It'll probably be coming out in the next few years. You need years. to write five of them so yep. you can do this. <laughs> so you can do this right here with the whole handout. A lot of stuff happening. I want to accomplish a few more things, and then boom, we'll put the other one out. My last question for you before the boys have some, and I know that, and we're very thankful you stopped by, man. You're a Thank legend you this yeah. entire yes, thing. You are. Uh, As the saying goes, just call me Bruce. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Double B, uh, Bruce, The how do you not pass out? Um, so, like, for instance, I do Friday Night SmackDown, yeah. and uh, it's at the end of Friday. I have a full show here today. I fly to wherever SmackDown is. I yeah. do SmackDown. When Shinsuke Nakamura comes out, there's an incredible musician named Boogs that comes out. He plays the guitar. The music is electrifying. Right. I get up on said table. I dance to music. <laughs> so much so that I get lightheaded and I almost pass out every time. <laughs> Whenever you are screaming with all of your might into a microphone, and there's 17, 18, 20, yeah. thousand people around you yeah. and the whole world is watching yeah what well, did you have to train for that i assume you have to train for that and what is that hydration why am i almost dying every friday i listen i i've been an athlete my whole life and wow. being athletic and being in shape is 75 percent what you eat and 25 percent how you train okay so i t I, I eat right i had chick-fil-a last night like midnight <laughs> that's okay <laughs> that's 3 a.m eastern time yeah. uh, that's, that's not good spicy chicken two of them so good 10 nuggets and the cookies you gotta have, you gotta have fun you gotta have fun in life yeah every you gotta day have fun you gotta stop it but yeah so hydration is really key i keep uh honey uh on the table for you know fresh honey or raw honey and um you know i don't damage my voice i don't rehearse whatever I again like I said earlier I go out there I strictly do it with passion and as far as passing out there's been a couple moments in my career where I've let the it's time fly and maybe when I was jumping and coming down I'm like oh my god I, I got you know I saw a couple stars you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? like, yeah, 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 yeah yeah so I mean that happened but honestly ask yourself how do singers give two performances a night five nights a week in Vegas when I'm doing you know my total of 35 minutes during the time of doing what I do my respect goes out to them and it's learning how to bring it from here and not here you know right. and 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 learning how to control I'm your voice here. yeah I, I was a swimmer and a and a surfer you know martial arts my entire life the whole bit so I've always had good lung capacity you'll see me in the octagon before I start you'll see me like breathing and I I I lose track that people are looking at me. I'll be shaking and jumping. I'm getting my head into it. That's good. Yeah. Right. By the way, we like when you get in a zone. It's oh, always yeah. good. Go ahead, AJ. You always, can you point to one intro that maybe your favorite that you did? And are we going to see maybe you know Buffer 360 here anytime soon? Oh yeah, the training, the Ooh, whole thing, yeah. the swimming. The well, I mean, the, before a show like this, I've been training all week. I, I literally, it sounds crazy, okay? But this is the way I treat no, it. No, you're a professional, no, by the way. Yeah, it sounds normal. Every night I walk out, like Saturday night in Houston for the big pay-per-view UFC 271. 
I have to prove to the fans, to you guys, to Dana, the people I work for, and especially to the fighters and to my mom who's watching that I deserve this job. One day <laughs> yeah. contract, dude. That's it's good a one day contract. I go out. I'm only as good. I, I did it last Saturday. I'm only as good as my last performance, and then I'm done the night that that's over. I have to go do it again and prove that I can do it. That's the kind of passion I have for it, which I think keeps me going. I've been doing this for over 25 years. And if you look at the evolutionary process, it, the show is not about me, it's about the fighters. I'm yeah, just, you're an additive. I'm there to just enhance the moment to do my job. Yeah, just, there's, a, there's a legend in the wrestling business called Paul Heyman. Okay, and Paul yeah, Heyman's like a, time. Paul Heyman's like a manager, and he's, he's a, a buddy. He's yeah. a great speaker, yeah. incredible maestro of the microphone. Oh, big time! And uh, I thought it was a compliment where I was like, "Hey, man, it feels like every time you're in a scene, you steal it." And he goes, "No, no, no! I'm just trying to be an additive. Just trying to be an That's additive. It. Just trying to be an additive." That's and it. your passion is an additive to the entire events. I mean, yeah. they are next level. Can't wait for 271, huh? Awesome! Yeah. Oh Here my we go. Gosh, yeah. Here we go. Yeah, you got two Ivasa going in. <laughs> you know, it's going to be an awesome fight. It's going to be amazing. Derek are you? Lewis you're a fan of the stuff too and do you huge fan i'm a fan first and announcer can we tell who you're caring about more in your intros mm. you think and you have no, to stay away from that no i'm an equal opportunity uh, announcer the only time <laughs> i might <laughs> <laughs> the only the only time you might notice a difference is if i'm introducing like frank trigg versus namagametov obviously when i say a name with the meat of you know habib namagametov it's going to seem like so much more because i can only do so much with a single syllable name like trigg or mike swick right <laughs> yeah. uh, actually those are the hard ones because you want to make those sound good. Yeah, how, how do you make those long enough? Like when they don't have the syllables, you got to like just dr take it out the longer? How does it work? I just, like if you ever look at my cars, <clears throat> and I, if you notice, I don't really look at my cars. No, not at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, they're yeah, out there, yeah, but they're not. That's like Letterman and um, uh, Craig Ferguson. Craig Ferguson, they yeah. would have like their notes basically, and they would publicly say like, we're not doing it. You hold them, but you don't look, it's yeah. almost like a prop at this point. If, well, yes, but I mean, I've, I've learned over the years, let's say I'm like this, right? and I'm doing this and the car's upside down or whatever, I can actually go like that. Oh, yeah, wow. reminder. And, I, oh, yeah. and see the 6-1 for Chuck Liddell or whatever, where maybe I forgot. Mm -hmm. So I, and I color code them. That way I know exactly, it's, it's kind of like an art form. Have you ever seen the cards? They're color coded, the whole bit. And the reason for that is, over the years, I know exactly where everything is. So again, I, when I write them, I have it memorized, but if I need it, I can get it. Hey, just real quick, does anybody come up to you and say, hey, hated the intro? Um. <laughs> You know, when you're on social media. How about media? when you're face to face? Like some of the yeah. fighters. Oh, yeah, you can uh -huh. right Hey, some the of the face. fighters. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. What, like I think a guy, I forget who it was. It was recent. Michael Chiesa. Yeah. He like yeah. wanted it. He was yeah. like, yeah, yeah, I would like you. You feed yeah. off of that, it feels like, too. Oh, big time. It's like one of the highest. There's two things in, in this world for me that are very important. When a young child, male or female, comes up to me and wants to meet me or an autograph, I don't care what I'm doing. I could be on the top yeah. of a mountain. I will run down and, and take the picture and, yeah. and be with that kid. That's awesome. Right? That's very nice of you. When a fighter comes up to me in the octagon, like Chiesa, or, or like, you know, last week it happened to, it, it, it goes on and on. Um, that's not me instigating the fist bump. That's not me. I mean, they're a little like this. Now, granted, I walk into the corner. I can't stand still. Most <laughs> Announcers like to stand still and modulate their voice, and I appreciate that. <laughs> I'd be bored to tears, yeah. man. That's yeah. not going to work for me. I did that in the beginning, and I'm like, I got to move. You're always shaking yeah. your legs uh, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It. Yeah, I got to let this thing go, you know? And it's like, that's who I am. And, it, and if it's going to be like that, then, hey, this isn't the job for me, right? You're awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. Yeah. 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 yeah, is there any, like, self-scout involved? Like, do you ever, after, you know, you do an intro, like, the next day or whatever, be like, oh, man, I sucked last night. Like, does that ever happen? My brother, Michael, I, you know, I, he never really gave me any advice. He wanted me to learn on my own, but he did say the one thing. He said, watch video. It's the hardest thing you'll ever do. So when I go back and I watch the show the next day, I know in my heart that night if I, you know, hit it out of the park or whatever, in my own, because I'm very self-critical. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'll watch on video sometimes. And man, I could have let that just. I could have. I could have. I could have. I shouldn't have. I could have. You know yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. So you and Michael, I'm only human. You know. Yeah, right. yeah. So you watch yourself. I can't. Not, I hate me so bad. It, <laughs> it's, it's the hardest thing to do. But I. It's not. It's not that I watch myself like. Oh, look at look at Bruce. No, I'll watch a cup like the main event. Yeah. But I like to when I get back. I want to watch the fights. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. a fan. So I like there's fights. High anxiety all night for you. You can't really relax and watch the fights. No, it's adrenaline, man. I'm I'm watching the yeah, fight. Yeah, you're like you're like in it though. You kind of like black out almost, like for the entire night almost. Blackout. Yeah, like you don't remember. Yeah. You're kind of in a zone there. Like you remember the what has happened. Oh yeah, yeah. That's why you don't go watch. I think well, there was a big knockout over here, but you're in it still, right? Yeah. And those things are like six hours too. I oh, mean. Yeah. Well, see, so, I mean, there's there's instances yeah. where maybe you'll see on the TV that I'm looking down. I'm on my phone. And people are like I to, 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 to like go on Twitter, get off your phone or whatever. 
I got the director in my ear. I got things to do. You know, I'm, I'm oh, doing don't stuff. Worry about them, yeah, yeah. 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 Don't worry about them, Bruce. Don't worry about those people. Okay. But that's where I might miss something. Like one time in New York, two guys came in in a red beard, and I was busy doing my notes, and it was over like 20 seconds. And when I got in the octagon, I had, one of my mistakes, I announced the wrong guy. Oh, no. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> got a big laugh out of Madison Square Garden. Man, if you want to know if you got a thick skin, that's when you got to learn if you got a thick skin. Yeah. <laughs> but you got to roll with it. You know, I have no problem laughing at myself. That's why I do, um, you know, Manscape commercials and Blue Chew commercials. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. It's fun to make fun of yourself. It's fun. I agree. Yeah. Well, it's nice that you have self awareness because you absolutely crushed it in there. We can't wait for UFC 271. It'll be awesome. Thank you so much for making time for us. We appreciate you and we're big fans. Ladies and gentlemen, the voice of the UFC, Bruce Buffer. Yeah! yeah! Hey, I, I need to get you a bottle of my Puncher's Chance bourbon, which is... You're selling bourbon? Oh, my bourbon is the uh, highest rated, one of the fastest selling craft still bourbons in America right now. It's called Puncher's Chance. Really? Oh, out of go. Kentucky or where? We won six out of, at my distilleries wow. in Kentucky. I'm oh. a, I have offices at Bourbon Row. I'm everywhere all over the United States. Just go to punchershancebourbon.com. And um, we've won six gold medals, three for taste, three for bottle design. Damn. Holy shit. And we That's were, very good. <laughs> yeah. and we're considered the top five. Bourbon Spectator said we're the top five finest sipping bourbons at $30 in America. But I just came out with my 12-year reserve called The Distance, like D12 stints. Oh, the distance, there like we 12 go. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And that sells for 120 a bottle, but we could only make 2,000 cases, and they were sold out in a week. Oh, Jeez. Pappy. This is a Pappy situation. Uh, it's a fun situation. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine. Imagine. Yeah. I'd love to get you a bottle. If you get to people give me a dress, I'm going to have my people send you a bottle. We're fucking in. Yeah. You also yes. buy it and support the biz. It sounds like you're doing amazing things. We appreciate yeah. everything you Thank give you so to much. our entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, Bruce Buffett. Yeah, Bruce. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Bruce. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I believe we have to get to a break. Um, Bruce will go ahead and electrify another show, I assume. And we'll be back in four minutes with some questions. Ray we already took a break. Ray took a break. Ray took a break. Ray took a break. Bruce, we're done. We have All good. Yeah, we already got a break. Hey, appreciate Thank you, you, man. Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. Here, I'll just get my card. Send me a... All right. Look at that suit. Yeah, you got it. Thank you so much, man. You're the best. It's time! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, don't forget, that son of a bitch owes you a 10. Thank you. Appreciate hey, it. Pleasure. Thank you so much. That guy owes you fucking 20 bucks. Yeah, yeah, I got eyes on him. I remember when we'll find him. Yeah. <laughs> Never forget where you came from. Hey, bingo, we appreciate that. Have a good one, boss. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. Bruce. Hey. Hey. What up, coach? It's time! To wrap up this hour, too. <laughs> We already took a break. Can somebody give me a heads up when things are happening, like you, a break? Hey, did you see the developing situation, though? No, what is it? I mean, you saw it. What? 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 Someone's not wearing a certain sweater yeah, jacket Yeah, Adrian Peterson anymore. is wearing a different jacket. He what? has somebody carrying Oh, he jacket. handed it to the guy like two minutes later, yeah. I saw him. What? He couldn't wear it to his next interview. He didn't. The whole interview I, mean, would, I thought that was the purpose. Then the whole interview yeah. would be talking about Connor. No, I got it from this dude over there. Also, it's hot with a jersey on. With a, He's got a turtleneck sweater on. I'm sure he's... Yeah, it's a, it's a high-quality product. It is. Very nice. Uh, Zito, can we, do we have the capability to get Twitter questions? Uh, yeah, I can look some up right now. Okay, okay perfect. So that means in a bit. Yeah, hashtag yep. PMS in LA. Let's talk about some things happening around the world. Has anything happened, Diggs, as you were not here and we were talking to people? There was breaking news in a sport that we cover very, very much so. Okay. Uh, James Harden was traded to the Philadelphia 76ers wow. for Ben Simmons. Seth Curry and some picks, I believe. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's Blockbuster huge. trade in the association. Yeah. A man who was... He's like boycotting Houston to get the hell out of there. Yep. Went to a couple adult ballets in Vegas, took some pictures in buses, was on Claude 75 in France at Fashion Week alongside some other folks. Ends up in Brooklyn alongside Kevin Durant, old friend of his, and Kyrie Irving. Allegedly, there was a lot of things that had popped off behind the scenes that maybe James Harden didn't love living in Brooklyn. Right. Mm. Wow. Maybe the whole Kyrie Irving situation was one that he did not love. How come Kyrie's able to play everywhere else but not at home? Why is this even a situation? Seems like a lot of drama. And speaking of drama, go ahead and get old cuzzy Ben Simmons out of Philadelphia who's been showing up at the practice facility alongside his friends and his teammates telling them, I don't want to play here, yeah. becoming quite a massive issue. He goes to Brooklyn 
Brooklyn. He can lock people down. Oh, yeah. I don't know how he's is playing. Is he going to play for Brooklyn? I think so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He just I mean, wanted out of Philly. Okay, yeah. so he's okay to play, just not for Philly. Yeah, yeah so James Harden right. now, all of a sudden, he's with uh, Embiid. Is Embiid playing? Oh, yeah. yeah Embiid yeah. might be the MVP this year. Okay, wow. so now the 76ers, may, I, I feel like they see this as a come up. Yeah. Kevin Durant pissed about this or happy about this? Uh, I bet he's pretty pissed. Yeah. I believe he wanted Harden to stay. Well, that's what trade deadline days are all about. Yeah, that's Sorry, right. KD. Hey, that's congrats right. to whoever's happy in yeah. that thing. Yeah, Simmons. Whoever's <laughs> happy. Yeah. Wow. Whoever's well, happy. Is, is James Harden happy? I think, I think so. probably. Think he yeah. Was, he can he win a championship there? Can he win a championship with the Sixers? Uh, I think it's good for both teams. No. Yeah, okay. Him all right. Cool. Indeed. I mean, Ben Simmons missed out on fifteen million dollars already this year, so he's probably happy. I mean, Kyrie to missed out on like one hundred and fifty million yeah. or something like that. Still is. Congrats to whoever's happy in that thing. Yeah, they better Congrats. be nice to Ben Simmons in Brooklyn. They will. Yeah. They will. <laughs> they better be. What do you mean? Well, what yeah, if he gets there and someone's like, "Hey, I don't really like your shoes," and he's like, "All right, fuck it, I'm not playing." The I'm rest done. Of the year. <laughs> you you think that's what it's going to take? You, you guys, think that's, you guys that? are mean. I don't want to play. I'm out. I, what? This is what I heard about Ben Simmons. Okay. He learned how to shoot. Really? Wow. wow. Yeah, we haven't seen him in a year. I'd hope so because he's a fucking now. basketball player. Well, I hope he well, that, is, shoot. that is the interesting thing about his basketball game. <laughs> yeah. He was able to make it to the NBA in a very high level, get paid a lot of money. Yeah. Some bitch couldn't shoot a basketball. No. But now he's had an entire off season, <laughs> an entire season yep. to learn how to shoot, deciding not to play for a team. He goes to Brooklyn alongside one of the greatest shooters of all time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, in Seth's there, I guess he's been around a good shooter for a long time. The Curry family can do it. Kevin Durant's going to teach him how to play basketball. Hell yeah. Hey, this is how you shoot free throws. It's been the same thing since you were a child, same distance. This is how you shoot. How come he doesn't just go with the – Oh, the, the granny. Jackie Moon. All the people that stink Smart. at it. How come they don't just do the <laughs> do the granny shot? That's a good question. It's almost more. I, I don't think that's Ego. easier. Yeah, it's more difficult almost doing it from under. Yeah. Have yeah. you seen them try? To, some of these guys try to shoot free throws. Yeah. yeah. I mean the big awkward's. I mean, oh Shaq. yeah. Whoa. I mean Shaq is he's draining threes on TNT yeah. 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 on a regular basis. He's on his 50th try. But you're right. I mean him trying to balance that tiny little tennis ball sized basketball exactly. in his hand. Can't do it. It's not easy. I don't know why this isn't more often. And maybe Ben Simmons is practicing that crafted. Guy. Let's keep an eye on uh, Ben Simmons shooting the yeah. uh, Jackie Moon style. <laughs> yeah. Uh, free throw. That is big news out of the NBA. Huge. Huge. Also big news out of uh, Russia. Oh, oh, no. oh yeah. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it, but I have to. The 15 year old figure skater that I was. Over the moon about. Mm. Yeah. She's taking steroids. Wow. Yeah, she's yeah. full of shit. Well, I don't know if it was up to her, though. I'm sure Putin You think was, she knows? Yeah. Shoving it right down or, you know, or right into her blood. She might not <laughs> have. You think? She might not have known. <laughs> I could see that, actually. Go get a gold. <laughs> yeah, she, it was probably happening in her sleep. They were probably just walking well, it up probably, and injecting her. Like, hey, here's your, uh, here's your B12 shot, yeah, this or yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. and then she might not know. Here's honestly. your steroids. This and, make you big and strong. And by the way, I think. Not sure you're allowed to do that. <laughs> Cultural appropriation. Sorry. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Thanks, I wait. thought you were Russian. What is the boppity boop? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Wait, I'm, 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 I'm 0.09% Russian. Really? 0.09 oh, isn't enough. You better find you the 23 and me. Yeah. <laughs> Have a little respect for science, dude. Yeah. Did wait, you, spin you heard Chuck is two guys in a basement. I'll text him and say, hey, 0.09, put me down. Chuck was pretty wide open, I'll tell you he about was, that yeah. yesterday. It was great to see you old Chuck. Was that figure skater, was she the same one complaining about the prison slop, the Cincinnati Bengals lunch they were serving in the Olympic Village? No. No, it was no The 15-year-old, no. by the way, the 15-year-old that's the best uh, figure skater of all time, who, you know, by the way, AJ, for what you were saying there, she had no idea. They're probably it's taking possible. her blood out, saying, hey, we're testing this. Don't worry about it. Putting some other stuff in. She's taking mm. tests. Well, if she's 15 years old. You would assume the adults around you are making decisions that are in your best interest. I don't think it's good to be pumping a teenager with steroids. No, I think no. We've all seen Benny in the woods yeah. in Bingo. high school whenever yep. they showed oh, us yeah. about stunting your growth and obviously everything like that. It's a sad situation, but I would like to let every person and family know that if you do have a daughter in America that is good on the ice, Keep her in figure skating. Get her back out right. there. Because that girl that was going to just clean house for the next two mm-hmm. decades, probably not. Yeah. Yeah, and if, you know, your daughter is in figure skating, from what we've seen from this Russian, maybe do give her steroids. Just, you know, take her off of it when Before, it gets yeah. close to yeah, Olympic magic. time. Makes sense. <laughs> it a, might help her. dad. No, this does not make sense. Don't a 15-year-old should not be injecting anything in a 15-year-old. Obviously. Gold medalist. Well, no. Well, she like, was. The doctor uh, wasn't 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't a 15-year-old. It wasn't her classmate. It wasn't her friend not. back at She's well, not. we don't know that. <laughs> they could have been. been. Yeah, it might have been. How, uh, many, how many others are going to test positive? If she tested positive, is she the only could've one? How many other bear. Russians are there? Well, that's the thing, because whenever they're, whenever they're telling people uh, that this is the greatest of all time, they're almost like bird calling for more drug tests. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know? Like, hey, 
Somehow this 15-year-old has been better than every human that's ever strapped on skates before, men or women. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, oh, this natural phenom coming out of Russia. And that's where I was at. I was yeah. actually very happy for her. Yeah. I was very – because she has not slept much. No. She has not had a life much. None. For how great she is and how young of an age she uh, – she, the amount of commitment yeah. and discipline she's had to put in. I was happy for her to come out and nail it. Yeah. First woman ever to do a quad. She did two of them. Uh -huh. You know who's not taking steroids? Nathan Chen. Exactly. Well, if Nathan Chen was taking steroids years ago, he might have won a gold medal already. Yeah, that's true. But Nathan Chen had to build this through hard work and grit and experience. That's why Nathan Chen is a gold medalist after a little bit of a disappointing performance years ago at the previous Winter Olympics that we know all about. How come Putin's letting the IOC test his athletes? Doesn't he have more pull than that? Well, that's what I'm thinking. I think Not we're gonna in have, China. I think we're going to have OAR back. Yeah, I think so. Olympic we're athletes of Russia. Crazy we say, oh, uh, you say, ah. Uh, I say Lushay, we say ha. That was the Russian Olympic team for a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're coming out. Yeah. It's ROC now. ROC? Yeah. Rock Nation. Yeah, Russia. Russian, Russian Olympic, Olympic Committee. Committee. Yep. Well, I just hope they don't hit that girl over the head and throw her in the gulag <laughs> and we never see her again because I have a good, good feeling that's coming. It's very possible. <laughs> Hour two. She's too talented. She has her whole life in front of her and it's <laughs> fuck it up. Hour oh, three is on the other side. Uh, see you in six minutes. Now it's time for SmackDown Rumble Championship Weekend. We just had another Super Boost! Oh yeah. What a fucking three day run. I'm lucky to live this life and I'm thankful that you all watch. Here we go! Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Squeeze the button. Yeah. That's what I was trying to do. I have a good try. I'm giddy. I am so pumped. It's like the, the night before the first day of school when you were a kid. I know it's being said that the GOAT of the NFL, Tom Brady, is retiring. Well, the GOAT of the WWE, Roman Reigns, is in his prime at his peak. Hey, happy birthday! Happy birthday! All right. Our sources haven't confirmed whether or not Drew McIntyre can be standing up, but... Come on, Cole! Come on, Cole! Feel it, Cole! You better move, you might get knocked out. Knocked out. No, you better move, you might get knocked out. Cole train has gone to the sky. What? 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 Just so everybody knows, it is good right now. And yes. Chameleon gold in magenta jacket. Big Cuban link, obviously good watch, pinky chain. Gold blading Steve Madden. When I woke up this morning in beautiful St. Louis, the air smelled better, food tasted better. Tonight dreams come true, surprises are in abundance. It's Royal Rumble, let's go! Oh, it is an honor. See the man. Once your ratings get this low, then I'll come to Bubble Bubble. That's why you're a good guy. A jackass has entered the Royal Rumble. Jay, great to see Wee Man is still alive after Brock Lesnar put him through a Four Seasons table last night. He is dressed like a jackass. He is a jackass. And he's in the Royal Rumble. He looks good. It sounds good. St. Louis is ready. The alpha male of our species is in You want to poop your pants immediately? Be in the Royal 
as Brock Lesnar, after a brutal fight with Bobby Lashley, comes into the Royal Rumble and is an absolute ass-kicking machine. We just had another Super Boost! The Jacksonville Duval Jaguars are dead. And I think that is something that is a shame. But we should at least have a moment of silence, I guess, for the Urban Meyer-led Jacksonville Jaguar squad. He chose one time not to fly back home with the team after a loss. He said, I gotta see the gray hand babies. That's right. <laughs> the only babies he saw were those young ladies at the shop house in week. I'll be playing your devil. He had to answer a lot of questions about that, but then he got back on track and started coaching football. Huh? Oh, yeah. Forget about the fingers. And they won. They won a game in London. How'd they win? It's because they forgot about the fingers. That's right. And then they came back to America. Mm -hmm. And they lose. Oh. And they lose. Oh. And they lose. Oh. And they lose. Oh. And anonymous sources say, this guy fucking stinks. <laughs> oh. He's laughed out of meeting rooms. Everybody wants to smack him in the mouth. Attitude reflect leadership, Captain. Have a little mirror therapy, pal. A little bit. You stink. You guys ever get yourself one of these? I didn't think so, you loser. <laughs> hey, this one from high school. <laughs> uh, this one from college. Right. And this one right here, middle fingers open for the NFL. If any of you would stop fucking me over. God damn right. That's what we're trying to get. <laughs> Hey, you, defense coordinator. What's that? You got any of these? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I so don't. I thought so like you're a fucking loser. <laughs> I'm you, sorry. You need to stop by the job. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, they're dead. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, sir! Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hey, welcome back to that show. It is glorious Thursday, February 10th, 2022 of Super Bowl weekend. It's time! We were told we're only allowed to do that today on air without getting sued, so we are going to go ahead and run that <laughs> one into the ground. Hour three, we'll see Darius Leonard stopping Ooh. by, Justin Jefferson stopping Whoa. by. All the boys are here. It is electrifying in Radio Row here in Los Angeles. Big news of the day is... Uh, uh, Big Ben's hey, jersey made it to Hall of Fame. Yeah, but... Okay, it's awesome. Big Ben. Hey, way to go, Ben. Hey, baby, Big ben. ben. Hey, hey, way to go, Big Ben. We love, love you, Ben. Hey, baby, Big Ben, Thank obviously. You, ben. Thank you, Ben. Uh, also, big news, Aaron Rodgers yesterday oh. at the Waste Management Golf Tourney in Arizona, where most people are wasted what? at what? the Waste Management. Why? A lot of give and take, a lot of yelling, a lot of crowd interaction. Aaron Rodgers playing in his first Waste Management Pro-Am area? Uh, I think it may be, yeah. His first ever oh, rocking wow. a beautiful tailor-made oh, cap, oh, a carbon wood driver mm -hmm. in the bag we only seen videos that have only made Aaron look good yeah. from the waste management golf tourney which is good news I'm happy he's back out there living his life yeah, get a chance one. to experience some people that are like hey Aaron Hey, we like you. Yeah, hey, I love you. Because I do believe a lot of the messages that Aaron was getting for a long part of the time is a lot of the message that I seen Tim getting because I was getting tagged him. Not a lot of positives outside no, of there. No. So I'm assuming he was very pumped to be there, excited to be there, loved interacting with folks. I was told by somebody that was there that might have been Aaron Rodgers that said a lot of people were saying, <laughs> hey, love the segment out there. Oh, nice. So shout out to Arizona. The place is beautiful. But one thing Aaron said is really... Sending ripple infection around the entire room. Yeah, it is. Whoa. And I'm assuming if he said it to one random white sure. at the waste management, uh -huh. uh, if he was staying at some white's house in Ohio mm -hmm. for a few yeah. days, he would definitely be maybe leaking more information. Yeah. When he was asked about the Broncos, Aaron Rodgers at the waste management golf tournament in Arizona said, 
We'll see. Whoa. Wow. Whoa. We'll see. Wow. What does that, that mean? Huh? A.J. Hawk, what who was just. If, if he's coming back to Green Bay, what should he have said to this no. young gentleman? No. I'm staying. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, that's basically what he said. Ha ha, we'll see, buddy. No, 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 that's no, way no, different. No, you see those last two. You see the we'll see yeah. and on the We end. don't know. We're, this isn't audio. This is just what someone wrote. Right? No, no. we actually seen the yeah. Yeah. transcript. Yes. Yeah, oh, clip. cool. I'll watch yeah. it after the show. So make sure you send it to me. No, but, he did laugh and he did, yeah. Yeah, well, but he could have kept it off and we'll see. Maybe he got nervous in the interaction, just wanted to go positive with a we'll yeah. see, which is a positive affirmation to the question. Yeah. You're not burying it immediately yes. so the person feels good. It was a great interaction with fucking Aaron Rodgers, so the guy probably loved it, but with that being said we'll see we'll see, does he, we'll see. Do we know if, does he have raw land in denver not that i know of but he might i mean he easily could right? i mean other people are piecing together a lot of other connections so to wait, the Colorado tennessee, is he out of the titans that well, he's no, out of the running for no. the tennessee they said they love Tannehill. oh not, yeah, yeah they're they're not. the they gm came him. in and said that yeah. uh -huh. you're right anyway showing us now is a man who doesn't love Tannehill. i hate you. he's in the afc south he was somehow not up for the defensive player of the year even though he flipped games on their heads mm -hmm. with his pinpoint precision with his punches the maniac who mac jones said man your arms are so long yeah got an interception on mac jones got an interception in the pro bowl first drive for a pick six he's a turnover machine an absolute stallion got paid one of the staples of the indianapolis colts ladies and gentlemen the maniac darius Leonard. yeah darius yeah. Woo. Woo. Wow, sure. look at that. Good shirt, good chain. Yeah. Chain. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Holy hell. Look at these glistening. Holy hell. Holy shit. Look at these chains. Holy oh, hell, dude. Wow. 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 <laughs> wow. Is this, hold on, is this three? Where's three at? Right there. Yeah. 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 Let me go ahead and zoom yeah. in on this here. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. There's uh -oh. Darius. Look! Wow! Oh! <laughs> can't hide it! Wow! Got the cube iced out, and then the maniac in there, and I think there's a gold one underneath. Hey, by the way, you deserve all of it. Yeah, yeah. you Appreciate absolutely it. deserve all of it. Uh, you come from a town of 22 people or whatever down there in South Carolina. I see you guys in the off season down there riding side by sides and four wheelers, literally from home to store to. Home. High school, like that's the type of place he's from in South Carolina. Small town kid, done very, very, very good. And Indianapolis is happy to have you. We're lucky to have you. What happened in Clown Town, dude? Let's get right to it. There. Listen, <laughs> yes, I've been Let's talking about it. it a lot. What do you think happened? And everybody knows in the NFL you can get got. Mm -hmm. Okay, but those last two weeks, win and you're in, basically. Did you sense any, was there any thought, like we're not going to get the job done? What do you think happened late, you think, um, Me personally, man, I just, I felt like a lot of times, you know, when, you know, the season started where it did, you know, we started losing. And then you start winning. You know, people, I really felt like people felt like we made it. And, uh, yeah. you know, once you start, I'm start winning a lot of games. And, you know, people start, you know, really, you know, stop focusing on the little small things, small little details, you know, just like, you know, practice, intensity, you know, the details in the practice. I can remember, you know, the Raiders week, man, we started to practice uh, the offense. You know, we had three, three MAs. Then next thing the defense went out, we had three MAs. And then sloppy. Uh, yeah, it was just, it was just sloppy. Then I, I mean, I just had a, I just had a bad feeling, you know, the first, the last two weeks didn't think, you know, that, that, that vibe that I was getting when everything was going well. I think whenever we went down there on Christmas day to, to the uh, Cardinals and we won with, you know, Everybody but the starters. Yeah, I really felt like people say, "No, there's no way we can lose." But it's uh, the NFL. So it's a gift you know? and a curse <laughs> that way. Yeah, and I'm me, me personally, man. I'm upset that it ended the way it did, but I'm glad it ended the way it did. And to the point where, you know, I hope this kind of burn deep down in these guys' heart. And say, okay, we really just came out here and got them embarrassed. And for the last game of the season, this is how you're gonna remember the Indianapolis Colts. So I just want guys to really just lock in and take this take this off season as much um, just take this off season just kind of get better at absolutely everything. Understand that absolutely nothing in this world is handed to you. You got to go out there and just go out there and earn absolutely everything. Yeah, and your entire career has been based off of that, obviously, and that is a natural feeling. And I think a lot of guys can. It was a smack in the mouth, probably that last game, which is. I guess it could be good for the offseason training mindset-wise. And only one team wins the Super Bowl. We talked to Austin Eckler earlier. Yeah. They had similar situations where it was like, hey, so good, and then you don't make it. So everybody's bummed at the end of the season. But the way it did end for the team that you guys had, it just felt like, man, this is way too soon. Hard Knocks being here. You think that's the reason why you guys lost? I'll tell Keith nah, Cosmo. Nah. Right nah. I'll tell yeah. NFL Films yeah. right now. Oh, is, nah, is that why? Hard, knock, hard Knocks was great all year, man. It was out of the way. You really didn't know them too much. I mean, I mean, the only time it got bad was your off days when they wanted to come over to your house and, you know, 
spotlight you, but, you know, anything dealing with no football, you know, it was perfect. You know, it was perfect. You know, it told everything that you needed to be told, you know, starting the way that we started and actually having success and, you know, just seeing guys outside of the locker room with families and stuff and seeing our families in the stands, uh, that was a great that was a great thing to do. Uh, I don't think that was the problem. I just think that nah, people, them, people got yeah. comfortable. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can blame them if you want. But it was nice for me to get back. It felt like I – and I don't know about AJ, but it, it really felt like because – how familiar I am with a lot of the equipment managers and trainers and everything like that in the field, in the area. Now, granted, that building's very new. I, was, I did not experience any of that just a few years ago. The other half of the building was built first. It seemed like it was very nice. And then, obviously, you guys yeah. you guys deserve it all. I just want to let you know. <laughs> it's very, very nice. But it was nice to get back in the building and mm-hmm. experience that. I think it was very cool that Hard Knocks did the Indianapolis oh, yeah. Colts. And I think a lot of people learned about the end season kind of the routines of a lot of players and a lot of it revolved around like getting a Sunday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. There's a classic <clears throat> give and take, I think between you and DeForest Buckner, maybe where you're like, Hey, I just need you to get to Sunday. Like, we need you to get to <laughs> oh, Sunday. <yeah. laughs> That's a real thing with this long season, especially in a physical position like linebacker. Did you feel any difference with the extra game? Did you feel it on the team? Like what, yes. what do you think? Um, I, I did. Um, especially as me, I'm a small linebacker. Uh, we didn't have a bye week till week 14, week 16, 15, something like that. So, you know, it, it really tore us up, um, and especially, you know, um, coming from um, training camp, you know, everybody hurt, you know, oh, yeah. really didn't have a true training camp with all the guys coming in, didn't start the first four games with everybody. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it definitely wore, wore, wore on us a little bit. Um, you know, I hate, I hate the game. Uh, but everybody's got to do it, right? That's yeah. kind of the – Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, it's no, no complaining or anything. Just got to find a way to get the job done, and that's the way that I've been brought up. So they're going to add another game, you know, find a way to you know, find a way to get the job done, find a way to win, you find box, a way to get there. You've been a boxer your whole life or what? Uh, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> nah. Hey, but it, not that you would, but if there was ever a some sort of physical altercation outside the football field or anything like that. Oh, yeah, I can hold my own. Well, it feels like <laughs> – <Yeah. laughs> It feels like you are a precision puncher. Honestly, oh, yeah, I'm, the, I'm the youngest boy. You know, I had a fight for everything. You know what I mean? So, you know, when it comes down to punching the football, you know, when you're on the ground, you know, got three or four older brothers on top of you, you got to look to find which one you're going to hit. So, <laughs> <laughs> So, I'm really, when did you decide, though? Because obviously Peanut Tillman had it for a long yeah, time. Mm-hmm. And then it was always in the game, and people try it. But there is so much that has to go behind me. There has to be commitment, first of all, because you could get embarrassed when you mm-hmm. do that. Oh, yeah, you've seen and, that happen. Yeah, and you can break, <laughs> hey, you can break your hand, yeah. though, too, if you don't mm-hmm. miss. And you have to hit it in the perfect spot at the perfect time. So it's not as easy as you make it look at all. At what point did you realize, like, that could be a real weapon for you? I mean, actually started in college. Uh, my, my college coach, uh, Jonathan Saxon, like, hey, man, you got long arms, bro. He's like, you know, when you go to tackle, you wrap up um, with these. So why not just punch through your wrap? So that's when I was like, I tried it. And then year one, I had maybe one or two punch outs. And then year two in the league, you know, I, I started at game one. And, you know, uh, we had a coach, uh, you know, go to the media. It was like, we got guys punching instead of trying to tackle. So that's when uh, I, I said, you know what? I'm gonna stop. Yeah, I'm gonna stop for a second. Then, uh, oh, so yeah. then, so hey, year, <laughs> yeah. So year three, um, I had a couple late punch outs, and then you know, year four. Well, last year it was more so. I'm on a bum ankle. They're running away from me. How can I impact the ball game? So I feel, I figured that every time I get around the ball. Let's punch the ball out. Why not? I mean, I got long arms. I trusted myself. And it's all about sacrifice. You got to sacrifice your body, you know, to help the team win. And, you know, me, if I'm going to get embarrassed trying to punch the ball out like I did against Derrick Henry, so well being. You know, yeah, if I'm, you know what I mean? I'm with it. Yeah. it. It is what it is. Um, but if I can take the ball away to get off the field, that's, you know, that's my mindset. But um, I think I just really locked in this year because of the ankle, not being able to move at 100%. And whenever I got around the ball, I had to find a way to be impactful for this team and uh, for the defense. I love it. Go ahead, AJ. Man, your quarterback, Carson Wentz, this dude is a grinder. Like, a, what a warrior. What, Pat always talked about it. What, he, he rolled, sprained both sprained ankles. Both yeah. ankles yeah. In one, one play. Game. That's right. What's it like watching one, that one dude play. put his yeah. body Punt. on the line, too, for yeah. you guys? Um, you know, it's great. It's great to see your quarterback go out there and do absolutely everything for you. And for, for him to go out there and get two sprained ankles and, you know, barely can walk throughout the week and go out there and, and you know, perform – in a hostile environment, move around as much as he possibly can. You know, that just tell a true warrior, man. And not just, you know, not just to him, but, you know, just it shows, goes to show that, you know, NFL guys, we battle through so much. And we always try to find a way to put the team first, you know. And everybody's hurting. You know, every guy, every guy on each team, you know, there's something wrong with their body. But how can you fight through the pain to make your team win? And I always say pain is temporary, pride is forever. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh. Well said. Hey, pride Ooh. is forever. Yes, Let's think about forever. A lot of tats. We getting more tats? <laughs> of course. Have you, are you going to continue to go all the way yeah. through? Yeah, I got, I got, uh, I got to finish my chest and I got to finish my shoulders. I got to add my daughter, my uh, my youngest daughter up here. Hey, congrats to, by the way. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it, man. Woo. Appreciate it. So, 
Yeah, I'm a, I'm a tattoo guy. It's kind of my therapy. You know, when I when I um, in the off season, um, you know, I try to find things to kind of ease my mind. I love I love classic cars. I love you know giving back to being around kids, stuff like that. And you know, for self love, uh, I love getting tattoos. Uh, um, every tattoo got a meaning. So. Everything that happened in my life, um, I try to put it on my body, my body for memory. I'm an Alabama A&M a fan, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, me and Robert Mathis, uh, you know, I mean, he is actual dog, but <laughs> you know, I mean, that whole thing. And I see your shirt, HBCUs do it better. It feels like we're in the middle of quite a momentum turn oh, yeah. for HBCUs. As somebody that came out of South Carolina State, what are your thoughts on that whole process? Can it continue, you think? And uh, what do you think is the next step? Um, yeah, I, I think it'll continue. Um, you know, it was great with, um, you know, I, I, me personally, I think if we went for Dion, you know, we wouldn't be taking the leap that we we're taking. So, you know, big shout out hey, to him. Hey, he's gone all in. Oh, yeah, he is, awesome. he is. But, um, you know, I – I like the things that, you know, the NFL are doing with the, the combine and all that stuff. But in all reality, put me amongst all the dogs. Put, I mean, if I'm from an HBCU, you think I got talent, put me with the big guys. Don't have me off to the uh, side with the HBCUs. Let me show what I can do. Why do you think they're doing that? The, the, uh, to check the box. Uh, to check the box. You know, they're just doing things to – Cover know, make, your Yeah, that's, that's all it is. But if you really want to really dive in – you know, stop, stop just posting Jackson State. You know, there's way more HBCUs out there. Um, Jackson State did get the number one recruit in the nation, but there's so many guys, there's so many uh, talented guys at HBCUs that's really not getting no love if you really don't go to Jackson State. Because we got a guy at South Carolina State, Kobe Durant, he went to the Senior Bowl, got invited to the Combine, but absolutely nobody knows about him. But he's, he's a dog, though, you know what I mean? Well, hopefully it'll continue to grow, obviously, and there's always going to have to be some – you know, generations that miss out on the inevitable growth, and hopefully that'll continue to go. A lot of money going in there. I think some yeah. deals, TV oh, yeah. deals. <laughs> hopefully that'll continue to go. Your punter down there. <laughs> punter kicker. I love yes, that. Uh, I yeah. absolutely love it. What was his name? Oh, man. I, I forget his name. I forget I, his name. I forgot his name, too. He's a, he's a true athlete, man. Um, He actually came down. He um, was faking every single punt. <laughs> yeah. It was Wagner. crazy. Catching the snap. He had a hoodie on too. I think it was awesome. Yes, he, yes. he was he was faking every single one. Take and then off. like right before getting sacked, <laughs> kick the ball. He really? punted like he jumped. And it wasn't this. It wasn't a twenty yard punt. It was bombs. Really? Yeah, <laughs> he connected on a couple. But by that point, there's no returner back because he's sprinting yeah. at the time. So he got these legit in college. It works because people can cover down the field or whatever. But he was electrifying. Yeah, I, I fucking loved watching him. <laughs> and uh, did you guys win? Of course, against Jackson State, man. Uh, the oh, MIAC, yeah. oh, that's why one you're thing, a little yeah, bitter. Yeah, man. Yeah. Listen, one thing about the MIAC. I'm going to tell you something. There's MIAC, there's a sweat. See, Dion's coaching the sweat. The MIAC always runs the sweat. Can we talk about uh, both of them right there? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just. So, SWAC is Southwestern. Yeah. Well, the SWAC is Southwestern Athletic, athletic Conference, Conference. And yep. the MIAC is the Mid-Eastern uh, Athletic Conference. Okay. Um, I played in the MIAC. Uh, that's all I, was, all I know. You know, bread and butter, MIAC. And. In our mind, you know, it's always a competition between me and the SWAT. You know, it's a me and SWAT championship uh, beginning of the season, and then for the uh, bowl game, that's one at the end of the season. So it's always competition. So. And if you look at the numbers, uh, the MIAC somehow always always on top, man. Oh, <laughs> okay, so we're learning about the game within the game down there at HBCU. Uh, the the – how was the band at South Carolina State? Amazing, man. Marching one on one, man. They, oh, they, they, they rock, man. They got, the okay. they got the champagne dancers. They got the they got the band. They got the drum line. Oh. Man, it's it's amazing. And, and when you when you talk about a true grind, I don't think people really understand the grind of a I mean, I only can speak about an HBCU band, but you know, they're waking up at maybe five o'clock in the morning. I saw Nick Cannon you, one yes, time. Yes, and you hear yeah. you hear it all yeah. through the night. And then they go to sleep probably around 12, 1, and the only thing you hear is drums <laughs> and trumpets, and it sounds amazing. And one thing I love about the HBCU culture, is, especially at South Carolina State, is the band director come to the football team. Hey, what y'all want to hear? You know, we're going to play what hey, y'all want to hear. Hey, they do not hear. do that in other places. No, it's, no, it's, no. it's amazing, man. And I think the band really what makes the atmosphere yes. for the HBCU football games, man. It's amazing. And That's, I like how well-respected the band is. Like, that is a very noted position. Yeah. If you're on the drum line for it. <laughs> now, Grant, I'm only re re saying that because I saw Nick Cannon. Of course. Who could not <laughs> read sure. the music. But, damn, he could hear that. Yeah, yeah, so. He saw it down, and he's like, oh, I'll make another baby. Uh -huh. Do <laughs> thing. Uh, go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Darius, you guys lose uh, Matt Eberflus to Chicago, obviously. Are you expecting – you know, some guy to come in and Fair learn enough. your guys' defense, or what do you think? Ah, uh, man, I don't. When it comes down to new coaching, I don't want you to try to be the last coach. Be you. Yeah. You know, if you if you want to come in and make changes, make changes. You the coaches, make your guys better. That's that's all I care. You know, when I talk to uh, Coach Gus, I just ask him. You know, 
hold everyone accountable. Mm-hmm. You know, if I want you to yell at me just as much as you yell as a, at, a, at a practice squad guy. I want you to push me as hard as you would anybody else because I want to be the best. I want to become the best. I want to be a world champion. And to do that, I need a coach that's going to push me to my highest expectation. So when I talk to him, it's more so, okay, what is your philosophy? What is you going to try to bring to the coach organization? What kind of identity that you want the coach defense to be? And I told him that, you know, I want the coach defense to be feared. You know, I don't want coach <laughs> defense to be out here blowing blowing leads in the fourth yeah. quarter, you know, people just throwing the ball down the field, giving, giving the guys enough time, you know, sit back and just dissect our defense, you know. And me, I'm an aggressive. You know, I want I want to go instead of you know we use the boxing analogy all the time. You know, you got to be able to take a punch. You know, take a punch, mm. take a punch. But well, damn, taking a punch, I want to throw some punches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's 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 my mentality, man. I I'm, I hate sitting back. I hate sitting back waiting. I want to be the one to make guys, you know, adjust to us. You know, and when that's how, I mean that's how the game's supposed to be. You know, for offense, they supposed to adjust to what the defense play. And I, you know, what I mean, I just don't want, I just don't like to sit back. So I'm, I'm ready to rock and roll, man. I hope he can come in. I was watching the uh, Super Bowl with uh, the Patriots in Seattle when Gus was there with the Legion of Boom, and mm-hmm. just watching them guys fly around, man, in the back end. Um, defensive line playing amazing, linebackers, of course. I mean, they had some great guys up front and everything, but not too many guys, not too many coaches can get guys to play. They're all. What is it? What is it you think about those coaches that have the ability? I'm, I'm like Matt Aberflus. He came in. He came in with a mindset that we're going to be the number one hustling team. And that came from the top bottom. You know, he calling everybody out, no matter, you know, who you are. And that's what th- that's what made Coach um, Eberflus so great because he was going to hold everybody to the same standard. So I think with Gus, I need that same thing. I need that same intention to detail, making guys run to the ball, the force. If that ball 20 yards down the field, I want to see you the first one down there. And that's, that's, what, it, that's, what, that's what it's really going to come down to because if you're hustling, you know, hustling eliminates the big play and it's intimidating and big hits, man. And that's and what it you're, is. If yeah. you're flying to the ball, good things happen. Everybody, Always. He gets lucky, gets lucky. Well, he's always around the ball, so something's going to happen. Uh, what year is this for you next year? Uh, five. <laughs> that's crazy. Damn, yeah, I appreciate go. it. Hey, you're like a vet now. Yeah, man. I know. That's crazy, like man. Like Gus <laughs> calling you in that old – like that's a very important conversation yeah. from Gus to have with you. Yeah. Like you're the – you know, you're a guy – you're the guy over there. And DeForest and Kenny – I mean, there is an entire – yeah. Group, your defense is ready to go. I assume Gus is very pumped to get in there. Yeah, I mean, he, he's most definitely very pumped, man. And, I mean, when you look at his defense, it's eye candy. You know, you got everything yeah. you want from them, you know, from the uh, D-line, your linebackers, and your secondary, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, that's, I mean, that's a lot of things that we need. You know, in my opinion, you know, give me a true edge rusher on the outside, you know, to help the force out because he's getting double, triple team in the inside. Give me a give me an older vet corner. Hey, can you talk about how that the trickle down effect there? If the force is getting triple team, what does that mean for everybody else? <laughs> if, if the force is getting triple team, man, everybody else got one on ones. But you know, it's it's hard because nine times out of ten, everybody's gonna run at DeForest because he's getting double, he's getting triple, so they feel like, you know, they're And that's a mission, by the way. We are going to yes. attack DeForest Buckner. Yes, man, and, I, and I don't think fans really understand how the game is really played. You know, let's go, they, let's do this. Let's they, go to class. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because when people, when people say, you know, D-Lenny, you only have five tackles a game. Well, damn, I got to, you know what I'm saying? I got to be around the ball, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I can't listen because, uh, me, me personally, like the first four weeks, man, I'm up here, I feel like I was running track. You know, I was just sitting there, you know, running sideline to sideline. I never could get by any action. So that's when this year was actually the first year that I ever opened my playbook. I had, I said, you know what? I got to figure out how can I get myself around the ball. And everybody, everybody saw the the, um, the play against um, Tampa when I called out, you know, Brady's check. Yeah. That's because me actually really dialed in this year. And I, you know, I talked to Ray Lewis, and you know, learning, you know, learning how to pick up on a, a lot of things. So. I feel like, you know, fans got to understand that we can't make the ball come to us. We got to, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. When the ball comes, you know, that's when you say, all right, cool, Darius, you missed a tackle. Okay, you didn't get a punch out. Then, all right, cool, I can, I can take that. But if you don't really understand the game and when you're not being in, put in position to make the plays, you just got to do what your job is doing. If you're telling me to stay backside in the seam or stay backside in the big gap, I got to do that because that's my 111 on my job. And that's option four on the offensive side because Darius Leonard is there, actually. So you were <laughs> just kind of on an island of irrelevancy during the game. Hey, AJ, what is something from film-wise you think that Young Buck here would maybe pick up in the entire – legit, that's the next level. That's though, a great Darius. question. It sounds like that is where you're trying to take the next level. Yeah, right? I mean, of course. That's like when they're at the Pro Bowl. You know, I'm asking all the offense guys. Me and Travis Kelsey had a good talk. Hey, hey man, Travis Kelsey's the man, bro. He's a dog, man. Yeah, that's, yeah, why yeah. I, that's why I asked him, hey, man, what do you see from a linebacker? When you playing man-to-man um, or using your body or what are you doing? Like, I'm always willing to learn because there's no such thing as knowing it all. You there? I mean, it's this game ball that you play, man, it's always it's always involving. It's always you know a little little things that you can do. Like they got they got what 
T or Tiny University or something like that. Yeah, and we don't have that. Hey, fuck you, yeah, and, it, and it's crazy because <laughs> we as are. linebackers, we need to, we need to do things like that to bring us all together and teach each other the game. To me, I went to South Carolina State. I really didn't have the the defense or oh, the gee. knowledge of the defense as much as I do now. And I think that came from me, my rookie season, man. They made me come into the building at 5.30 every morning. Me, Berganzi, Matt Eberflus was on the field for 45 minutes to an hour every morning by herself doing cone drills, teaching me the defense. And yeah. I think that's a lot of guys who, you know, we, we a lot of times, you know, you just talk, find a ball, find a ball. But once you really can learn Cerebral. where's the ball going and learn how teams are trying to attack you, man, they're going to take your game to a whole nother level. AJ, what is it, huh? What do you got for the guy? All time think, no, I think he's right what he's saying when you talk to Kelsey. That's when I started to learn things when I would ask O-line and I'd ask fullbacks, like, hey, man, what what do you hate that I can do? Yeah. Like, what's easy for you when I try this? Like, so I may think this thing is good. Like, oh, cool. I'm going to bowl the fullback. It's great. He's like, cool, you're never getting to the quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you need to talk to offensive linemen. You talk to everybody on offense, I think, and learn, like, okay, yeah, this they hate when I do this. Yeah. And then go do that. Hey, what do you think about that guy right there, Jonathan Taylor? I mean, he was in the MVP Boy, conversation. Huh. That, hey, listen. give that guy the ball 50 <laughs> yeah, times. Please. Give that yeah, guy the ball. This. Give him the MVP. Man, MVP. listen, this one, I, this one I knew this dude was going to be special. We was in we was in training camp. It's probably my first week back maybe um, off my ankle injury. And, you know, I had him in the whole. Hey, I JT, can't. we appreciate you, man. <laughs> So, man, I came through. It was hey, a rough he was play. super fashionable yesterday. I don't know oh, yeah, man, that man dope, man. That hey, boy got dude, a little he swagger, added man. A designer. <laughs> he added a designer in his photos. I was Ooh. like, ah! <laughs> oh. ah! That boy tough, man. That boy, I mean, he, he's tough, man. I broke through the line free as a bird. And it's just me and him. I'm looking in his eyes. He's looking in my eyes. When I say he hit me with a move that I ain't never seen before, <laughs> and when he, I went that way, he went that way, and shot up the field for another 30, 45 minutes, I said, yo, this dude different here. That's why I knew he's going to be great, man. Yeah, he is. He's unbelievable. And obviously, the Colts know he's great. They know you're great. They know the defense is good. Gus Bradley stepping in. Disappointing loss. Hopefully sends you guys into an incredible offseason. And it will just be a part of the documentary of your team's greatness, man. Yes, sir. I appreciate you stopping by. Next year, Defensive Player of the Year. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. Hey, don't God, you worry wait. about those voters, <laughs> dude. Nah, I don't know. Don't you worry. They don't yeah. know. They're, nah, they're, they're idiots. They don't know the stats. <laughs> yeah, they don't know shit. They don't know anything about what you just talked about. But we appreciate the hell out of you in Indianapolis. You're the absolute best. Ladies and gentlemen, the maniac, Darius Leonard. Thank yeah, you, Darius. Darius. All right, we got to get to a break. Woo. On the other side, we got Justin Jefferson. Jefferson stopping by. Uh, Radio Row is awesome. We'll see you in about four minutes. You all are the best. Cheers. After death, what happens, Bill? What happens after death? I don't know. Um, I have no idea. But I know there's nothing that's mad at me. That's good. It's just nice. so stupid because he created everything. Or she. She Well, definitely a she because God doesn't take responsibility for his own actions. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> what? You set me. <laughs> you set me up. <laughs> no, I just I don't understand. Like, yeah. If you just watch nature videos, you can't believe in a God that cares. You know what I mean? I watched this one one time, this fucking baboon or a little monkey. There was a baby gazelle, and they go after him if they can get him. And they fucking, he got it away from the mother, and the mother can't get rid of the thing. And he just fucking just ripped the thing and just started eating the thing alive as it was screaming in agony. <laughs> and I'm just like, this is, you made something that did that? Or like rabbits? Like their whole fucking purpose is just to be eaten. They have no fucking defense, just fucking hopping around. <laughs> Just complete jerk offs, right? Just and then, then they just like the, their only survival is that we fuck so much well, we can we can stay out in front. Like they're literally designed to keep everybody else alive by being eaten alive. So you think there's some flaws potentially in the entire? No, I just think that like I think if there's a god, right, and he made all of this shit or she, right? Or they, <laughs> or the deep state, man. <laughs> I, I just think that, like, you know, he did what he did here, and he just moved on. Hell of a machine. 310J, dude? Oh, mm -hmm. top of the line. That's when they were singing about being sexy. That's right, yeah. 310J, when somebody saw it, they like, that's sexy, and then he was like, the country yeah, music, you're right, yeah. it is. She thinks my character's sexy. Oh, 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 oh,
<laughs> Hell yeah. Hell Holy yeah, dude. Shit. Hey, that's got a good cockpit in there. Yeah. yeah. Right. Kind of looks like the Pope Mobile with all the glass around the top there, but it ain't no Pope Mobile because this one's fucking breaking. Grind. Hell yeah. Party in the front, business in the back, am I right? Well, I do believe we got business, business all on both sides. ends. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. The plot down there in the front is, although a good time. It uh-huh. is a good time to get that oh, thing yeah. going. Mm-hmm. Fun. Business is being handled. Dude. Oh, oh yeah. Getting plod. And then on the back, on the back <laughs> side, on the back side, you know, whenever you start cracking earth. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh my you god. You need the excavator back there, the big dog. And you know the thing about the seat on this 310J, it turns. Yeah. yeah. It so it's always in the front. You know, whatever you're working on, business can be on the front, both sides. That's right. Mm-hmm. Controls all around. We worried about those front tires? No, no not at that's all. How they roll. No, that's no, they, they survive anything. Those are standard deer backo tires. Look at the back Someone tires, like like Foxy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Foxy. I'm just asking questions. Foxy, it ain't about the front wheels. It's always about the back. That's right. right. All right, because these rear wheel powered vehicles that you would <laughs> never understand. Yeah, you don't know what? anything about that, Foxy. You have no idea. I would not know. We go. I got friends that know. I don't know. Listen, when you're drifting gears, okay, on a rear wheel, oh. especially for 600 some ponies, what? Yeah. you got to watch for like any you know plot holes or debris. Of course, because sure. you can and then hit a tree because mm-hmm. <laughs> the back end kicks out. <laughs> and then you won't drive that car ever again. Because how are you not supposed to drift it? And I guess how are you not supposed to hit a tree? Another tree. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. That's my life. Doesn't have to be yours, though. Thank you, Andrew, for calling from the 310J. That's a beautiful piece of machinery. It is. Gorgeous. Take that thing another round. Oh, wow. look at that oh, thing yeah. prop itself up. Lift yeah. Kit. That's why the wheels don't matter in the front, pal. Yeah. <laughs> <Go lift. laughs> to the show here live at Radio Row. People popping up everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. A lot of them. Not just people, by the way. I apologize for saying that. That makes it sound an underwhelming situation. Legendary humans strutting around all over the place. Just like A.J. Hawk. Wow. 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 Hey, A.J., how come you weren't giving a game to Darius Leonard? What's that all about? Because he plays for the Colts? I I was telling Connor in the bathroom in between. I I think he's doing pretty well for himself. He's pretty much revolutionized how you play defense and how you tackle now with his his punch-out techniques. How about, hey, there's a little bit of spite for whatever Coach said. Yeah, we got players. Who said that? Yeah. Some idiot. Yeah, some yeah. idiot is watching Come that. On. It's like, okay. By the way, him being coachable, he's like, I don't want to make this guy upset. I'll stop doing it. I'll go for the form tackle, I guess, instead of 12 turnovers in 17 games. Yeah. I'm wow. Keep him moving. Joining us now is a game changer, a man who is going to go down as maybe the greatest start to a career in the history of the wide receiver position. Yep. Absolutely changed the game, created a dance craze that everybody is still trying to mimic years later. Mm-hmm. Remember the dab. The dab had a run. Cam Newton brought it in. It was great. It was great. It was great. That thing died off. The gritty is just getting hot. And it's only changing at Pro Bowls when everybody's doing it for this man. Ladies and gentlemen, multi-time, all-pro, Pro Pro Bowl wide receiver for the Vikings, Justin Jefferson. Yeah, Yeah, Justin! Woo! First one. What's up, man? How you doing? Your first one was wow. a little bit more. Your first bead. How's it going, Justin? How you doing, man? Hey, Justin, good to see you. How we doing? How we doing? How we doing? Oh, hey, Connor. great to see you, man. Do it, Connor. Hey, slow great down. Great to slow see down, you. Slow down, AJ. Maybe at the end. Uh, hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? Man, I'm great. The first time you did the bead thing, we wasted it because it was Facts. during the break, and I was Facts. like, whoa, 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 we got to re-intro. You were like, do you want me to go back through there? I was like, <laughs> yeah, I apologize for that. But thank you for joining us. We saw no you problem. working for Old Spice the other day. You yeah. did like 10,000 interviews. You've seen that, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. We were actually yeah. watching you as you're going through all of it. It's like, damn, this guy is talking a I lot. Had to, I had to cover all my steps. Yeah, well, you got great energy, man. <laughs> hey, this, hey, quick question here, because you are young, incredibly successful, Seem yeah. confident and comfortable in every situation. Do you think this generation who's been around social media forever, do you guys think you've like built up a callus or a comfort level with all eyes <laughs> on you? Because like Joe Burrow and them, yeah, they seem to be so comfortable in the big stage. Call the collective. Yes, younger guys seem to be much more comfortable. I mean, Jonathan Taylor's walking around. He's MVP guy. He's just super chill. What do yeah. you th- do? You think there is something to that? Like always being in the spotlight since you were in high school and you're like more comfortable with it. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, I guess just having a type of year we had at, uh, at LSU in our college careers, uh, I guess it just kind of got us ready for the league. You know, just us being, uh, well, me, Jamar, Joe, just being the national champion, uh, you know, having the season that we had, uh, then doubling back, getting to the league and having the season that we had. 
I mean, people can't say too much. Yeah, but that's on the field. Like, off the field, you guys are all just, like, 90-year-old men. Like, yeah. It's, uh, it's uh, the amount of maturity that has happened. Yeah. Like, they're going to yeah. do studies into this type of shit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because you coming into the league and just having instant success and being very comfortable, yeah. Joey B and Jamar having the same exact thing, you guys are going to be talked about up there. Do you think it's potentially because the LSU lineage, like the OGs that yeah. come back and teach, Jarvis, Odell Beckham, it's kind of like you see it, it's, like, kind of expected for you? Or what do you think yeah. it is, uh, so natural uh, uh, success? I mean, I I can't really talk too much about other people, but in my situation, uh, just having two of the brothers that went to LSU before me, you know, just seeing it at a, at, at a young age, seeing it at 10 oh, years okay. old, going to LSU games, Alabama, you know, just seeing those type of players like Odell, Jarvis into the locker room, you know, Honey Badger, Pat P, you know, seeing those guys in the, in the locker room, you kind of you kind of see it before uh, you really get there. I, I seen it, what, eight years before I even got to LSU, so... I feel like that all got me ready for it. Hey, LSU kind of stinks. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you don't deserve that. You don't deserve that. The complete opposite, actually. I think everybody's very surprised because for yeah. a lot of my adulthood, because of all the people that you have yeah. talked about there, LSU has been the – you know, the, schools. The yeah. Yeah, yeah, it has yeah. been the yeah. place. Yeah. Now, obviously, Brian Kelly's coming in. He's going to be able to. You know, he's doing a Dance. lot of transfer portals, yeah. dancing yeah. on things. You yeah. know what I mean? He's really <laughs> having. A, he's getting the gat and all that. But let's talk about uh, your NFL career. I don't want to talk too much about LSU. Um, is there anything you can learn and get better at? And is that constantly happening, or do you have it figured out already? It that's, that's constantly happening. Uh, there's always things that I can learn. Uh, things that I can. Uh, pick up on. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm only two years in. Well, that's what we're saying. Yeah, yeah. That's I'm only saying. I'm only it two years like in. I'm only 22 yeah. years old. So <laughs> there's Jesus. there's so many things that I I have to learn. So many things. So many questions I really ask throughout the locker room. Ask to Adam. You know what things that I need to do to you know get my body right in recovery or uh, to just better myself on the field. So there's there's a lot of things I need to work on. Well, it doesn't seem like you, but I appreciate the fact. <laughs> that you, yeah. Go ahead, AJ. What about you guys? Have a new regime coming to town. New, yeah. New coach. Yeah. yeah. I assume the rest the staff i don't know what the, what the whole staff if they're all gone or whatever but what are you what are your thoughts on that were you paying attention or are they talking to you like yeah. in the interview process how'd that go i'm excited man yeah i mean i'm excited to get them i've been hearing nothing but good things about them uh i've been watching the rams offense for for this whole season Pretty seeing good. cooper cup being wide open <laughs> the whole season <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so i mean I'm, I'm happy for it this is my first uh time having a head coach that's on the offensive side instead of the defensive side so I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm hey, excited. Uh, just real quick, pretty good dodgeball player. I'm okay. I'm decent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about it. It was a terrible camera angle. Yeah. Okay, the way they broadcast it, it was uh -huh. interesting from the back. Right but up. the jump to the side, game-winning one-arm catch, yeah. and then the punt. You, hey. you like that one, huh? Whoa. I knew you was going to be a fan of I did. I went crazy immediately. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and dodgeball was really the highlight of that entire thing. And then afterwards, you said, hey, uh, we got this trophy. Here we got this bread. Yeah. <laughs> you had an incredible grill in. Uh, grill didn't come today, didn't make it today. Grill, I was pretty excited. Grill didn't make it today. Why, is that just a sum of the days thing? It gets in the way or it's too big, too large? Depends on how I'm feeling. If I'm feeling big and bold, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, it's like, hey, how you doing? Cheese. Keep it moving. Yeah. Yeah, okay, here we go. <laughs> Today, not so much. It's like, hey, listen, we got a little sport. We're going to work cool. out, maybe dunk on some people. You know, I had to talk to y'all a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Man, the grill would have been perfect for this show. I wouldn't let you know that. I know y'all got the lights yeah, on. Yeah, it would have been, hey. The lights would have been hitting. Yeah. Flash. <laughs> you did steal the show over there. What did you? What the Pro Bowl as a whole? You said uh, actually we were just talking to Darius Leonard. He said he was asking questions of Travis Kelsey. The Pro Bowl and obviously the game is yeah. so terrible. Yeah. I mean the game is a terrible quality of football. Yeah. But now we know that if you get hurt and waste all that money, you're an idiot in the Pro Bowl. So <laughs> right. it has to be shaped. But the camaraderie, the community of the Pro yeah. Bowl. You've been there obviously multiple times now. What do you learn from that? Who do you talk to? Is there anybody that you've gotten a chance to kind of chat with around the league that you didn't expect to be awesome? I mean, I definitely have some more players that I want to talk to uh, in a league that wasn't able to go to a Pro Bowl this year. Uh, but, I mean, the experience was outstanding. Uh, just being around the top players in the in the league, that was the first time for me. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, just being around all of the players at, at one time. Because last year it was COVID, so oh, we didn't have we didn't yeah. have Pro Bowl last year. Played Madden. Right, yeah. right, right. You a Madden player? Of course. <laughs> 
Everybody's a good man player. That's true. Of course. Yeah. Not everybody. Oh, so you are a good player. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. everybody's a good player. But not everybody. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Justin, obviously, you know, Mac Jones stole the Pro Bowl with his gritty. <laughs> what did you think seeing that from the sideline? And as a Patriots fan, when do you think you're going to, you know, take your talents to New England? <laughs> and play oh, Bill yeah. Just when, if possibly. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I honestly loved it. I honestly loved the Mac Jones. Uh, him running 70 yards. That was yeah. – that was the first time for him, yeah. so I know, yeah. I know that was a little tough for him. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the, the fact that he ran all the way down there and then hit the gritty in front of the whole stands. After after he did I was like, I should have did that. I should have forced the gritty. I should have ran all the way down there. Even it, after yeah. being touched, you know what I'm saying, I should have did it like, like everybody was expecting it. I should have did it like that, but I loved the way he did it. He actually did better than a lot of a lot of other people. Yeah. So. Hey, best white? That's the best white gritty you see? One of the. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Go. Uh, how do you he feel, had a little swag to him. How do you feel yeah. about everybody? How do you feel about everybody doing it? Because this I love is all it. like a like everybody does yeah. it, and they like it's a respect thing yeah. for you, not yeah. like a different. Like some people used to do other people's dances, and yeah. I was yeah. like, fuck those people. <laughs> but now they're doing it. It's all like massive yeah. respect to you, and also shout out to gritty. Right. And this Facts. is cool. It's lasting. Yeah. This is awesome, and you're kind it's of the crazy. face of it all. It's crazy. And it all started in college. It all started Texas game, my junior year in college when I first did it. Uh, then ever since then, it's been becoming bigger and bigger uh, to the fact where defensive players are trying to do it to, to <laughs> so actually not just there I mean in every facet of life people are trying to do the gritty now yeah. you know yeah. like when Cam brought the debt everybody was yeah. doing it yeah. kids were doing it they were yeah. abusing it it got ruined the gritty is something it takes skill yeah. it takes a little rhythm mm -hmm. takes I think a that's bit why I think that's why a little, yes. uh, more people like it too because it, it's, it's different you it know it doesn't get old though like, right anyone right. can dab like my dad can dab my dad can't gritty. <laughs> <laughs> that's why Fun, his dad's name's Chopper. Yeah. Chopper? Yeah. Pistol. Oh, yeah. Pistol, yeah. Pistol wow. and Chopper. Father-in-law, yeah. Chopper. Father, but Pistol. <laughs> He's from Ohio. Look at that head. Think about this guy. That's Justin, think about this guy's life. Yeah, yeah That's absolutely. why it hasn't been played out, though, because you can't. You have to be skilled to do it. So that's what I'm saying. Like, things that are, if it's not, you don't have to be skilled to do it, that's why it gets old quick. So, I mean, but knowing, knowing his position, knowing, you know, what he did for the game, that's... Who, AJ? Yeah, he can do it. That's understandable. Oh, you're talking about, yeah. The, well, the uh, thing about it is... As soon as we heard that you were coming on, we we're obviously incredibly pumped to see you in person. Yeah. You're electrifying on the field. There was one person in our office that was like, mm -hmm. I can't wait to show him my gritty. Yeah. And, uh -oh. uh, Do this every night before I go yeah, to bed. This, yeah. uh -oh. literally, uh -oh. So you've been yeah. practicing this. Oh, every uh, single night. So last night we were on a little Max Crosby. Uh, shout out to the legend. What up, dude? Good to see you, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, all right. um, last night, little uh, Khalifa Kush was delivered to the house that we were staying in. Yeah. Uh, we we're on it. And he was like, wait until Justin Jefferson sees my gritty. Could you give, what do you score? One to ten? How's your one ranking, you think? How I'm do you going score? one to ten. Great. Right. Yeah. Maybe eight yeah, or eight. Hey, mine, nah, see, oh, look, right. I'm just letting you know now before you start. I'm a, I'm a little hard on my grading. Don't yeah, worry. you yeah. should be. Don't worry. This is going to be possibly the best grading you've ever seen. This is like a I know. I know. I'm, I'm I'll start over there and I'll come this yeah, way. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That's Let me good see idea. it. Maybe a, yeah. Hey, you just caught a touchdown. Oh, oh. oh my God. Oh, oh what a catch. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> hey, my rating is like a three. Oh, just one more. No just and, and, and I gave and I gave Kirk like a four. Oh, no. no, I gave Kirk like a four. You get like you a got, three. You got ranked. You got rated lower than Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins has great swagger. I have none. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? That's not what you were saying last night. Well, I mean, maybe I was, you know, fibbing a little. <laughs> great skill. Uh, obviously, <laughs> hey, you crushed that, by the way. Well done. Three out of ten. Is that the lowest score you've ever given? Lowest Definitely. score? Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, that's zero. Oh, it was actually just a three to ten on. scale. That's we were learning. My but, best one. Man, I thought you really sold it. You caught a touchdown, though. Who yeah, yeah, you caught a touchdown. That's right. Six right. points on the board. Right. Uh, right. Justin, you're here for Optimum Nutrition. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and tell us about it and how much you love it and why you love it would help him <laughs> please <laughs> would help him find some rhythm with the yeah uh, he just killed the life and uh out the <laughs> nutrition is, is, is all about what? building better lives so i'm definitely uh happy to work with them uh i mean we've been doing stuff with my hometown uh we we did like this little uh competition thing with Devonte adams about uh trying to get this uh, workout set for our communities, uh, awesome. our hometown. So uh, we work together with them, and uh, they bless us both with uh, 
our own little thing. Hey, in the, shout in the out to yeah, there we go. Yeah. Uh, is there anywhere we can go find and maybe find a better goodie too through yeah. Optimal yeah. Nutrition? It was, uh, uh, it <laughs> 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 he said you're gonna have to get on some of that 15 year old fitness stuff. All right, all right. Yeah, I mean, geez, Optimal Nutrition ain't gonna save it, but we are very appreciative of you stopping by and Optimal oh, no Nutrition. Problem. You've been crushing it this week, and there's no. There's no confusion on why. You're a good dude, man. Appreciate you, man. You're incredibly wise and mature for your age, Thank and you. you fucking crush it, Thank dude. You. The Thank NFL you. is very lucky to have you. Thank you. I pre- I, hey, I'm lucky to be on here with y'all, man. This is this is an honor to be here talking to y'all. Shut up, dude. <laughs> like, I'm serious, man. No, hey, you know I love you, man. Yeah. I, I love talking to you. I love I love y'all vibes. Uh, y'all y'all keep it cool, and I like y'all yeah. energy. So, man, we appreciate you so yes, much. Sir. Keep yes, killing sir. it. Uh, shout out to Optimum Nutrition, and good luck in Minnesota, dude. Appreciate you. I gotta stay warm. I gotta get them coats. Hey, it is cold out there, isn't it? Bro, it was Pat, like negative twenty. It was like negative twenty. What's that, buddy? Their new head coach, right? It hasn't right? been announced yet, AJ. No, he's an absolute stud. KOC, dude. Yeah. 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 Kevin O'Connell, you know. Yeah, from the Rams. Yeah. He's yeah. not a fish, bro. Well, Cooper Cup's been wide open all week. You think I don't listen? Get out of here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> the rocks for brains, dude. I don't need to hear that. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Justin Jefferson. Thank yeah. you, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate uh, it. We appreciate you, man. You can bounce out anytime you want or hang out for the rest of the hour. You want to? After that gritty, I'll see you. I'm getting out of here. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said I got to get, get out of here. Get out of here. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate I appreciate you. you. All right, pleasure. Hey, Peace. come to New England. All right. <laughs> see you later. He didn't say no. He didn't say no, Z. That's right. Dude, I don't know. That was pretty sick, actually. Hey, dude, Thank you fucking you. killed it. I didn't want to say it in front of him, but you look good. That was one of again. the best ones I've ever done. Hey. I couldn't replicate that type of gritty. Dude, it looked exactly like his. That's what I yeah. thought, yeah. too, I while I was Justin for a second. Did While you know, I was doing it, like he was so good. To, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dude. I apologize for making you do that, but you were talking that shit last night about yeah. gritty. Hey, look, that was, you know, not my best, but I still do have an unbelievable gritty. Yeah. I mean, I got the rhythm. Yeah, but we saw a lot of evidence on the contrary there. Well, this isn't my normal gritty floor. I'm usually on a football uh, field doing it. If it was turf yeah. or, cleats. or grass and I had my cleats on. Oh, uh, is it the Nobles? No, it's not the Nobles, oh, but these no. Nobles are uh, built for speed. It's and the Nobles. The gritty's a little, you know, you got to move a little slower. You know what I'm saying? So. Hey, you did you know. let the hair... Yeah. Oh, I had to. Look good. From behind, you kind of looked like a bird trying to take off, and I think that's what you're supposed <laughs> to do. That's what the gritty is. You look like a little bird bath there. Yeah, a little bit, isn't it? The, that's what the gritty is. What happened to the jacket? Where's the jacket? Hey, 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 <laughs> All right, we're here for another hour and 14 minutes. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Justin Jefferson. Anything happened, Tone, while you were out there and we were talking to Justin Jefferson and Connor was getting threes at a scale of Pretty three good. to ten on Pretty gritties? Good. Nothing of any importance that I can think of, no. <laughs> I mean, there's basketball stuff happening, but oh, James Harden traded. Yeah, wow. Like what? Porzingis went somewhere, but who Porzingis cares? got what? traded. What? He stinks. He's going to Wizards. Who cares? What's his name? Christopher. Kristaps. Kristaps. <laughs> Christopher is the English uh, pronunciation. No, conversion from yes, there it centimeters is. Conversion. to inches. And he was obviously on that one team. Yeah, yeah the Knicks. Ray, yeah, and, and he plays and the Luka. Oh, he's on the Mavericks currently. He's the big, tall, seven foot four guy. Boom, boom. Who came out of uh, Latvia? Yeah. He's gone? Mm-hmm. Where'd he go? Wizards. Are they still an NBA team? Oh, yeah. oh yeah. They're actually <laughs> probably the best year they've ever had, and then their best player just had surgery on his wrist, and he's out for the entire year. So. Oh, so they're dead. They're dead, yeah. Super Bowl week, who cares? Yeah, that's, yeah. What, I, that's what I was football. saying. Let's talk a little football. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> it's a little dry. Yeah, well, yeah, it's yeah. A, I mean, if rap she would uh, stop boozing. Yeah. What who, do, who do we have coming um, out on a, in the fourth hour? Who's well, coming on the show? First of all, we have super high tech stuff here on this FanDuel stage. Zito said there is an ability to watch the replay of Connor's oh, gritty. Oh, 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 okay. I don't Perfect. think I got to enjoy it fully the first time. If you could put this maybe in. S- Connor catches a touchdown. Perfect. Boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Gritty, 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 It was better than I gritty. thought, actually. No, just because you say what it's supposed to be. What? Yeah. Gritty, gritty, gritty. That's, that that's, doesn't mean that's what you're doing. That's what it back was. Can we do, Can we do that one more time, Zito, just to see what Connor... So Connor catches his first ever touchdown at the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Congrats, Super Bowl yeah, 56. Hey, yep, Super Bowl I did it. Touchdown. Catch a Thank Super you. Bowl right Thank here. You. Full back on Went, the end zone. Only got an NBA uh, jersey on because his jacket was taken by Adrian Peterson, which was then promptly given away as a gift to somebody within his team. <laughs> oh. That's right. He just walked by without it. He catch and. Boom, oh, boom, oh, boom, oh, boom. Justin boom. loves it. Gritty, gritty. 
Gritty. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, I really appreciate you really putting that out there. Pretty good. Uh, let's talk about Thank the dolphins a little bit. A lot of dolphins talk, and I don't necessarily love it. Because anytime you dance with the Dolphins fan base, you're yeah, dancing yeah. with potential destruction of your Twitter account. Uh, Cuck Mountain. Mountain. Okay, you're, you're potentially dancing with Cuck Mountain. <laughs> yeah. They will put you up there. The Dolph fam is a passionate one, and I think they got the right head coach mm -hmm. in Mike McDaniel. I mean, how will it go? We have no idea. You can't judge any of the head coaching hires, especially the one for the Vikings that we were just speaking of. Kevin O'Connell, yes, of course. Especially that one. Uh, right. And then hack it out there in Denver. Uh -huh. And then you do the entire circuit around, and you obviously talk about yeah. those other head coaches Bobby that Smith got down hired. In Houston. Oh, oh yeah. my God. Sanders, Sanders, Floss, yeah, Eberflus, Doug Peterson. Doug Peterson, Doug Peterson Doug. down in Jacksonville, obviously. Uh -huh. But Lovey Smith not only signed, beard, delivered. Liberty. That means hey. Pep Hamilton, also offense coordinator. And I don't want to have to showcase how smart I am all the time. Okay. But if you need me to do that, I will. Mike McDaniel. Okay, we we're calling him McDaniels the other day. <laughs> Not, that's Josh. He's, by the way, congrats to him. He's with the Josh, Raiders. Yes. Congrats. He's with the Raiders. We're so smart, obviously. Paul Koharski from Tennessee down there. But the whole thought. <laughs> of course. Yeah, it's a media guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Mike McDaniel is like the perfect vibe, I think, for this Tua led Dolphins team. Mm -hmm. He's hilarious. He's very driven. He's out of Yale. He doesn't seem to be anything like what any other coach is going to be. We saw this with MCDC last year. That ended up being, you know, yeah. team loved him. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but they stunk, but the team Whoa. still loved yeah. MCDC. Loved, loved them, loved them. Now, Vrabel, much different than MCDC, although they will fall into the same bucket, I believe, whenever they're being described as type of coaches. I don't think there's any motherfuckers like this Mike McDaniel guy, super Ivy League guy who has crack and wit and self awareness. Yeah. And he came out and said that there is no cost too high for winning for Stephen Ross. All Stephen Ross mm. cares about is winning. That's all you want as a coach. Well, there's allegations being made that this guy cared a lot about losing. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I don't know if that's why Mike McDaniel came out and read the scene and said, hey, listen, somebody's going to have to go to bat for this entire franchise. Everybody thinks this guy's a fucking loser up here. I love that even more. Everything this guy has said about Tua, about the team, about everything coming around Tua, seems like he's off to a hot start. How will it go during the season? Nobody knows. It is still Buffalo and New England. In Stephen Ross's office, uh, I saw a picture the other, the other day. Uh, it says you cannot put a price on winning but $100,000 per loss. Okay. Yeah, see, and I think maybe you saw that picture because people were saying this guy is a loser. This guy is paying people to be a loser, so you probably saw mm -hmm. that picture come out and say, no, this guy likes to win. He actually is trying in the NFL, even though everybody's saying the opposite of this. AJ, uh, Tua getting a new young co uh, coach who might be able to see the world the same way he does. Not that Beeflo didn't, but it seemed like they were on different pages on a regular basis. Especially with all Tua has been through. What if Tua goes on to become just an absolute superstar? What if he's dynamite? I mean, what if he's stupendous? What if that's what Mike McDaniel does? Would you be ultimately surprised, or do you expect that to happen? No, I wouldn't be shocked. I don't know what's going to happen, but I know Beef was a defensive guy, right? We heard Justin Jefferson yeah. say he's excited to have an offensive head coach for the first time. Ah. So McDaniel, this he's obviously an offensive guy. I watched the uh, FaceTime they had from the private jet when McDaniel's flying down to C2, and he's pumping him up, and he's, he even had to relay the message to the camera. Tua just said, like, this is the greatest day of my life or something similar like that, right? Oh. Tua said this is – I'm he so lucky to be happy, yeah. – Tua oh, said I'm thanks. so lucky to be yeah. coached by this guy or something. Ah. Yeah. He had to relay it because he was wearing earbuds. So I think it's going to be cool. Like it, it feels like it's going to be Tua and McDaniel just pounding around that facility all day long. Could you imagine if Tua busted out the ukulele? Oh, like as, yeah. as soon as he heard the news that Brian Flores was out, he's give me the fucking ukulele. We are back to happy times. Uh -huh. <laughs> the beef flow is gone. We're moving on. Who's this nerd from San Fran? Can he make me better? Yeah. I don't know if Tua's calling Mike McDaniel a nerd, but that is the feel. No. He will, well, MCDC would put him in a It's a compliment locker. now. Hey, how's it going? Well, yeah. The Rosen House Sports representation over there. The Rosen <laughs> High. How Rosen you doing? Good to see you guys. Always doing big business. Yeah, former, former, good guy, hey, good person. Go, Drew. Hey, Drew, uh, listen, you're, we are live, Bye, so Mike. I know you're always in the middle of, uh, you know, negotiation and working and everything like that. Congrats on all the success, pal. Let me, let me just say, is my mic on? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, Pat, I'll never forget when I was working with you, you told me, man, I feel like I can do more stuff off the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember saying to you, you know, Pat, 
you're a punter. Yeah. You sure about that? Yeah. And now look at you. Yeah, I dunked oh, on you and a lot of people, but you were you were one of the most active people I've ever seen in any business. Anytime I sent you a text, you responded within two minutes. You like you never sleep. There's a reason you're on top, dude. A lot of respect. You, you know, Pat, I, I recognized when I first met you. We met at uh, we were in Indianapolis. I came to have lunch with you. We ate one of those spicy shrimp cocktails, and I said, this guy's got a great personality. Oh, thanks. He's a future star. Uh, a lot of man. more doubt for you, man. Hey, you too, man. I'm very happy for your success. You hey, big qu- it. hey, big question, Drew. $205 million salary cap, $110 billion media deal that can be opted out by the NFL at any time. The money's only going up. You have to be incredibly <laughs> pumped about yeah. that, Drew. Yeah, so the, the cap goes all the way from 182.5 to 208.2 this year. We've got a new TV contract that kicks in. We're doing, the NFL's doing deals now that involve gambling. So that's Shout huge. Out. Shout, right? out. Right? Shout out. Right? The Shout NFL out. couldn't be in a better place, filling out the stands, playing games in Germany now. The league's in a great place. It's awesome for players. It's nice to be a player agent. You would have been the highest paid punter in the history of the NFL if you played with the 208 cap. Yeah, I, know. Oh, well, yeah. I think anybody would be, but uh, <laughs> I'm excited to see the moves you make and the, uh, you know, the strategy behind your entire representation. We, we will, man. It's, uh, it's great seeing you as always. We'll be active. Thanks for having us on. You're the best. Thank you for <laughs> stopping by. Yeah, Drew. 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 Hey, Drew, Drew, Drew. Might not be a number you have off the top of your head. Maybe somebody will have to tell you. Total contract values you've, you've been a part of? It's over $10 billion. <laughs> Oh, oh my God. And Pat Holy was a shit. part of that. Pat made up a couple million nah, of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, not, hey, Pat, my you claim pay. to fame is not the $10 billion. It's that I was one of your agents. Yeah, you're yeah, the right. best. Ladies and gentlemen, Pat McAfee. Drew Rosenhaus. Thank you, yeah. man. Drew was a guy. Yeah. He's oh, very yeah. cool. Oh, very yeah. good at what he does. He always came very on, cool. Uh, very early on our show. Yeah, yeah. He was always very cool. I mean, it did work out for me because he's got like 2,000 2, clients or whatever, yeah. you know, so I kind of get lost in there, but. He was always very nice to me. I appreciate it. Didn't have a long stint of doing business together, but it was ten, a good stint. Yeah. Ten billion? That's all. Over ten billion, yeah. Holy shit. It's only going to continue to go, too. He's dialed in everywhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good on, Drew. Thanks for stopping by. Justin Jefferson as well. Mm. Bruce Buffer. Darius Leonard. What will our four see? I don't know. It won't be as good as Chris Mad Dog Russo, no. who's on the other side of this six-minute break. We'll see Sirius in 21 hours. We return on YouTube in six. Cheers. Out of Philadelphia is one of the biggest inspirations walking around the internet. Geo, the podcast. Yeah! Okay, so you're 14 years old. Yep. You're from Philadelphia. Yep. Big time Eagles fan, podcaster. You were Carson Wentz's number one fan. Yeah. Yesterday, the A01 invited me, and Carson invited me to the game, and I got to go on the sideline and meet Carson again. And he gave me a football. Let's go! Yeah. You're obviously full of energy, full of optimism, full of upbeat, good vibes. Yeah. What do you go through on a day-to-day? I've had 20 surgeries in my life, so it hasn't been easy. Um, I have a uh, condition called SJS, um, short Stampel syndrome, um, and it's basically like muscular dystrophy with dwarfism. My elbows are dislocated. My left hip is dislocated. I had to get my right hip reconstructed. The reason I'm so optimistic is because life is too short to focus on the negativity. Let's go! I'm sorry to hear that you have to be tougher than all of us on the day to day, but I am so incredibly thankful that you keep that mindset. How'd you develop a love for football? We've always been a football family, but then when I started Having surgeries, I started watching football, and then I just kind of fell in love. What does the rest of the season look like for the Indianapolis Colts, you think? Carson's going to keep himself safe out there? Carson's going to have his best NFL season here in Indy. Why is that? He loves it here, and he's having fun. And when Carson Wentz is having fun, he plays his best. Okay, and how about the Philadelphia Eagles? I think they got a little developing to do with you. <laughs> Are there any players that you'd like to get on your podcast? Brian Dawkins. Oh. Ooh. Is he your favorite uh, Eagle of all time? Um, him, Carson, and Zach Ertz are my top three. Oh, oh Zach Ertz. Damn, so sorry. Yeah. Why is everybody getting traded out that you like? What's the deal? 
I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're really, really good at this. What's the name of the podcast? Uh, Philly Sports with Giovanni. One last message to somebody out there who maybe uh, doesn't view life the right way, you think? I'd just say find your happiness and find the thing that inspires you, like I found football, and just try to look on the optimistic side. Hey, you absolutely crush it every single day. You crush it in here. We appreciate you. We hope you loved Indianapolis, Indiana. Come back whenever you want. Ladies and gentlemen, Geo the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I just saw a picture of you getting out of, I think, a 757 that is from Jim Ursay. What was that? And have you ever been in that plane before? I, I thought it was like a, the team plane to fly all of the Indianapolis Colts. <laughs> I, uh, literally, I mean, it's got the logo on it, uh, Pat, and uh, it was awesome. But hey, look, that's just Jim. Pat, I had a wonderful 14 years there. It, I, it's obviously the team that I wanted to play for always. I, I understood the, the, the decision he had to make. and. No hard feelings, and uh, for him to send his plane to fly me and my son down here, uh, it was a great, great gesture. A lot of room for me and Marshall. We were throwing the football. <laughs> <laughs> so, pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty cool experience. Pretty cool father-son weekend. By the way, as he's moving from event to event right now, <laughs> you are the best, dude. Where are you headed right now? I'm going to the game. I'm going to the game. I got Lynch. I got Fanica. I got these guys in the background. So, boys, uh, how you? Congratulations! Yeah. Congratulations, boys! All right, Peyton. Oh, hey, there he is, Marshall. I hope you enjoyed that plane, pal. Hey, Peyton. <laughs> last thing here. Um, you talking to Tom Brady? You becoming friends with him? Uh, it was interesting to watch. Oh yeah, take the photo. Take the photo. <laughs> 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 All right, we will wrap this up. Well, I'll tell you, Pat, um, I don't think anybody can do what, what Tom has done. Look, I know how hard it was for me to get on the same page with my receivers, learn a new system, learn new coaches. But I had a full off season. I was injured. I was rehabbing. The fact that Tom has done this in a COVID pandemic off season, no time to meet with his receivers. He met with his coaches illegally by breaking into Byron Leffert's house. <laughs> uh, so besides that, uh, it's been incredible what he's been able to accomplish, and uh, he deserves all the credit. His leadership is, is what put the Bucks in this game today, and uh, I have great respect for him because I know how hard it is. But uh, Hey, how did you know Red 18 was coming? Pat, I mean, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you telling that story and, and just growing the legend. That was about the 18th time I tried it. I <laughs> going into that then you know when it doesn't hit you just keep walking and nobody ever really tells you about it so when it hit i was as surprised as you were and uh the reaction from, from some of the some of the good old folks there in the casino that night was uh pretty special well i appreciate you doing that you made me and those folks in the casino a bunch of money congrats on the hall of fame nod thank you for spending time enjoy yourself at the game Peyton. Pat, thanks, pal. I appreciate you. The, sher you. the Sheriff Hall of Famer, Peyton Mayer. Oh, yeah! Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show here live at Radio Row, Super Bowl 56, Los Angeles, California. Woo! Oh, yeah! It's been a hell of a day. Yeah. What's up, Big Dog? How you doing, man? Good to see you. A lot of people have come through. A lot of people have walked by. I don't know if anybody is going to be as electrifying as what we are about to see. <laughs> there he is. There. Adrian, Adrian, you got yeah! it? Hey, nice jacket. Nice jacket. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's about to happen. Oh, yeah. Here, oh, here, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. When you're... Comes. Here it comes. It's Perry Sanders with him. Yeah! yeah! Woo! I thought, Barry, I thought Barry was going to do it with him. Hey, I think Barry's just as electrified. He's, yeah. you know, Rocket Mortgage yeah. uh, Super, Super Bowl, Bowl Squares. Square. Come on. Yep. <coughs> Got him. Yeah, he was on the show. What are you laughing at? What is your at? deal? Because you, yeah. you remembered the full thing. That's what made me laugh. Yeah, yeah. oh, did it. You try to question We got a great on. guest coming on, man. Let's do it. Good transition, AJ. Good point. Joining us now is a author. 
A man whose book is now on the New York Times bestselling list. Woo! A man who has been a friend of the show. A man who started a hashtag. Jay yeah, New. Because if anything happens in the NFL, this man knows before you. That's why hashtag Jay New. New. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now from Fox, Jay Glazer. Yeah! yeah! Jeez, I almost heard him. Yeah, there you go. Yes. Do it. Oh, bang head. Oh, bang oh, your head right oh, off his forehead. Oh, Jeez. Oh, He's going to knock oh, you off. Careful, the careful. <laughs> Stay <Stage> over <laughs> <man>. Careful. <laughs> Woo. What's up? Woo. I'm not going to do that with you. Good. What's up, man? What? Good to see you. Come on, AJ. I am not going to grapple What's with up? Jay. Hey. Hey, you, Come on, you, dude. Hey, you had a good center of gravity. Hey, low, <laughs> low man wins. That's there, right. I, I will let everybody know I'm up in these boats, though. You know what I mean? There ain't, a lot, of, there ain't a lot of traction on bottom of those. But I also didn't have the perfect... Uh, Form, I don't believe. I'm no, no, that was pretty shitty form. Yeah. Hey, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 Hey, hey, I'm here to coach you. Yeah, you're right. I'm here to coach. If you just want me to kiss in your ass telling you how great it, I'm not the guy for you. All right, well, we'll work on it later. I'm here. We're, 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 <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on it later. Jay, another Super Bowl for you. Obviously, you've been doing yeah. these for so long. How many years in a biz total, you think? Oh, uh, 89 was my first. I interned for the guy that you just had. Uh, Mad Dog. Mad Dog and Mike and the Mad Dog in yeah. 89 and 90. Yeah. That's how I got my start. I used to have to, like, take Mike to the bathroom at the first NFL draft that I was at in, like, 91. Oh, nice. People yeah, are going to tell a story forth. about me, yeah. by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I used to have to run him to yeah. the bathroom in between bricks <laughs> yeah. and all that stuff. So 32 years you've been coming to the Super Bowl. Is that Bowl. it? 32 years? Yeah, no, tell so, no, my first Super Bowl was 95, and I oh, didn't have enough God, money 27. to pay – to go either way. I don't remember how I got there, but I stayed on like these goth chicks couch. Oh, nice. That I yeah, met somewhere. Nice. And then I would sit in the little media room. 95? So 95. Who, right, uh, Green Day? Uh, Who's? It, it, it was, Marilyn uh, Manson? It was Nirvana. Uh, Patriot, Nirvana. Patriots and, and Packers. Okay. <laughs> right? Yeah. They well, were so far up on that. Right? Far yeah. on that. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. And I would actually wait for like the parties at night so I could eat. I had enough money for food. I was making 9700 bucks a year. Got it. Yeah. So Kind of like now. Wow, no, no, much oh. different now, especially with the sales of this book. And we're obviously incredibly Thank happy you. for Thank you, you and pumped about your story being a testimony for other people. Yeah. And uh, I think everybody that has been out here has obviously had a nice, warm response to your entire story. Yeah. They've been friends with you for so long. And we definitely want to dive into that. But it being out here in Los Angeles, and with obviously you having good buddies on yep. the team, yep. is there anything special you think that makes this one a little bit different? <laughs> I mean, this is huge. This right. is massive. Did I tell you guys? I think I've told you guys the story. The Cabo story. Have I told you guys the Cabo story? Oh, you, you alluded to it, but I you didn't tell us. All right, so here's the real story behind the Cabo. Oh, story. yes. Here we go. go. Hashtag, here we go. Hashtag J. Yeah. Yeah. Hashtag PMS in LA. So Hashtag J. Here I am. I break up with my girlfriend last year. Her name's Rosie Tennyson. Tennyson twins. Look him up. Still one of my best friends. Love hey, her. Great lady. Love you, Rosie. Love you, Rosie. Love you, Rosie. Love you, Rosie. Okay, because she really should get a Super Bowl ring if they win. And uh, man, I was kind of in the tank, and Andrew Whitworth calls me up, and him and McVeigh are in Cabo. And Whit's like, hey, don't sit and isolate when we talk about not isolating, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Don't sit and isolate. We got your room down here in Cabo. And I said, uh, nah, I'm good. He goes, why would you not? Like, what are you doing? Just, we already got your room. And I'm like, shit, all right, fuck, what am I going to do? Yeah. So I said, you guys sure? He said, absolutely. We have the same travel guy, this guy, Chad. So they line me up. I go down. Well, McVeigh was going to leave. Good and because um, I was coming down, McVeigh said, you know what? If Glazer's coming, I'm going to stay. Whoa. And he ends up staying. That's when we had our mental health talk that night that's in the book where Sean is asking Andrew and I, like, describe this depression, anxiety, and the gray. Like, I don't get it. I yeah, really want to Yeah, because you're also in the middle of a breakup, so this is, a, yeah. this is amazing but, but it's, testimony. Shoot, that's, yeah, so, um, so Sean was going to leave if I didn't come. And as a result of me coming down there, the very next day, that's when Stafford happened to check in to our hotel. Wow. Oh, it, it really did. McVeigh know that Stafford was coming. No, no, down? no. We didn't. Nobody. It, knew. it was literally mm. so. Whitworth. So wow. Whitworth was actually the conduit to it all. Whitworth had a connection to him. He got him to come over and hang out. And like the way I tell the story is like it started in the hot tub first, which we were on the hot, then went back to Whitworth's room. Oh, <laughs> and, 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 and and Stafford, yeah. Stafford hates what I tell like this, but we end up having dinner at well, Whitworth's a, room. And McVeigh and Whitworth fall in love with each other, and right then and there, like boom, that that's what happened. And two days later, and then Whitworth told Stafford, "This is how you tell the line. You say, hey, the only place I really want to go is L.A. Otherwise, I'm just going to retire. So you know, 
let's get a work, deal worked out. So over the next two days, McVeigh just banged it, banged it, banged, and then boom, got the trade done as we're sitting there. Um, and oh, no, here's the other crazy thing. As we're having dinner, too. I believe it's your guy. Chuck, as we're having dinner. Chocolate Dow just walked by. Yeah, oh, that's shit. your boy. Ice <laughs> man? Yeah, yeah, yeah I know where Johnny Drama. Uh, what the fuck's a Chocolate Jay's Dow? Boy. That is yeah. my guy. Right that's my training partner. So hold on. Yeah. Hey, just, he's responsible for a lot of my CTE? Yes. Hey, and by the way, he's going to have to get me to write, too. I found out. But <laughs> because of Jay, McVeigh stayed. Now Stafford plays in the Super Bowl. So it's really because of Rosie Tennyson. She gets the Super Bowl ring. Yeah, because you wouldn't have went. You're oh. going through it. If the I didn't get through it, because she broke up my ass, boom, I was there. There. That's for it. They, hey, actually, congrats, Rosie. I, Rosie. Hey, well done, Rosie. Hey. Was that, that, <laughs> Jay, was any of that in the works before that trip? Like, did it all just happen over those couple days? No, it just happened. Just no, all, it literally so nothing just happened. Was happened. So you okay. know what happened? That was the week where I think something happened um, where there was a mandate, like, if you tested positive for COVID in Mexico, you had a, yeah. you had a quarantine for 14 days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So everybody left Cabo except for NFL people. And actually, as we're sitting in having dinner at in Whitworth's outside area. Oh, he's there's got a, no room. There's, oh. a, there's a swimming pool. You know, it's a little private swimming pool. Oh, yeah, and all of a sudden, I see out of like, the corner of my eye, this dude's running at us. And he's running full steam. But there's a pool. But still, I'm jumpy. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, he cannonballs into the pool. And it's Drew Brees. True Brees? Time. Uh, so you're telling me McVeigh, so, <laughs> <what>? Whitworth, <laughs> what? Jay, what? Drew, what? Plunge what? Pool, what? Fell in love. <laughs> all time, all time. <laughs> what did Drew say about this? All Drew was like, so, "Yeah, you oh, should so do two, this." So two days, no, two days ago, I was at the Chargers the trade gets time, done. I went to the Peyton. Yeah, it was great. You after the trade do. gets done, Drew goes, "Oh, that's what you guys were doing." I'm like, "Can't get anything past him." Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's amazing. <laughs> and then obviously, you have a lot of friends around the league. Yeah. Uh, so I'm super, but we're all very happy for Matthew Stafford. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I don't want to say purgatory in Detroit because it'd be much different than purgatory. Purgatory announces above hell. Yeah, exactly. So purgatory is allegedly <laughs> above hell, True. so that would be unbelievable. But he always made great plays, and the Lions were on the come up, obviously, with MCDC. Go for Detroit yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. But him making those plays as a Lion and then going and yeah. seeing McVay, what did they do? Did they connect on a football level? Did they connect on, Those like, who fell in love. Like yeah. those. But you know what? Here's the thing. Here's where, and then the Rams, um, where they get in trouble, don't get in trouble. When Sean, because in practice, Matthew's just so amazing. Right, and but remember, the Rams have always run the ball. So practice, you see him slinging it all over, and all of a sudden, Sean almost changes his offense to uh. cater to Matthew. When it's like, no, just use the same offense you had with Jared Goff, but just with Matthew Stafford, and instead, and then that's when they start lighting it up. But he has to like hold back on. He gets tempted, right? Cause yeah, because the guy's so good. Yeah, he's yeah. so good. You get so tempted to kind of go away from How about Odell Beckham Jr.? And obviously, yep. uh, you know that situation well. Yep. He has fit in yeah. perfectly. Like Garrett Blunt was sitting right here, and he was talking about, oh, you know, and he was like, hey, oh, you know, he's a, he's a better player in his eyes than Cup. He's friends with him, and obviously McVay has weapons now for the future, but yep. McVay, whenever Odell Beckham Jr. is available and comes to his team, however, was that in Cabo well, as well? No, no, no. But that room, that receiver room, like Cooper Cup is just, he's different. And Robert Woods is different. Like, they just have this different work ethic in that room. That's, and they always looked at like, man, if you can get Odell to kind of buy into how that room is, then you're going to have the old o- Odell again. And remember, like, Robert Woods went down. Everybody just thought you'd plunk him right in. Yeah. Doesn't play the same position. Yeah. Right? Everybody just thinks, oh, it's a receiver, it's a receiver. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. So they had to kind of figure out, okay, how do we get Odell? Odell worked his ass off to pick it all up. And he's been huge, yeah. It looks like he's having fun, too. Yeah, yeah. he's having fun. Yep. Scoring. Well, he's scoring touchdowns. Yep. Exactly. McVay knows, though, because like, uh, he was a former – Wide receiver. That's right. Yeah. Oh. He's former uh, Georgia State Player of the Year, one over Calvin Johnson. Whoa. Really? Yeah. Megatron? I, I saw it on a meme. I don't know if it's true, but it was on the Wait, internet. Wait, Sean did? Yeah, yeah, allegedly. There was a really? picture of That's him. With, there, yeah. He had his hair. It was That's like kind of the classic white boy uh-huh. uh, down in the front right, thing. Yeah. Looked like basic white boy, fuck yeah. boy, coming out of baseball or coming out of football yeah. or whatever. I always say Sean and his family, they're, that's who is like in the – Picture frames when you buy the pictures, Timothy. right? <laughs> Tim, 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 right? Yeah. Tim, they're like Tim, the perfect, Tim, they're Tim, the perfect Tim, white Tim, family. Tim. Like that's exactly like, oh my god, they're like a nightlight. And do you think this <laughs> moment? You, do you think because of your relationship with Sean McVay, do you think that he thinks back to how Bill Belichick outcoached him in the Super Bowl in his eyes? And does he have you think like scars and wounds? No, no, no. And has that changed how he's approaching this week at all? You think? No, I don't think that at all. Uh-uh, no, I think he he moves on fast. He compartmentalizes fast. 
Like things get to him, but he switches. I'm, you've seen it this year. Like all of a sudden, all right, something doesn't work, and they started going to like jumbo packages, which they never did, right? Like to put an extra offensive lineman, and, and you know, he's – no, he's on to the next week. That's awesome. Connor, go ahead. Yeah, Vaughn Miller. You know, yeah. When that all happened, was this the entire thought? Like, hey, we're going to get to the Super Bowl, and we're going to need a Super Bowl MVP with experience that can kind of not show you know yeah. the D-line the way, but similar to what Pat said about McVay, like Aaron Donald didn't have his best game uh, against right. the Patriots in the Super Bowl before. So was that kind of the thought with Vaughn Miller too? Yeah, no, Vaughn was the type they, they needed more pass rush, right? Their yeah. defense was, you know, wasn't up. Wasn't really getting the push that they did a year ago, and then I think it was a lot easier to start focusing so hey, much did on. Did Vaughn Aaron really Donald. not know that was going to happen? Vaughn didn't know it was going to happen. No. So no. so how's that? So, so Jay knew. I uh-huh. was told on Monday. Ha! <laughs> and, and then they were like, "We got to tell Vaughn." Uh, and so they still. I don't remember how many days after. No, so how's that all work? Denver Sunday, says he's Sunday, available, or they call. Um, I think they knew they weren't going to be able to resign him. So I think they end up calling them. I don't, actually, I don't, I don't remember how, who called who and how. Um, but, yeah, they, I think they got it done Sunday. Does that happen really fast? Like, hey, be, when, it kind of, when they it reach got done out, Sunday, But then I think they told them on Tuesday or Wednesday. I forget what day that was. Yeah, midweek. It's yeah, quick. Or, I don't remember. Because Vaughn said he was incredibly surprised. He was bummed. He loved it. He was. He and was I'm like, yeah, that's a superstar. Him not yeah. being told yeah. he's being traded is crazy. Now, obviously, he has houses in L.A. and he loves yeah. L.A. But I didn't know that that was actual genuine surprise there. That's yeah, crazy. it really was. And, and and look, I think also for him, it's, um, yeah, you're going to a place that you love in the Rams, but you do have roots in, in a lot of these places. A lot of these guys are very sensitive. Like, you are sensitive, which gets you – to be able to be as great as you are, right? Gary. And absolutely, you're, you're just, yeah, you're, a lot of these guys are sensitive. They just think, oh, they're big, bad football players. They don't got feelings. No, I think they feel more, which is kind of what pushes them kind of to that darkness and to that, that next level. And I think that's why you've had such a good connection with so many NFL yep. guys and really high-level stuff. Obviously, we saw The Rock yeah. uh-huh. going live, and he wrote the yeah, forward for this book right here. How cool is that? Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah, he and really is, man. And by the way, man. the Terramana deal he just made with uh, Jägermeister. Yep. Incredible. Hey, I, I, I would like to let Rock know if you could tell him I am watching and studying diligently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just let Dude, him know. You that know, he actually, I'm dead serious, he is like, it's really cool because he did the forward and he doesn't know anybody else's forwards, but he said, man, you, like, we all talk about mental health, but nobody describes it. He's like, you're going to be the voice that describes it for all of us, us, including him. Yeah. He's like, we got to have a voice for the gray because it's time we fight back. And that's where he's been great. So even like when I'm doing my social media, he's hitting me up going, hey, do this and do that, do that, which is pretty damn cool. It's pretty awesome. Uh, go ahead, AJ. Oh, sorry, Warren what happened? Warren hey, what, what, what? Do you think, okay, so you, you mentioned, yeah, Warren Moon's been walking around for <laughs> sure. Warren, Warren Moon and I have seen each other before. Hey, Warren, good to see you, dude. Cheers, bro. Warren. <laughs> hey, cheers, dude. <laughs> He and I deleted a tequila bottle together. <laughs> what? Yeah, a Calabasas nice. story. right up the road here. Oh. Yeah, and then I got a note the next day when I woke up basically being like, The bill? That's what it's like drinking with me. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I think he survived. I did not. It was an early exit for me, but he was an amazing guy. I assume you were friends with him. Go ahead, though. No, AJ, sorry no, about you, that. You mentioned McBay, and he's not feeling like the, what happened last Super Bowl, but we all know like the pressure is on the, the Rams. Hell yeah. The Bengals are kind of the underdog story they got here. Is it? If they don't win, is this a failure for, for the Rams? In their minds, I'm sure it is. Yeah, you, you want to win this that thing. Obviously, I'm sure coaches And they load it up. They don't talk yeah. about it, but do they feel any of that added pressure that they may have? It, uh, yeah, he definitely – I could tell when he has pressure, no doubt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a million percent. And, and it's funny because a lot of these coaches think, no, nah, I'm – there is a thing like when you're the leader, you got to kind of be there for everybody else, but like who takes care of the exactly. leaders? Exactly, yeah. You yeah. know, and for him – and we've had a lot of talks about it after – we did the book. We've talked a lot this year about him leaning on his players, people like the Andrew Whitworths of the world and some of the guys around him because he used to not. He used to just take it all on himself. So you, at one point, there, she's like, yeah, I don't think the guys could ever tell him. Like, bro, they could all tell. They could mm-hmm. all tell when you're going through shit. Start using them. Start leaning on them. And he started being more vulnerable with them this year when they're going through their tough time. And by the way, I think whenever you, the more you learn about somebody, the closer the group becomes. Yep. Absolutely. So like your vulnerability yes. is like a connective yes. thing, actually. Yeah. As I have opened up to people about my depression and my anxiety and how fucked up I feel in the morning when I wake up and, and my sky is falling. And again, you guys know it's an everyday thing. Yeah. As I've opened up to my friends about this, it has gotten us so much closer together. Like, I'm 52 it took me 50 years to realize 
it shouldn't be something I'm ashamed of. Yeah. And I, you guys know, like, hey, you I know, brag I, about my AJ, physical scores AJ, all the time. Just, just real quick, though. Yeah. Like, I think this is the turning of the media world. And as we sit here and watch this, and obviously, yeah, we're getting a chance to see a lot of people we AJ. see on the internet on a regular basis. And Adrian Peterson, who took Connor's jacket mm-hmm. earlier and then mm-hmm. gave it to one of his people. Yeah. He'll never wear that thing again or see that. Baby! Yeah. Hey, there as, it is! As we're seeing all there this, though, like, the turn in the media world, and I think it's what you're talking about, is, uh, like, people want to learn more about people. Like, yeah. they want to connect with people. They want genuine, authentic yeah. Stuff. So if you are able and willing to describe something that's very relatable to a lot of people, I think it's just naturally going to only yeah. grow. So I'm, I'm very thankful that you're deciding to do it. It's, it's very it. new school mentality, by the way, because old school, everybody talks about yeah. the, the younger generation. They talk about putting filters on and only showing their happiness moments. How about the old generation who yes. put suits on and just speak like robots and not talk about anything unless <laughs> they were kind of told to? I think that yeah. is that is certainly an interesting yeah. thing. So the more yeah. we learn about people, I think the more we like them. And that's obviously happening through the book, Jay. And you know what I did actually? During, oh, by the way, Rosie Tennyson's calling right now. She's oh. probably here. Hey, hey, congrats, congrats, Rosie! Rosie. Hey. Second Super Bowl, Super Bowl ring. ring. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when I did the book, I actually stopped doing all my treatment. Um, yeah, which isn't sweet. smart for me, but I did it on purpose. Or society to really feel it. Yeah, I or mean, society. That is, that is, else. Wait, you told us this before. And we I literally, did, as soon as you I said it, we were st- yeah, we were mind blown. It's, it's, that it's is, not safe. It's not good, and I'm. And so that was like in February, and I'm still trying to get myself back, but I did it so I could really describe it for everybody at home that has, you know, wants to connect with their son or daughter or husband or wife. I had an 80-year-old grandmother hit me up saying, for the first time in my life, I could have the conversation with my family about about what I feel and what I go through. I mean, how cool is that? That's cool. Fucking cool. Yeah, because a long time that 80-year-old lady, by the way, was told, hey, just... Just, yep, 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 we don't yep, talk about it. We don't talk about it. How you doing? Fuck you're that. good We're talking about fucking move. Yeah, you're good. Right. Everybody has their problems. Move on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fact that you're being so open and vulnerable, we're all very grateful for. And the fact that hashtag J knew, it. it's amazing <laughs> what you've done for the NFL all these years. And yeah. I hope you enjoy the hell out of this Super Bowl. Bro. I appreciate it, man. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. I really appreciate Listen, you were the first one I came on really Come promote on. this book with. And you saw, we've texted, you've seen how many people reached out to you guys. Yeah. yeah. And thanked us all for the help. Yeah, and that's the what tweets. we're doing. We are trying to have one big team together, but I'm really grateful for you guys doing that, man. Lessons for a lot of living lives. from a mental health warrior, Unbreakable, how I turned my depression and anxiety into motivation, and you can too. By the way, this looks like one of those TV shows. Yeah, it yeah. does. This looks like one of those legit TV shows. <laughs> Buy the book now wherever you find your books. It is obviously on the New York Times bestselling list already, and I assume it's only going to grow. Thank you so much for being a friend Thank of the you, show brother. and Appreciate joining, it, ladies and gentlemen. Love you, Jay Glazer. Yeah, Jay. 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 Thank you, guys. Woo. All right, we'll get to a break here. We got some questions from Twitter to answer. Hashtag PMS in LA. Uh, go ahead and send yours in right now. Zito will find them. Then we will wrap up in about 10 minutes and hammer down. We'll continue to be live from Radio Row. Jay Glazer just crushed it, and we hope you will return in four minutes. We'll see you then. Howdy, baby. Jay. Hey, hello? Pat? You guys can hear me? This is the worst call we've ever had, Stephen. Oh my God. <laughs> so mean. Stephen. Hello? Stephen. Yeah. This is the worst call we've ever had. So much dead air there. <laughs> Yo, Pat, can you hear me? Yeah, keep it going. <laughs> Hello? Know what you say? I was going to hit him again. What? Yo, Pat. No, Pat? Pat? Hey, Pat, can you hear me? Stephen does not deserve this. <laughs> Steven, what's going on, dude? How's it going on, Steven? Sorry, your phone would shut. Yo. Pat McAfee, can you hear me? Steven! Steven, you there? Pat, can you hear me? 
Hello? <laughs> Is there a cup and a string? Steven! Yo, Pat! Pat, can you hear me? Steve, Hello? Steve! Pat! Hey, there you are. Hey, Hello? what's going on, Steve? Hey, Steven, sorry about that. I think we're having connection issues. What's going on, man? Hey, sorry, man. I didn't know if that was me or if you were trying to talk to another guy. And then, and then I didn't hear you guys. Steve! Yeah. Hello? Oh, we lost him again, I think. Shit. Pat! Can you? No, I don't. Pat, can Steve. you hear me? Steve, Steve, Steve. Hey, Steve, there you are, Steve. Pat! Steve! Pat. Hey! Pat! Steve, 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 I decided to dress for success. Uh, I respect. I've been working out all week, baby. Just to, you know, just to be your doppelganger. And I gotta tell you something. You know, I don't know what the future is gonna hold next year, but if you got a spot for me, either in the studio or I can play the role of AJ Hawk as well. <laughs> Ah, uh, we have room for you wherever, <laughs> whenever. Oh, uh, what is... Okay, so let's, let's dive right I, into it. You know that I, I exist. This is awesome. I love this show. No. This is everything I dreamed about. Right? No holds barred television. None. How long you been in the game? TV game? I, I said forever, but I don't... I should have done more research. This is 100% on me. How about 1968, I did the Hawaii Islanders of the Pacific Coast League, minor league baseball, then on to the Cincinnati Reds in 1971. That's 50 freaking years ago. Marty Brenneman succeeded me for the next 44. I did three years there, and then I went to San Francisco. The Giants tripled my salary. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why, and then ABC for 30 years and NBC for 16. And here we are, man. And, uh, <laughs> uh, Oh, here we go. All right. Uh, Put that something? capo on. Something? No, I was going to let you lead the way, and then we were going to sing our song that we practiced. What do you guys sing? It's our song, Aaron. Go ahead. Our song? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I was just about to get into it. It's uh, Tuesday. <laughs> they say is that Aaron Rodgers is rather great. The son of a bitch lied. Oh. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that's where. I thought that's where we're still writing it. I thought we we're gonna. You guys just got no. a chance to kind of dive into a writer's room uh -huh. with me and Aaron. What happened? What's up? So what did he? Uh, what? <laughs> Oh, you got to be kidding me. Are you what? Serious? What is this? What just... Oh, hey, you got one of these? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Wow. What the... F what is that? I ain't one of these. What? It's good. <laughs> I ain't one of these. This is Baby Belt 2.0. This no. is better than yours. <laughs> Whoa. No, that ain't... Look, look, hey, hey, look at mine, AJ. Huh? Huh? <laughs> that is this one. You got that little baby, baby version. Look at that, you got a little baby Jesus title. No. Oh no, this has been my bracelet I've been wearing around the house lately. Yeah, see, this ain't fitting around anybody. <laughs> no way. Don't you worry about that. This is a, this is a thigh wrap, you know what I mean? What are you doing? Look, you... See, it's perfect. Look at my wrist. Whoa! Whew. Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show here. Thursday, February 10th, 2022. Wrapping up this glorious day from the Radio Road portion of the convention center. Oh, yeah. In Los Angeles. Nick Mangled, oh, the oh, finger oh, guy. Oh, 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 oh. The finger, the two most. Oh, 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 oh. Well, I guess there is <laughs> there is another set of fingers that is more famous out of uh, Ohio State this particular season. <laughs> but there is no more nationally celebrated. There's a microphone right mic. there, Nick. Oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. There you there go. There's a microphone right there. There you got it. Nick, what do you got going on? We selling the barbecue today or what? We're still, we're still selling sauce here, man. How are you doing? Oh. It. 
Hey, Thank this was so awesome. Right? Awesome. Yeah. So simple, yet hilarious. And I assume you're going to continue to do that? Your fingers are going to continue to be... They do. Every time I see one... I've actually had people stop me and take a picture. Hey, can you put the fingers over? I would do that. <laughs> hey, that's great marketing over Those there. two fingers are, are hot in Ohio, aren't they? Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. It's not as, excuse me. He lives in Jersey. Well, there's other oh. fingers in Ohio that are very hot this season yeah. after yeah. a Thursday night loss. Wasn't he supposed to chug that barbecue? Oh, he did. He took a shot of it. Did a shot. Yeah, I did a shot. Hey, do we? Uh, yeah, what was it that? Was, all? Yeah. And it was not pretty. <laughs> you got sick. I, if I do recall, you yeah, were a I little bit. I almost choked out. It was not good. <laughs> no. Although the barbecue sauce is great. Do we have any more flavors? Uh, are we, we still have the OG and the spicy. Let's go. We, go. we have, we have the, um, the vinegar one is done. Ooh. 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 Little Carolina style. Oh. 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 I like that. So that. That'll be coming soon. And then we got to have a fall one, a sweet one. And, and I think like the uh, LG Laguerre Blunt, by the way, right there. There he is. Hey, LG's <laughs> good, feel good, Adam, baby. Um, Look good, feel good. Hey, listen, you decided, <laughs> feel good, play good. Boom. What's that? Play good, pay good. Yeah, of course. Right. Pay good, live good. Right. Live good. Live, live good, good, die good. All right. And that's all we're trying to do. <laughs> That's all we're trying to do around here. We're trying to come back up as a tree. Uh, whenever we're talking <laughs> about the barbecue, you tried to launch, shout the Dion, by the way. You tried to launch, you didn't try to do this. You decided to launch your barbecue at literally, I think, the same exact day the world <laughs> said you're not allowed to actually cook out. Yeah. yeah. Like you're actually not allowed to be outside your house. Sorry. You have to go in. So the fact that we still got Mangold 74 barbecue still cooking here two years later, I'm excited for the world to get a chance to fully experience it, man. And we're happy for you. Way to withstand the storm. I appreciate that. And I'm excited to get it out, do some tasting, you know, oh, put it on stuff, get people going. Look at the screens, Nick. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look at that scroll through the website there. It's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Ah, yeah. Portrait mode. Oh, portrait hell. mode yeah. in our <laughs> center there. Don't need to pay big money for cameras anymore. Now, well, at, yeah. well, it turns out you're, you're, I mean, that camera's very expensive, though. I mean, that phone. Yeah, the phones are expensive. They're growing, yeah, <laughs> they're growing expensive, but don't, you're 100% right. The ability to have studio lighting in your pocket is amazing. And the fact that, you know, the world is going to get, we don't know, Joe Montana's right behind you. Holy, Holy Joe! shit. Oh, my God. Holy shit, dude. Look at that shirt. That's it. That's Joe Cool, man. We gotta ask My him. My God, right? we gotta ask him, right? Does he, what about the Child. story? Sorry, can't ask him. It's a shame. No. Damn it. Ah. Maybe a different day. Do you know oh he stopped an intruder with a football? Dude, in West, his face? right in the face. Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's Almost Western Pennsylvania. Him. Did kill the Italian American <laughs> Joseph Montana, who stopped a baby from being kidnapped <laughs> with a goddamn football to yeah. the beak. <laughs> Hero. American legend. Sweet. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Oh, thank you, Joe. Oh, thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Oh. Swag. <laughs> May I offer swag for the gentleman? Yes, we would love that. Oh, let's swag. go. Thank you so much, Connor. Yes. Grab that. Thank you. And Nick, thank you for stopping by, man. Hey, thank you for letting me stop by. No, 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 no. Ladies and gentlemen, Nick Mangle. Hey, Try his barbecue sauce. You look great. Yeah, I'm going to come find you. Yeah. I'll come out there. You're going to go out there? Yeah, those are perfect. AJ Hawk, yeah. you're going out Thank there? Thank you. I'm going to him come. He's going to come over here. I'll go try. Yeah, no, you said you're going to go out there. I am. Awesome. Tomorrow. Stank. Nice that, catch. Thank you. Hey, did you notice remember. that? These are sweet and AJ soft. Didn't nice. Nice. AJ didn't bring his title out because he was afraid he was going to expose to be a phony. Guess whose baby belt that is, bud. Oh, no. Who do you think flew flew here with that? Somebody oh, won no. that yeah. on Twitter. Not you. Yeah, we got it. We're sending that one out. That's the oh, one. Oh, okay. You have to sign too. All of us have well, to sign. This shirt's good, dude. This is a good shirt. That's nice. a good shirt. There you go. Everybody tells me when I wear this shirt, they're like, "Hey, you look fucking good in that shirt." Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm like, thanks, dude. Normally I go sleeveless, but for this, I'll go this. Hey, Pat, you look good in that shirt. See, that's what people say. You Nick, look thank good. You, Nick. Cool shirt. And a lot of people would say that's the problem. Those are the type of people I have around me all the time. You know, saying lies like that to my face, but they're not lying in this particular case. No, I no. do look good. Nick doesn't lie to me. No, no. sometimes you look terrible. You look great there. Thank yeah. you, Nick. And you know, now everyone knows you eat good because you got that barbecue Correct. sauce. Yeah, and it's almost like I'll never wear gray because I sweat a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. But I do like the shirt. It's a nice shirt. Maybe you wear it when you are working out to show how much you've been working out. There you oh, go. throw oh, some water yeah. on. Yeah. Or when oh, you're yeah. eating, you put that thing on, catch the barbecue sauce. Right on a beer. Smart. Oh, right, because if it falls far enough, yeah. it'll be like I spilled barbecue sauce on Mangold's beer. Bingo. What are you saying for sweet. later? Uh, let's go to some questions around Twitter and wrap this thing up before Hammer Don. They have a great show coming and are ready to absolutely slaughter it. This is from Wolf Simpson. He's the vicious villain eight. Oh. Look this out. guy's a bad guy. Yeah, bad look guy. out for this guy. We have to understand that this guy's a bad guy coming yeah. in. He's, his name's Wolf. 
Uh, hashtag PMS and Ellie, with certain players about to be extremely expensive on the Chiefs and youthful and inexpensive players on the Bengals, does Cincinnati have an actual chance to be an AFC powerhouse for the foreseeable future? I think it's a great question, great vision. Why not? Yeah. I mean, why not? You would think maybe because their organization doesn't try as hard as everybody else's, mm -hmm. but the, with those players, those coaches, the culture they have, why not? Now, everybody's just automatically saying the Chiefs because the Chiefs is the Chiefs, and we understand that, but look out for the Buffalo Bills, too. Yeah. Man. I know the uh -huh. Buffalo Bills had their entire thing, but if it wasn't for the stupid, archaic overtime rules, mm -hmm. that game's probably still going on. So the AFC is going to be a tough out for anybody, but why not the Cincinnati Bengals? A.J. Hawk from Wolf. When are the, so are the, have the Bengals staked their claim as the kings of the AFC North now, do you think? Uh, I think I do that a couple years. What about Steelers? Got, Diggs, what do you a couple think? Years. Okay, so who's the king of the North right now in the AFC? Well, they won the division, so they are currently yeah. kings of the North. Well, you, if we're talking merch and shirts and stuff like that, but the actual king. You I mean, like, who's going to run? Who's Yeah, like, how how many years do they have to win the I North to say, where you take them I serious? This is more of a coup right I'd now. I'd say yeah. the Steelers are the kings. They may be lord of the manor, but we are the kings True. of okay. the country. Uh, okay. Super cultured. Wow, that was really cool. Did you watch The Crown? No. Are you talking about them being, like, a Dutch... Oh, yeah, like a Duke. Duchess Duke. Yeah. But sh speaking of the Bengals and the organization, shout out FanDuel. They did add uh, for the Gatorade dump. Uh, props yesterday, they added mop water as one of the colors you could bet on. Oh, oh. because uh, of Carson Palmer's yeah. story about the hot chocolate being yeah. made in the ah. mop bucket. Yeah, <laughs> that's actually odds? caught its documentary. It's, it's pretty high. Pretty high. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, here is something we should talk about, and I don't know if I sent it into the group or not, so I apologize, Zito. But whenever you scroll through FanDuel Sportsbook and you try to predict the score exactly, yep. it's something like plus twenty some thousand, plus twenty four thousand, plus twenty seven thousand. The score thirty one twenty seven, I believe, is what it is. Thirty four thirty one. Oh yeah. 30 34 31, whatever it is, 34 th was on a Simpsons episode of the Bengals beating the Rams. Oh, Allegedly, no. the internet took it out. They actually dropped it down to plus 8,000. So it's like plus 18,000, plus 19,000, plus 24,000, plus 8,000, plus 27,000, because everybody knows the Simpsons understand. What the fuck's going on in the future? Because Matt Groening is a documented time traveler. Yep, we right. have an entire video that we put hours and hours of research into yes, on the internet explaining like 27 different situations that I understand when you're writing thousands of jokes at one time that you can maybe hit on something that could happen in the future. But to the description, to the detail, to the T of predicting some things... Seems to be a bit sketchy to me, but this could also be a fugaze. So Connor and I were talking about this yesterday morning. We put money on it because we had to, and it was plus 13000 at that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we had our internet sleuth, uh, always negative Nick, look into it, and he <laughs> did find out that it was a big fugaze. No! What? Uh, in it. what? Rather no. large fugaze. Images comprised of three different Simpsons episodes, and uh, I don't know how you guys didn't get it with the Photoshop. MS Paint text of the score on, on the image. Yeah. No! Shit! Come on! Well, I st we still bet on it, though, so it might happen. Bro! That's a bummer. That is a real letdown. But that is one thing that has been happening with the internet, you know, since it has come full circle and everybody knows full transparency that Matt Groening can see the yes. future. Mm -hmm. It has set itself up to be a Photoshop machine. That's, That's right. Yes. I think you did that. With your video exposing it, I, I think you did uh, that. I don't want to take too much credit. <laughs> yeah, the the, the well, video man. got hundreds of millions of views. Yes, right. Hundreds of millions, AJ. Hundreds. Really? Did it really? Yeah. Hundreds oh, yeah. of millions. The video uh -huh. of you talking about. Yes. Yeah. Great, yeah, it's a great video. I there's see it on the promos leading up. There's actually reaction videos of people watching oh, that yeah. video. Like two girls, YouTube. one cup yes. reaction videos. Okay, yeah, same thing. Oh, like that. come on. Glass ass. Come on. You're a fast show. Yeah. All right. I gotta go. Yeah, I mean, I think that happened probably in an apartment like right down the road here. If I had to guess just the way the city's going. in LA? But with that being said, there's no reason to bring up that Same soft thing, serve ice cream. Videos. Reaction videos. That was fake, too. Soft serve ice cream, by the yeah, way. Yeah, right, I know. Still was coming out of Orphan. Are you so still gross? I will say for two, three years, anytime the mere mention of yep. that made me. Sick. Oh, yeah. But I'm past that because it's fake, just like what we've seen on the internet. True. There. Uh, that is it for us for today. We can't thank all of our incredible guests, Jay Glazer, Justin Jefferson, Bye. Darius Leonard, Bruce Bye. Buffer, LeGarrette Blunt, Bye. Adrian Peterson, Bye. Austin Eckler, AJ Hawk, Bye. and all the people that stopped by and said, what's up, Drew Rosenhaus, oh. Nick Mangold, uh -huh. that Adrian, yoke guy in the Raiders, oh, oh. Pete oh. Koch. Koch. Pete Koch, that's right, wait. Pete Koch. Oh, shoe. <laughs> Jack. What are you? What is that? I was not fully confident. Shoe circus. In what I was saying. Shoe circus guy. Uh, Kicks World. K Y X. World. Oh, the guy World. with the platter The clown from yesterday. Oh, yeah, the guy dressed in. as the nutcracker. They are the plug for all shoes. Uh huh. 
Good to know. Great to know. Yeah. So we, we kind of showed the clown yesterday and said, what's this clown doing? And uh -huh. we, like, mocked him a little bit. He's saving the world yeah. uh -huh. in the shoe world. Ocho, Ryan Clark. Yeah. yeah. Wide, wide. Oh, my God. This has been crazy. Too many. Tomorrow's show is probably going to stink. But let's remember, we are live Dax. this afternoon from right here. And I think fans are allowed to be here. Boom. 4 p.m. local. Yeah, baby, 7 p.m. Eastern. Woo. Big surprise giveaway. Super duper special after our. Hey, Dak. Add a baby, 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 Dak. Hey, good to see you, Dak. 12 wins this season. People forget. Pretty a lot good. of people say other stuff. Guy sleeps on sleep number bed. Why? Uh, Why? Eats those tinos. Why? The guy's a stud. Great to see you, Dak. Uh, but that's what the radio row is. And before we embarrass ourselves too much, let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Hammer Downs on the other side of this intro. They've been getting out winners all day. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. All week. What? All month. What? All year. What? Will that continue into the biggest game? We hope so. We have a risk-free same game parlay coming Sunday. Can't wait. We have a lot of things, live parlays we're going to be able to get going. Let's enjoy this. Let's win some money. And let's celebrate the season that was the 2021 NFL season. Hammer downs on the other side of this. We will see you in Cheers.